made by Zephyr Odin Audiobook. Audiobook title, The Strongest Ten-Year-Old Magician, 01-32, by Amono Seiju. Chapter 1. Happiness of a Mining Slave. Hey, Ferris, it's today's meal. Thank you very much. After her master tossed the bread on the ground, Ferris jumps over and devoured it greedily, a pale one piece with tears everywhere, walking on the rock barefooted, having long unkempt hair. Her master looked at the image of the young girl eating the moldy bread from a distance. Ferris is the slave of a miner, and she turned ten years old this year. She has been working as a slave at this mine which produces magic stones ever since she was born. Ferris's day starts with her waking up from her makeshift bedding near the entrance of the mine. She crawls over her tattered and dirty straw mattress and climbs out of the mine. Her master would then angrily order her to dig more magic stones. After breathing the fresh air outside, she re-enters the mine to dig for magic stones. Although the tunnel is dark, Ferris possesses the ability to see in the dark after years of working in the mine. Ferris is the only person mining in this mine. She would return to the surface after mining the magic stones, load the magic stones onto a cart and push it out. Her masters and other miners would then take the cart from her and refine the stones in a furnace. Her masters would neither approach the entrance of the mine nor get too close to Ferris. They would cover themselves with full body suits and even throw the food to her during feeding time. At some point in time, one of the miners wanted to punish Ferris but vomited blood and fainted after getting too close to her. Her masters then maintained an even further distance when speaking to her. Ferris learned that she will get more bread if she speaks politely. The amount of bread she receives will also increase if her masters were in good mood. Because her masters will feel happy if they feel the other party is respecting them. Hence, she listened carefully to the words other miners used to talk to her masters and differentiated the different tones and accent they used. She carefully mastered the method to speak to her masters respectfully. In the past, she did not even receive a single piece of bread if her masters were in a bad mood, but now she is able to get bread regularly. If her masters were in an even better mood, they might even toss two or three pieces of bread. Thanks to that, there was a decrease in the number of times when Ferris had to remain hungry while mining. Ferris is also not stupid. As long as it concerns her survival, she would carefully observe her surroundings, analyze it and devise certain measures. She is not greedy and only analyzes the necessity needed for her survival. There are not many people she could interact with and the information she has is also little. Hence, Ferris did not know why she must enter the mine alone. She also did not know the reason why she will not die even after entering the magic stone mine. She did not know the reason why it is fatal for other humans to enter the magic stone mine. Ferris is satisfied with her current life. She does not know life outside her current environment. She remembers that she lives with her family before being brought over to the mine. However, all the memories of that time was blurry and Ferris did not harbor any feelings or care for that memory. To Ferris, as long as she has a shelter, able to have something to eat, and nothing threatening her life, she believes this is happiness. However, she felt a slight ache in her chest sometimes, but did not know that this feeling indicated that she was lonely. She felt her chest burning up when looking at her masters eating delicious sandwiches and meats. But she does not know that this is the feeling of envy. Ferris is a happy mining slave. Until, she accidentally listened to the conversation of her master. On that day, Ferris had a hard time sleeping and was in a semi-awake state the whole night. The sunlight shone brightly into the mine and Ferris opened her eyes and stared blankly while in her bed. From outside, she could hear the miners talking sleepily as they prepared to start work. That brat, is she still sleeping? We are already so busy in the morning. She is so carefree. That is the case. If she is slightly more charming, she would be brought to some hotel to do night work. Ha 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 ha, stop joking. She will wither instantly if you use her so much. A vulgar laughter. Although she did not know what they were saying, Ferris still understood that the meaning is not good. She hugged her body tightly and curled up. Speaking of which, I feel my mood getting darker working with that monster every day. Ah, I felt that she is totally an animal after seeing her devouring the food from the floor. I am also a girl, but, furthermore, I do not feel like she is the same species as me.
Ferris feels a sharp pain penetrating her small chest. This matter, she has never heard of it before. As she was always exhausted after mining, she fell into a deep sleep as soon as it became nighttime. Hence, she did not know what bad things the miner were talking about her, and she never wanted to know. Although Ferris does not have common sense or knowledge, she does have feelings. No, because her knowledge occupied so little of her, she is even more sensitive to bad intentions emitted. Oi, you guys, stop fooling around. At that time, she could hear the voice of her master. That's right, her master. He will think of Ferris. Her master is gentle. He gave her food. He gave her a straw mattress. Although it is muddy, he also gave her water. He gave her all the necessities for survival, so he is a good person. Everyone will stop badmouthing Ferris once her master speaks up for her. Ferris held such an expectation. However, such words came out from her master instead. Ferris is a brat that has some use to me. Be it a monster or a wild beast, it does not matter. But, well, boss. Interrupting the miner, her master continues speaking. What, once she is unable to carry on working, you guys can do whatever you like to her. Before that, just bear with it, even if it makes you feel disgusted. She is such a piece of garbage, feeling so happy just from eating rotten bread. Hee <laughs> hee, you are the same as us. You obtained leftover garbage woman. Ah, it stinks, it stinks. A ridiculing laugh. Ferris bites her teeth with all her strength. Her chest, head, body, all of it is burning hot. Ferris did not know that this is the feeling of anger. I do not want to work with these people anymore. I do not want to work here anymore. She decides that enough is enough. Chapter 2 The Taste of Freedom Nighttime Ferris began acting after sunset and her masters returned down the hill. Her masters said that she still has her value. With this, she does not think it is possible for her to confront them and plead to quit her job as a miner. In the first place, the area around the mine is surrounded by high fencing. The miner would lock the gate to exit the fence after work is done for the day. This is clearly a measure to prevent Ferris from escaping. In other words, Ferris has to move discreetly to escape from this place. Her luggage consists of her straw mattress and half-eaten bread. The bread is something that she left over from dinner. She does not know when is the next time she is able to eat as she might not even be able to get her hands on food. Also, she has to find a place to sleep after to get out of the mine. Hence, Ferris thinks that she has to take all these precautions. Although she said she is ready, she does not have much luggage to begin with. After learning to her surrounding carefully to make sure there is no one around her, she stealthily climbs out of the mine. With a stealthy and light footstep, she heads towards the fencing. There are barbed wires on the top of the fencing, so it will be painful trying to climb over. Ferris also tried to open the gate, but it does not budge at all. She also has no clue how to even pick lock the gate. Since there is no choice, Ferris started digging the ground under the fence. The strength she gained from digging in the quarry daily is not only for show. She successfully dug a hole big enough for a small girl like her and managed to pass through the fence by crawling underneath. Ferris ran. It will be frightening if she is caught by her master so she wanted to leave this place as soon as possible. She ran like her life depends on it. Higher. She felt an impact hitting her from her front and leaked out a groan. Ferris thought she was attacked by someone, but there is no one in her surroundings. She attempted to run again, but the front of her body got hit by an impact again. It seems, there is an invisible wall in front of her. This is a magic formation made to prevent Slave from escaping, but Ferris did not have this knowledge. She only knows that this invisible wall in front of her is blocking her from escaping. E.I. Ferris hit the invisible wall with her fist. Then, the area that was hit shone brightly for a moment and started crumbling down into pieces. What happened? Ferris tilted her head and started running again. Yes, she did not notice it. This is an extremely strong magic formation that no powerful magician could even break it, but Ferris managed to destroy it with just her fist. The sun rose three times and also fall three times but Ferris continued walking on. She avoided the main route and only travel while hiding along the border of the forest. She does not know when she will be caught, and so she was scared the whole time. Not only that, 
but she slept hidden on top of the trees or in a cave at night. The finished eating the bread she chews bit by bit and now resorted to eating the leaves on the ground to satisfy her hunger. Although her body is stronger during the time she work in the mine, she is still approaching her limit soon. Ferris finally see a proper city but feel dizzy and fell forward when she relieves her tension. Ferris passed toward the gate while wobbling left and right and step onto the main street. The guard look at Ferris with eyes full of suspicion but did not bother trying to stop her. Ooh -ah, human, a lot. Ferris look all around her surrounding with curiosity while walking on the stone pavement. She has never seen so many big buildings. She has never seen so many people walking about. The smell of iron, the smell of sweets, the smell of spiciness, the smell of freshness, the smell of sharpness and the smell of foul odor. All these smell mix together to stimulate Ferris' sense of smell. There are various food items on the street of the city. All the food looks so delicious as it looks clean and free from contamination by the dust of the magic stone. Human, from a small child, to young lady, old man and baby, there are human of all age and size. Ferris only works in the dirty mine and never seen any of these so her mind is overloaded from all the new information. Ferris felt dizzy and approaches a stall that that lines up in front of a building. Then, an Obersan that is standing in front of her stall frowned. What, this is brat. Do not get close. Shoo, shoo. S, sorry. Ferris hurriedly move away from that stall. Her heart is beating so fast. It has been a long time since she gets so close to someone and been a long time since she was scolded. She knew that she did something bad. However, she did not know what she is supposed to do so her mind is in a mess. When Ferris got chased away by the Obersan, other adults in the area also speaks in a loud voice. What a dirty brat. There are so many of them, I wonder what their parents are doing. That's right. Recently, there are more of such dirty brat walking around, so I do not feel safe doing business here. A dirty brat. They are obviously referring to Ferris. Ferris looks into the well and saw her own reflection. Messy hair. Dark and dirty face. Her skin is full of disgusting dirt. This, are all these dirt. Don't understand. Always, always, never bath. For Ferris, this has always been the case. At that moment, a cool refreshing smell floats over. Nice smell. Ferris got absorbed into the smell and started looking for the origin of the smell. Then, she saw a girl slightly older than her walking on the street. Pure white dress. Snow-like skin. Glossy blonde hair. Clear blue eyes. It is so beautiful that she seems to be from another world. And then, she looks into the well to see her own reflection. Gross. Compared to the beautiful being that she saw, she realized how disgusting she looked. And then, Ferris stood there thinking. She could not help but feel ashamed for being alive. She knew how dirty she was. It does not matter if she is not self-conscious, but she felt shame once she knew it. Ferris understood the reason why she was looked down by the passby and tried to shrink her body. I could not stay here any longer, and ran into a small alley. It was at that moment, when she ran into the alley, two men from within the small alley assaulted the blonde hair young girl. The young girl was dragged into the alley in the blink of the eye. Hitting her head with a wooden rod and gagging her mouth with their hands, she did not even have time to leak out a scream. Due to the swiftness of the crime, no even a single passerby realized the abnormality. However, Ferris saw what just happened. She could not ignore what just happened. Without any hint of hesitation, she rushed into the back alley to find the young girl. The men covered their face and body with a robe and tried to pin the girl onto the ground. The young girl tried to struggle but could not overcome the strength of the man. Her mouth was pressed and both her hands were pinned to the group. The man wanted to tie up her leg but was received a kick from her. In the next instant, one of the man used his leg and stomped the girl's stomach. A painful groan was heard from the girl's throat. Be more obedient, Ojusama. Otherwise, your pretty face will be gone. A glint shone from the man eye and he rub a small knife the young girl face. Tears started following from the girl eyes. The other man started laughing. Such a waste. Rather than that, let's have a taste of this girl before handing her over to our customer. You don't get to see such a good quality product often. That's a good idea. 
I also started becoming excited just a moment ago. Let's take away her wand. A magician cannot do anything without their wand. The men snatched the wand away from the young girl's grip. They spread her leg apart and rip off her clothing. The young girl kept pleading, but the men have no intention of stopping. No, I have to stop them. Ferris started screaming like a wild beast and knock into one of the men. What a f asterisk king brat, do not disturb us. Kia. She got sent flying away and hit the group. Nevertheless, she immediately jumps up and started charging at the man again. She got beaten. Her body hurts. She got beaten again. Her body hurts. Ferris still did not give up even after being kicked and stepped on. Stop it again, brat. You want to be killed. Eh, let's just finish off such a dirty brat. One of the man caught Ferris by her throat and slammed her onto the ground. Ferris rolled on the moldy stone and stopped right beside the young girl. The young girl with her blonde hair in a mess and with tears flowing from her blue eye started whispering to Ferris. I, please ignore me. Just run, at least for you, you would not suffer any more cruelty. No, Desu, you, very pretty, becoming stained, no. Ferris managed to squeeze out such words despite being out of breath. She was unable to stand and collapse on the ground. Her whole body is screaming in pain. The young girl hugged Ferris tightly seeing Ferris is still desperately trying to stand up. She glared at the men in tears. You guys are demon, the lowest of the garbage. You attacked such a small girl together, you do not deserve to even live. Triple A, you heard that right. Shall we cut off one of her hand to make her obedient? Ha ha ha. let's do it. It is fine as long as we did not damage her face too much. The man raises his sword and slashed towards the young girl, the sound of a blade cutting through the air. The impact on the young girl face, the sword cuts into the flesh of the young girl's face. So, someone, help! Ferris screamed. Time froze in the next instant. In front of Ferris, a huge fireball appears and send the man flying. The flame continues to expand, and a gate was constructed. The door of the break open, an inferno spew out. From the hellish flame, the flame changed into the shape of a human with wings. It is still too big, compared to normal human, and is obviously abnormal. With deep dark black eyes and mouth, even the lining of its teeth is burning with flames. A fiery fiend, while smiling, kneeled in front of Ferris and bowed to her in respect. You finally called me, my queen. My name is Leviathan and a faithful follower of my queen. E, A, Queen, I, no queen, only a slave. Ferris felt troubled and frightened. No, you are my queen. I am finally able to manifest after my queen call for me. The fiend called Leviathan started smiling silently. The young girl with blonde hair leaked out a surprise voice, summoning magic. But, that magic, should be lost ever since the ancient time. Ah, uh, is that the case? To someone like you, it is considered a lost technique. It seems time is different now. Leviathan's shoulder trembled as it find this amusing. The robed man scream in anger. W, what is this fellow? A summoning magic does not exist. You must be using an illusion spell or something, doing such a meaningless thing. Whether I am an illusion or not, won't you understand if you attack me? Leviathan shrugged its shoulder. I will do it even without you saying, I will also kill that shitty brat over there. The two men started running towards Ferris. Leviathan speaks to Ferris with flame in its eye. Well then, my queen, your order please. Oh, order Desu Ka. That's right, a summoned beast, could not move without its master order. Should I defeat those guys or just run away and leave behind my queen and that girl over there? please give me the order. A mysterious whisper, a voice filled with danger. However, Ferris did not have any choice. A beautiful thing getting stained, she does not want to see. Duh, defeat them. I receive your order. Leviathan responds with a joyous expression and breathe fire from its mouth. The world is dyed in hellish red and the two men started to burn. A high-pitched scream, Flames so hot melting even bones and the heat wave blew towards Ferris and the young girl. 
In the next instant, the two men melted into ashes and the wind blew the ash away. Well then, my queen, please call me again next time you require my assistance. Triple A, wahahahaha. Leviathan laughed resounded and returned into its gate. The gate started shrinking before it disappeared and all that remains is the hot and melted stone surface. Ferris felt her whole body losing strength. Is that because of relief? Or is it the accumulated fatigue? Ferris could not stand in anymore and fell face down, losing her consciousness. Th, this child, what in the world? The blonde young girl is a magician apprentice named Alice, whispered in fear. Although she did not know what it was, she knows for sure she saw something horrible. That is surely, an existence outside human knowledge and something we could not win against. Dot. Chapter 3 First Time When Ferris regained her consciousness, she realizes that she was lying on a bed after opening her eyes. A ceiling that is pure white color. It is different from the usual gray-colored coal wall. Furthermore, the object she is lying on is not the thin straw mattress she always used in the coal mine but a soft fluffy bed instead. She felt as though she was lying on a fluffy cloud which gently wrap around the whole of her small body. Still, in the middle of a dream, Ferris felt troubled. There is a cute lamp providing illumination on the ceiling and an expensive looking table near the bed. Ferris has never seen or heard of such a beautiful room in her life. However, her consciousness is clear and everything she saw is so detailed she knew this is not a dream but reality. Just how did it turn out this way? Ferris tried recalling her memory before she lost her consciousness. Oh, you woke up. A golden hair young lady opened the door and entered the room. This young lady, if Ferris remember, that, you are. Alicia, Alicia Gaudenbert, what is your name? Ah, I am, Ferris Desu. Ferris jumped out of the bed in panic to greet her but her head felt dizzy. Ferris is unable to stand properly, so Alicia immediately went and stopped her. You shouldn't move so suddenly, probably due to using such a strong magic, you collapsed as your body could not handle the load. You have not recovered yet. Magic, me. Ferris was in a state of confusion. She knew the existence of magic. But this is a power that only a few chosen people held could use. Her masters were always discussing topic about magic and kept criticizing those magicians. However, the voice of envy was mixed in. Still, this is a topic that is completely related to Ferris. That's right, you could use magic. To be honest, I still could not believe it but since I saw it right in front of my eyes, I have no choice but to accept it, your summoned beast. Summon, beast. Ferris recalled the matter regarding Leviathan. Extremely violent and evil being covered in flame. No, she does not even know if that thing could be considered a living being and Ferris started to shiver in fear after its frightening appearances floated into her mind. The golden hair young lady Alicia grabbed hold of Ferris' hand. Thank you, Ferris. Thanks to you, I did not get kidnapped by those guys. I'm willing to do anything within my power to show my gratitude. So please tell me what you want unreservedly. Alicia bluish green pupil stated straight at Ferris. E, no need, for thank you. Also, I, did not help for reward, it is also a coincidence to help. Ferris is panicking. That's right, it is a coincidence. If Leviathan did not appear, both Ferris and Alicia will be subjected to cruel treatment by the hooligan. It is not my power. I am weak, I am only a slave. This is what Ferris is thinking about. That might be the case but still, please tell me any of your wish. I could not let go of this without showing my gratitude. Alicia started speaking passionately while holding Ferris' hand tightly. Looking at her filthy black hand being held by a lady with a beautiful clean hand, Ferris felt embarrassed. Towards someone so different from her, she did not know how to react. Without letting go of her hand, Ferris desperately began to think of her wish. T that, that. And at that time, a dignified voice from a woman could be heard from the corridor. Before that, I believe it would be better for our guest to take a bath. Looking over, she saw a woman standing in the corridor with a stern expression on her face. She is wearing a dress with frills and her hair is tied with pretty decorations. Ferris does not know what a maid uniform is, so she does not know the woman is a servant. 
she only felt, a scary person, of course Ferris has no way of knowing that the woman is the head maid, Alicia nodded, after you mentioned it, that is the case, a girl should not be like this, well then, let's go, a, a, holding hands with Alicia, Ferris was brought out of the room, Alicia Summer, please let the maids take care of the guest, the head maid frantically tried to stop Alicia, but she has no intention to stop, I cannot do that, I will take care of my benefactor personally, th, that, I, where, Ferris could not predict what will happen to her, so she felt fear from the Ujosama that pulled her along, the place Ferris was brought to was a wide room, the floor was made from marble, and a big pool of puddle could be seen in the middle, no, from the steam raising from the water, that is probably hot water, there are statues of an unknown beast at the edges of the puddle and hot water is flowing non-stop from the statue, this place is, Alicia speaks to the stunned Ferris, bathing, I will begin to clean you properly from now on, there seems to be a lot of dirt on you, bathing, things such as bathing, what is that, a, bathing is, bathing, what should I do, isn't it just to wash your body, why must we wash our body, do I need to stand in front of the statue to bathe, what are you talking about, Alicia raised her eyebrow, although I think it is impossible, you have not washed your body even once until now, you won't say that right, I might not have wash, but, asterisk crack asterisk, there seems to be the sound of something breaking coming from Alicia, wait, is that true, I cannot believe you, I really cannot believe you, you, are a girl right, I am probably a girl, if that is the case, you must bath every day, this is the habit all girl must have, do you understand, do, do not understand, Ferris answered while being frightened, although she was told it is a habit for a girl, there are no girls interacting with her until now, she has not even met other children of the same age, so she does not know what she has to do, Alicia sighed, there is no other way, although I felt apologetic for you, let me wash you, take off everything, take off everything now, a shriek could be heard from Ferris, Alicia suddenly took off Ferris tore and tattered clothes, and then Ferris is standing fully naked, and started backing off from Alicia while shivering, W, we will you what will you do to me? What I will do, it's just entering the bath, so we have to take off our clothes, because we all both girl so there is nothing to be ashamed of. Alicia took off her beautiful dress and doesn't seem embarrassed revealing her naked body, pure white skin, there is not even one speck of dirt on her body, and a perfect figure, it is perfect no matter where you look and Ferris has trouble knowing where to look, then, she compared it with her small and petite body and felt embarrassed, she unconsciously tried to hide her body with both her arms, well then, let's begin bathing, Alicia guided Ferris into the huge bathroom, she used a bucket and pour hot water over Ferris head, make bubbles on Ferris' head with shampoo and began washing her hair. Some shampoos fell into Ferris' eyes, so she could not help but cried. Ah, so, so painful. You should not open your eyes, close your eyes when you are washing our hair. Hey, all right. Ferris tightly shut her eyes after being told so by Alicia. Alicia's slender fingers massaged on every corner of Ferris's head which makes her feel comfortable. After all her tension is gone, Ferris leaked out a voice, ha. Huh? Alicia repeated the cycle of pouring hot water over Ferris's head and washed her hair multiple times. After the job of washing hair is completed, it is her body. Lathering a small cloth with body soap, Ferris's body was rubbed. As Ferris felt odd with this feeling, she protested many times, but Alicia did not allow it. Ferris did not know how long has passed. As Ferris's body was scrubbed all over by the Ujosama, she came out of the bathroom with little energy. Ferris felt exhausted after experiencing this new feeling of her, but she did not think it was unpleasant. She felt that her spirit was recovering. Her whole body felt warm and her cheek was flushed hot. You see, just look, so pretty right? Both Alicia and Ferris stood in front of a mirror. Alicia placed her hand over Ferris' shoulder and asked her this question. The mirror reflected a child which is unknown to Ferris. White and smooth skin. 
shiny glossy hair that is still dripping water, deep red lip and rosy pink cheek. Who? Ferris tilted her head which makes Alicia laugh. That's you, Ferris. The real you are such a cute girl. Hence, you must bath every day. This is, me, right? The more she looks, the more unbelievable she felt. And while Ferris is in this state, a growling sound is heard from her stomach. Well well, you must be hungry. The preparation should almost be done, so let's go have a meal. Ferris jumped hearing the word meal. Meal, is it meal? Can I also eat a meal? Ma, you suddenly have such a big reaction. Ah, uh, s, sorry, I unconsciously. Ferris hanged her head dejectedly. She thought that if she acts like a beast, she would not be allowed to stay any longer. It's all right. Well then, let's head to the dining room. Alicia smiled gently towards Ferris and held her hand. The room Alicia called a dining room was a big room with an extremely long table. The surface of the table is covered with a white cloth and many metal lids lined up along the table. The food was nowhere in sight. Noticing that Ferris suddenly felt dejected, Alicia started to explain. You don't have to worry as the food are all underneath the lid. Ah, I, see. As a ten-year-old girl sitting on one of the huge chair, it makes Ferris look even smaller. The head maid then entered the room and speak to Alicia. Ojusama, the leader of the guard came over. Regarding the attempted assault this time, he would like to speak with Danasama, Ojusama, and the guest over there. Alicia shake her head. Leave this matter to later. The most important thing now is to fill Ferris's stomach. Saying that, Alicia directed her smile towards Ferris. However, Ojusama, the guard leader seems extremely busy. Later, later, which is more important, accommodating to the schedule of guard leader or repaying my important benefactor. A statement which indicate there is no room for negotiation. There is no helping it. I will convey it properly to Danasama. The head maid smiled bitterly while leaving the room. Well then, please eat to your heart content. Alicia took the sip beside Ferris and gave a nod to the maids. Hence, the maid came close to the table and removed all the lids covering the food. And on that table, Ferris saw many cuisines that she never saw in her life. There are many type of simmered and roasted meat that are overflowing with delicious smell. Salad made up of a combination of red, green and yellow vegetables. A huge basket filled to the brim with fruits. A variety of ingredient that is cooked by frying. A cake that is covered in white cream. Ferris does not even know the name of the dish, let alone the way to eat it. No matter which one she looks, all the dish seem delicious. I, Itadakimasu. Unable to resist the temptation any longer, Ferris leaped at the food. She does not know the purpose of the small knife or fork placed on the table and just grab a handful of the cake. She then pushed all food into her mouth and swallow it without even chewing. Ma, what is with your way of eating? Please at least use a fork. The maid started making a commotion. It's all right. With a single word from Alicia, all the maid quiet down. Ferris is self-indulging in eating the cake. Stuffing her face full of cream, biting strawberry, eating huge bites of the sponge portion of the cake and a loud swallowing sound could be heard from her throat. Such a delicious food, Ferris has never eaten in her whole life. Sweetness, freshness, and fluffiness, food which tasted like it came out from her dream, a portion dropped from her face. The food melted in her tongue. Her stomach is still growling, more, screaming to eat more food. How is it? Is it delicious? Alicia inquired. At long last, Ferris realized that she is greedily devouring the food and stop her action out of guilt. Not, delicious. A. Alicia eyes opened wide in surprise. I, realized it. Delicious food, never eaten. I always, thought the delicious bread, but, it's not delicious. Comparing it to the cake, the bread also tasted like garbage. Ferris did not receive anything else besides the moldy breads she thought all along that it tasted good. However, that is because she did not taste other flavors. After realizing it, she knew how stupid she was before. Her word that her masters said to her, leftover garbage woman. At the street, she saw many people wearing beautiful dresses. 
Various things are surfacing into Ferris' mind and her body started trembling. Don't know why, tears are flowing. Cannot stop. This cake is, very, very delicious. Ferris tried to smile with a, a hee hee, coming out her throat. Looking at such a Ferris, Alicia bit her lips. As long as you like, it's okay to eat more. Yes. Until you get bored, it's okay to keep on staying in this house. Thank you very much. Ferris felt warmth after Alicia hugged her from behind. Alicia's voice felt warm. Ferris kept on chewing the cake that already tasted salty. Her chest felt painful, aching, but it is a comfortable feeling. Ferris wished this moment would stay on longer while being hugged by Alicia. Chapter 4 A Girl Without Limits So this is the rumored girl which helped Alicia Ojusama right? She looks so small. In the reception room of Gaudenbert family, a muscular man wearing full body armor is staring straight at Ferris. S. Sorry. Ferris shrinks her body and apologies. She felt that she has to apologize for being so small even though this is something that she has no control over. She did not know what she did wrongly but felt that she needs to ask for forgiveness. An Alicia father Robert Gaudenbert a man wearing a gorgeous robe and has a mustache growing above his lips, made a dry cough. Head guard Dono, please do not make that child so scared. That child saved Alicia, so she is also considered my benefactor. I am not really going to say anything scary. The guard man wearing his armor said it shrewdly. To reduce the amount of intimidation she is feeling, Ferris tried to shrink her body even more, but the guard man with his muscular body and rough facial feature render her effort ineffective. Ferris felt that the guard is actually not a bad person. However, such a huge man is scary nevertheless. Hiding behind Alicia, Ferris took a peek at the head guard. No. Problem Desu, I am not afraid. T, then, question to ask me, what is it? She told the head guard. What I would like to hear is, the matter of the two hooligan that tried to assault Alicia Ojusama. Alicia Ojusama did not see their faces, and you did not see their face too, right? Why, yes, wearing a hood, face covered by cloth. Hmm, is there any features which can be used to identify them? For example, a crest of their organization, the unique spell they used or their accent. I can't remember, sorry. Ferris became extremely dejected. Alicia followed up and tried to defend Ferris. We do not have the time to notice such a thing during the assault. Since they are committing a crime, it is also unlikely for them to give clues regarding their identity. That's true. The head guard nodded but still continued staring at Ferris. Next question. Why did you appear at the scene of the crime? Are you an orphan from downtown that has wandered into this neighborhood? N. No, this, coming to this city, my first time. So you are someone that came from another place. Where did you come from? T. That, somewhere far away. Ferris mumbled her words. The head guard leaned his body towards Ferris and a frown could be seen after hearing Ferris reply. It is really suspicious. You, are hiding something. You smell of someone guilty and hiding some secret that you do not want to let other people know. There is but, I cannot tell you. Ferris' shoulder trembled slightly. Maybe, you are a companion of the attacker. You coincidentally appear on the scene, and fake an act to help Alicia Ojusama. Please wait a moment, head guard Sama. This is definitely impossible. No, I am not wrong. I apprehended numerous criminal. I could immediately sniff out someone trying to hide a secret. Speak, what are you hiding? The head guard slowly approaches Ferris. Ferris, please just tell him. I hate it when my important benefactor is being wrongly suspected. Alicia pleads with Ferris. B, but, I might be brought back to that place. That place. Hate it Desu. I never want to return to that place Desu. I hate IT Desu. Alicia gently held the hand of Ferris. It's alright. I do not know where that place is, but I will absolutely never bring you there. Hence, please tell me, alright? Why, yes. Ferris took in a deep breath. Just why, being held by Alicia, she felt that all her fears are dispelled. 
She hesitated slightly but decided to speak. I am a slave of a mind desu. However, my master said some cruel thing about me, so I escaped. A mind slave? Which mine? The head guard raised his eyebrow an inquiry further. Ferris continued speaking while trying to avoid the sharp gaze from the eye of the head guard. I do not know the location, but it is a mine that collect magic stone. I enter the mine to dig for magic stone, and my masters polish them desu. Ha ha. The head guard laughed amusingly. You heard that right, Robert. This fellow has no credibility at all. Please tell a better lie next time. A magic stone mine. Robert showed a bitter expression. Ferris, that, did you mix it up with other rare materials? Hey, for example Auric Alcamor. Alicia also showed a similar troubled expression. E, too, what is wrong, everyone? Towards the reaction everyone showed, Ferris did not know what is wrong. She worried that she just said something weird. The head guard sighed exaggeratedly. Listen properly, little girl. The thing called magic stone is something that contain a dense amount of magic power. With a stone the size of my fist and without any processing, it will seriously poison a human body. And do you know what will happen to someone entering a mine full of such magic stone? It will, you make feel, unwell. It will be great if it only makes you unwell, you will die. You will collapse onto the ground if you get close to a mountain producing magic stone. Hence, magic stone mine is something that does not exist. Such a place will only be sealed up and nobody will be allowed to get close. B. But, I really work in a magic stone mine. My masters will absolutely not approach the cave. So that is the reason. Ferris felt that she finally understood something. The worker that feels sick after approaching too close to the mine Ferris is working must be caused by the poison emitted from the magic stone. HMPH, then why can you stay in a magic stone mine? Are you implying that you are someone special? That's not it, although it's not that, but. If that is the case, then you must be lying. Do you know that it is a crime trying to falsify an evidence? The guard looked down upon Ferris look like a demon to her. His huge shadow slowly covers the whole of Ferris' small body. Hi. Ferris is trembling uncontrollably. Because I did a bad thing, I will be beaten or even put to death. She felt terror. Alicia however intervened immediately. Wait a moment. What she just said is all true. What do you mean by that? Robert's pursuit with an inquiry. When that child is helping me from the hooligans, she used summoning magic. Summoning magic. Even Alicia Ojusama is starting to lie. You are just trying to cover her. The head guard is now trembling in anger. That is not a lie, but the truth. I saw it with my own eyes. Hence, this child is special. Possessing the resistance towards magic stone is also not that strange. Hmm. Robert rubbed his chin and started thinking. Robert, you surely would not believe all the childish lies these children are telling. It is summoning magic, something that only happen in folktales or legends, such a brat would never be able to use. That is right, summoning magic could be considered the ultimate among magic. By summoning a creature from another dimension, a huge amount of magic power is required. Even those master magicians mentioned in the folktales would usually lose their lives as a compensation casting summon magic. And in this modern era, using summoning magic is only viewed as a joke or a childish subject, since even the method to use are unknown. If the ability to use summoning magic is known, it will surely a topic that would shake the world. Should we test it? There is a magic measurement tool to measure the magic ability of magician. By using that topic to check, we will easily be able to know the truth and whether that girl is lying. Robert rang a bell and ordered a maid to get the magic measurement tool. And the magic measurement tool is now placed on the table. The tool has a weird appearance due to combining a crystal ball onto some kind of gear and rod. Despite its appearance, reliability of the tool is extremely high. This tool is mainly used to measure the magic power of apprentice magician. All someone has to do is to hold the rod and the value of that person magic power will be displayed onto the crystal. Alicia occasionally uses this tool to measure her magic power. Speaking of which, an ordinary magician would have an average magic power, 
magic attack and magic resistance of 100. If your ability is lower than that, it indicates that you do not have the talent to be a magician. For someone with any ability of above 200, which is twice that of ordinary magician, that person would be considered a genius and future will be secured. Under the watch of Alicia's father Robert and the head of the guard, Alicia gave a request to Ferris. Well then, Ferris, could you hold on to the gold-colored rod? Why, yes. Ferris swallowed her saliva and held onto the tool. The other three people in the room stared into the crystal ball. After Ferris held onto the rod, silver particles within the crystal ball started moving around and began to form numbers. The shiny fragments inside the crystal ball seems as if they are dancing. In response to being touched by Ferris, the crystal produced a value. Magic power, 15,000. Magic attack, 28,000. No matter how you look at it, it is a number that would cause disturbance to the country's high-ranking magician. If she is thrown into a battlefield, she could destroy an entire army, destroy a whole city. It almost approaches the realm of God. However, what made everyone even more disbelief is the other value showed. Magic resistance, infinity. This sign indicates infinite value. This meaning of this is, the crystal ball could not show the value of magic resistance Ferris possess. This of course explain why the poisoning from the magic stone did not affect her. The head guard's shoulder trembled. Im, impossible, the measurement tool must be faulty. This orphan does not even have the qualification to be a magician apprentice. How could she have such a talent in magic? Robert however shake his head. No, there should not be any problem with this tool. Alicia also measured her magic power just yesterday, and it is still working fine then. If that is the case, show me some magic. Show me a magic that would lead me to believe you. The head guard approaches Ferris. Eh, eh, such thing as magic, how, do I use? Magician would usually cast by cheating incantation. As for what to use, right, let's just use a magic to cast light. Try chanting the spell, bright. Bright. The moment Ferris said it in a small voice. A strange color dwell within her eyes. Her eyes became so dead and emotionless. And from within her palm, a ball of light is produced. The ball of light then expands with frightening speed. The table that came into contact with the light crumbles. The flooring began to vanish. A whirlwind of light formed. Books on the bookshelf got sucked into the whirlwind and cracks start appearing on the wall. Everything that came into contact is eaten by the light. A. W. H. What? is this. Ferris started to panic after being surrounded by the light, and she lightly floats up. Her hair and skin all started to glow as eye glaring as the sun. The light then reaches before Alicia and first consumed her leather shoe. Alicia groaned painfully and tried to evade it. This is bad. Robert immediately took the small bottle that is hanging on his neck and threw it towards Ferris. The bottle cracked and red-colored liquid spread onto the surrounding and contains the light from expanding. The ball of light then started to regress slowly into the size of a bean and vanishes with a loud sound. Ha! -ah. Alicia collapsed on the floor, her heart beating very rapidly. They have never seen such a strong magic. It is only supposed to be a illumination spell and even the chant follow that spell, but it is already enough to nearly destroy the whole house. Alicia's father and the head guard's face felt as if all blood has been drained. Ferris on the other hand is at a loss. T. That. I. Did I properly use magic? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I finally understand that you did not lie. I am sorry. The head guard lower his head. N. No no. This is also my first time using things such as magic. I am also extremely surprised. Your first time. This is. Looking at the panicking Ferris, the head guard has an eye that seem like he is looking at a monster. I am sorry but, could you first return to Alicia's room? The few of us have something to discuss. I, understand, please excuse me. Ferris run out of that room almost like a rabbit trying to escape. Looking at such a Ferris, she has a figure of any other ordinary girl. Looking at her trip on nothing and panicking to get up and run out. Alicia felt that all the frightening magic she just witnessed is a dream. I did not expect to meet a monster which appears only in legend. 
I must immediately report it to the king. Cold sweat is forming on the head guard's forehead. Robert put his hand on the desk and frowned. No, I hope you don't report whatever you just witnessed today. Why, if I did not report a person with such ability, I would definitely receive heavy punishment from my superior if they found out later. That may be the case. However, our country has been embroiled in war with neighboring country for a long time and is finally starting to move towards peace. If during such a time, what do you think will happen if others know our country holds such an enormous war potential? Again, another war will start, right? Alicia squeezed a coarse voice. That's right. This time the battle that occur will be irreversible. The extremist faction will try to eliminate the moderate faction and expand the territory using Ferris. The king and all the citizen will face danger. That is, something we must avoid at all cost. The head guard clenched his hand tightly. Hence, regarding the matter of Ferris, do not tell anyone, even not to Ferris. Why? Alicia is still thinking of telling Ferris, towards the current Ferris, it would serve to increase her self-confidence. She works as a slave up until now and suffered many abuses, so confidence is something she needs. However, Robert immediately explain. You know the legend regarding, the Black Rain which right? One thousand year ago, a criminal with tremendous magic power that spread disaster to the whole world. Ah, she is also extremely young, and magician girl which possess extraordinary power. However, because she is so young, she is unable to control her desire and feelings, and self-destructed. She got drowned in being the strongest and got destroyed. Whether Ferris will become like her, I don't know. However, Ferris is still so young. When she knew there is no one stronger than her in this world, it will be hard to imagine how that would influence her heart. That is a very logical statement. Alicia would also be unable to predict what she would do if she obtains the strongest power in the world. She is already 12 year old and is going to be an adult soon. However, even if she became an adult, she felt that it would be hard to resist the temptation of power. I understand. I would not tell this to Ferris. Me too. I would keep the matter today in my heart. I am depending on the two of you. For the sake of Ferris, for the sake of this world, this is an extremely important matter. Robert then sighed deeply, and stared into Alicia's eye. Alicia, your age is quite close to Ferris. Please protect her, including the evil intention that would try to surround her. Of course. Alicia clenched her fist. Even if her father did not tell her, she would not allow her benefactor to meet such a misfortune. Chapter 5 Wanting to know a lot more in the courtyard of Gaudenbert household, there is an extremely spacious garden. The roses are well taken care of and blooming, and the bushes are beautifully arranged. The freshness of the morning air, sunlight shone gently from the blue skies. Ferris bathed under the sun while stretching her body. N -n 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 -n. As she was always digging things in a narrow tunnel, the young Ferris's suffers from body aches on almost every part of her body. However, as she managed to sleep on a fluffy bed last night, she felt that most of her accumulated fatigue have been removed. For some reason, I feel good. Fjortilda, Ferris yawned. Her master's in not here today to order her, hurry up and work, so she does not have any work to do. But, she felt slightly uneasy this way. There is no one else in that garden including any servant. Ferris climbed and sat on the edge of a bench and started looking at her own palm. She recalled that she was called into the reception room by the guard leader yesterday, and the things that she did. Judging by everyone's reaction, it seems that it was magic. She did not even consider that she could use magic up until now. Come to think of it, she did not even attempt trying even once. She thought that this sort of power is far away from her reach. However, now that she knew she could use magic, she wanted to use more. Ferris wanted to know more about the power hidden within her. That, if I recall, I need to chant the word. She is someone that would remember anything once her heard it. She is in ignorance of the fact that the specification of her brain is extremely high. She properly remembered the chant for the spell. B.R. Bright. After hesitation, she softly chanted the spell. Then, a ball of light appears from her palm and began to expand rapidly. 
The rose petal that came into contact with the light scattered into the sky while the bushes is burning in white flame. Standing in the middle of light brighter than the sun, Ferris started panicking. This is really bad. It will become a serious matter just like yesterday. Furthermore, Robert, who could stop the magic also not here. Please, please make it stop. Understood. A voice was heard and the ball of light vanished. Hey, 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 who is that? Ferris looked around her surrounding in shock but could not find a single person. As she was looking everywhere, Alicia appears from within the mansion. However, the voice she heard was obvious not Alicia's voice. Morning, Ferris. Go, good morning. Ferris decided to leave the search for the mysterious voice later. Alicia observed the bushes around Ferris and became slightly gloomy. Magic, did you use it? S, sorry, just a little, I only use it just a little. You do not have to worry about it. You have the freedom to choose it. You, are you interested in magic? That, rather than interest, if I could use magic properly, I feel that it will be helpful for work. Work? Alicia became surprised. Yes, it is convenient to dig for magic stone using magic, so I could find job at another magic stone mine. Now, I, do not have a job. Ferris, who is jobless, puffed her chest. That, firstly, there are many jobs beside working in a mine. Also, I do not think you reached the age where you should work. A, but, I would not get food if I don't work. Also, I, want to know. Like. Magic, make me excited. Those that I could not do, I feel that I could do it now. I want to try many things. I understand that feeling. Alicia mumbled. You understand too? Yes. When I first started learning magic, I was also so excited that I could not control myself. No, even up until now, I kept adding learning new things which makes me extremely happy. Right, right. Ferris pumped her fist in front of her chest excitedly. Alicia could understand, sharing the same feelings with others, I am happy. With masters and the miners, such experience, never even once before. For some reason, felt I could very much get along with Alicia. However, are you satisfied with only that? Ferris, don't you want to properly polish your magic? Polish, Desuka, just like how magic stone are polished before selling them. Although I do not know what is the process of polishing magic stone, but, it is properly similar. Before working, it is normal to attend school. School. Ferris tilted her head hearing an unknown word. That's right, it is a place where talented children such as yourself gather, and learn from teachers. You will also receive proper guidance for subject including knowledge in magic. Ooh. Ferris felt it is an attractive place to go. Not only could she obtain knowledge, she felt that it is a place where she could also see many other children her age. Well, would you like to take a look? I am also learning magic in that school. Why, yes, I want to see. I want to go to school. Ferris requested passionately. Looking at the innocently looking Ferris and beaming with happiness, Alicia recalled the conversation with her father last night. You want Ferris to attend the magic school. After her father called her to his study room, Alicia inquired further. Robert nodded. Right. It is necessary to have someone guiding that child properly. A tragedy will definitely occur one day if she lost control of her magic just like today. That's true, it is not possible to have someone help seal her magic every time. Alicia also agreed. Earlier in the day, Robert only managed to stop Ferris's magic by using the magic sealing liquid, but that bottle of liquid is extremely expensive. It is not easily available everywhere. If, a tragedy does occur, that child might not be able to forgive herself. Feeling of guilt will lead her to despair. The black rain which broke down due to being overwhelmed by guilt. I do not want, that sort of thing to happen. Not only is Ferris her benefactor, she also has the genuine feeling of wanting to bring Ferris happiness. Looking at such a small and cute girl which get frightened easily, everyone would have such feelings. Luckily, I know the principle of the magic school. I should be able to get the school cooperation if I explain the matter regarding Ferris honestly. 
I would also properly take care of her. Please, not only for the sake of that child, but also the future of this world, do not allow her to go astray, or break down, please watch over her. Robert rubbed his beard and spoke such heavy words. That, what's wrong, you spaced out. Ferris asked Alicia who is deep in thoughts. Alicia finally snapped by to reality with this. Ah, I am sorry, I am just remembering some stuff. So that's the case, it should be me apologizing, Alicia-san. Just Alicia, my age is not that different from you. Is that true? I am 12 years old, so I am only older than you by two years. F, I thought you are 95 years old. That is obviously not true, right? Alicia suffered a heavy blow. Ferris then tried to amend the situation. Ah, I made a mistake. You look like 15 years old, you are very matured. That, thank you. However, I am not 95 years old. Right, I am definitely not 95 years old. Definitely not. Alicia repeated this multiple times. It seems that she has a complex regarding this. After mumbling for a short moment, Alicia recovered her spirit and clapped her hands together. All right, well then, let's head to the street in front of the magic school. It is necessary to prepare clothing for you, as my size would not fit you. Things such as cute clothes and bag, it is necessary to buy them. Alicia kept talking happily. Ferris also felt excited looking at Alicia, but there is still one matter she does not understand. Eh no, buying things, what is that? Ferris asked, looking puzzled. Dot. Chapter 6 Shopping Ooh ah, a lot of dress. After Alicia brought Ferris into a western-style clothing store, Ferris voiced her admiration. Ferris was stunned as she flaps both hands on her side like a penguin, and kept blinking her eye in astonishment. Dresses that were decorated with many frills and laces, gowns that look like clouds, dresses with multiple colors, panniers that seems fluffy to the touch. She enters into a trace, looking at the many beautiful and never seen before dress lined up in front of her. She does not even know the names of the dress. After all, she had been working with her masters all year long at the magic stone mine, wearing nothing but dirty rags. Ferris clothes would only become even more dirty as time passes. Any Tilda, amazing right? This store, has all the same stuff as the dress store in the capital. They kept making so much cute clothing, that I felt troubled after spending most of my pocket money. Alicia speak extremely fast. Looking at her behavior that matches a 12-year-old girl, Ferris felt that she must reflect after calling Alicia as 95 years old. A beautiful dressed lady came out from the interior of the store. Atilda, Alicia-chan, did you come shopping with your friend? The lady greeted Alicia. Konnichiwa. Yep, I came with a friend. I would like to purchase a dress from this child. Friend, where? Do you have a friend that I could not see? Ferris became frightened and looked around. Alicia smiled looking at her. Really, what do you mean where? My friend is definitely Ferris. E.H., me, I, am Alicia San's friend. Ferris received a shock. Do you feel, troubled? I, always thought of you as friend. Alicia reveals an uneasy expression. Looking at such an unexpected reaction, Ferris follows up in a hurry. No, no such thing Desu. I am happy Desu, really. Thank you. And Alicia hugged Ferris tightly. Hiya. A soft sensation. Comfortable body temperature. Smell of flower stimulate her nose. As Ferris never experienced anyone hugging her, she felt trouble over how she should react to Alicia's hug. A pleasant feeling, feeling of happiness as well as feeling of trouble. For some reason, her chest felt tight, and tears came falling from her eyes. Well then, Ferris, the dress you like, go and pick the dress you like. I received permission from Otusama. Alicia held Ferris' hand and brought her over to a rack filled with dresses. However, there are many types, and this makes Ferris's I become dizzy. Everything is cute, do not know what to choose. A, A no tilde, I do not know what I should do. Ferris turned and looked at Alicia with a face that looks like it's the end of the world. However, Alicia's eyes shone instead. Well then, let's try matching clothes for you, 
so it is a must to try the clothes outright. I will definitely make you look cute. Any tilde, any tilde, it's fine right? Why, yes, it's fine, Daisu. Ferris got overwhelmed by Alicia and could only nod. Fuwa. Standing in front of a mirror with the dress that Alicia chose, Ferris felt her body trembling. She could not help but kept sighing after entering this store. The stimulation is too strong for her. The dress that Alicia chose is exceptionally cute. Pure white blouse suitable for a girl. Fluffy cream colored vest. A refreshing sky blue colored jacket. A ribbon is tied to the chest area, becoming a highlight of the dress. Thinking that the skirt is slightly short, she found many frills at the side. She wore a pair of cute rabbit pattern socks and shining leather shoe. Alicia then did a simple grooming of her hair, and adding on to wearing the cute dress she just wore, she looks like just any ordinary girl on the street. Although she felt that her beauty is not at the level of Alicia, even if that's the case, Ferris could not believe that the girl in the mirror is her. Fua. Looking in a mirror, Ferris's body began to tremble. The shop manager eyes also grew wide. This, this is magnificent. Ferris, so cute. This is great. Folding her arms in front of her chest, Alicia voice sounded excited. I, not see you, cute. Nothing as such. UN, UN cute. Ferris is very cute. The world's cutest girl. PL, please don't say that. Ferris felt her cheek becoming hot. After getting praised so much, she wanted to hide herself in a hole. The only thing she is good at is digging. Well then, shop manager San, I also want this. Could you kindly tabulate the bill? Thank you very much as always. The total cost is 200,000 coins. As the shop manager answer Alicia, there is already a huge pile of dress in her arms. Alicia took out something round and gold from her wallet and placed them on the counter as she counts them. Ferris felt curious looking at the unknown object. Aino, the shining thing, what is it? This, this is a gold coin. Have you not seen it before? Alicia inquired. Gold coin. This is the money with the highest value. Money, what is that? So this is your question. Alicia jumped up in shock. Ferris felt apologetic for making Alicia shock. The shop manager also opens her mouth wide in surprise. Alicia then placed a finger over her lips and began thinking hard. That, how should I explain? This, if someone works, I should say that this is the reward. The reward is bread though. UN, yes, just like what Ferris is saying, however, people usually receive money instead of bread. Then, giving the money to other people, you could obtain some items from the other party. You could also use this to ask someone to work for you. Money is amazing. Ferris opened her eyes wide. She though that this is just like magic. In other words, gold coin, I can get it if I work a lot, right? That's right. Th, that, buying stuff, could be done. I, did not do any work, but you gave a lot of food. Ferris suddenly felt guilty. Although she is happy looking at the dress, but after thinking, she understood that she receives such beautiful things without doing anything. In other words, everything that happens so far is thanks to the kindness of the Gaudenbert family. Ferris felt that she could not behave like a spoiled child any further. However, Alicia just held Ferris's hand, and gently said, Ferris, please, compare to what I have done for you, you much more for me. If I really did get kidnapped by those men, my life would be plunged into darkness. B, but. You are my benefactor, not matter how little, I would like to thank you and repay you. Do you understand, any tilde, Ferris? Why, yes. Ferris could only nod stiffly after being stared at by her blue eyes. Deep within her chest, Ferris felt embarrassed and slightly warm, but she does not know what to do. In her entire life, nobody has been so kind to Ferris, not even once. She felt that she would melt under such a warm feeling, as her tiny chest trembled slightly. A carriage has been parked in front of the Gaudenbert family mansion. The coachman carried everyone's luggage into the carriage, and then sit at his seat. There is a capable-looking sword woman who sat beside him. 
Alicia and Ferris shrank their body due to the icy cold morning breeze, and stood face to face with Robert beside the carriage. Today is finally the day, where the two will travel to the city with magic school. It will take one week of travel before reaching that city. Robert spoke to her daughter who is wearing an overcoat. Well then, Alicia, please be careful over various things. UN, please leave it to me. Alicia smiled faintly. Her daughter really resembles his wife. Ferris also quickly gave her farewell. Thank you, Robert San. You really took care of me. Ah, please be careful. Come back with Alicia during your holiday. Yes. Alicia and Ferris board the carriage. The sound of the coachman whipping could be heard, and the carriage moved. Looking at the carriage sending her daughter and her benefactor away, Robert eyebrow frown. After meeting Ferris, he did some investigation into the magic stone mine that she worked in, but there is none within the distance a normal girl could walk away from on her own. There is also no report of the transaction of large amount of magic stone. However, Ferris does not seem to be a child that would lie. In other words, the location of the magic stone mine is cleverly hidden. Furthermore, there is also the incident of kidnapping Alicia. He also could not understand the motive of the crime. According to the head guard, there is an increasing incident of magician apprentice being kidnapped. Both situation is related to magic. There is definitely someone planning something. This is a gut feeling. However, Robert do not have a clue of everything that occurred thus far. Both of you, please be careful. As Robert stared into the sky, he prays for the safety of Alicia and Ferris. Chapter 7 The Road Towards School Asterisk clop, asterisk clop, with the rhythmical sound of horses galloping, the Gaudenbert family's carriage is traveling at a steady pace. Seemingly blessing the two of them with a safe journey are the clear blue sky and the swigging evergreen grass field. Where tilde, where tilde, where tilde, this, is my first time, on a carriage, it's so fast. With the smell of flowery fragrance and light breeze blowing on her fringe, Ferris shouted excitedly while leaning half of her body over the carriage's window. F, Ferris, it is dangerous leaning your body out. Alicia noticed this and became worried. Making everyone worried, Ferris felt apologetic and sat on her seat obediently. However, her line of sight would not move away from the scenery. This is the first time she is seeing the scenery changing so quickly, so her heart is beating rapidly. Their escort, the sword women, laughed heartily. Waha, Ojusama, seems like Ferris's elder sister. You are usually the youngest around, but now that there is someone younger than you, you felt a sense of responsibility swelling upright. That, that is not the case. It is just, I felt that I could not leave Ferris alone. Alicia's cheek is dyed red. As she usually acts like an adult, Ferris suddenly felt her gap to Alicia being closer, looking at such an unexpected youthful expression. Alicia then happily brought out a parcel from within a bamboo basket. After opening the parcel, neatly cut and arranged bread stuffed with meats and vegetables could be seen. Although it is still slightly early, let's have our meal. This is something the head maid rarely made, her special sandwich. W.A. Tilda, sandwich, my first time eating. Looking at such delicious looking bread, Ferris' stomach started grumbling. Observing Ferris, Alicia smiled faintly at her. Fufu Tilda, Ferris, really have many first time. Yes, I have a lot of first time in this world. Ferris held the sandwich with both her hand, and reveals her smile. After Gaudenbert's family carriage traveled for three days, a fault appeared. The right wheel of the carriage abruptly fell loose, rolling down the grass patch. The coachman hurriedly stopped the horses, threw his hat away and chased after the wheel, but is unable to catch it. The coachman then looked at the wheel that finally fell into the bottom of the valley with and showed an expression as if the world is ending. The group then travel by foot to the nearest city, but all the carriage sold in the city appears to damage as well, and would take at least one week to repair, as they would not be able to make it in time for the school opening ceremony if they wait any longer, the group decide to search for a public used carriage. This is weird. I double check the day before we depart, so there should not be any fault. Holding a walking stick while shaking his head, the coachman would remain in the city, 
while Ferris, Alicia and the guard sword women would continue the journey. By the time they managed to find a public carriage on the busy street, it is already late in the evening. With the help of Alicia, Ferris climbed into the carriage and sat down. There were also other travelers in the carriage and the two of them were being observed by them. Oya Tilda, such a young traveler, are you not with your parents? An Obasan with face full of wrinkle asked Ferris with a coarse voice. P, parent, not here but. Ferris felt afraid. This is her first time seeing an elderly woman, so she thought that she saw a monster. It is not good running away from home. Should I bring you to the guard? No, no I don't want to be brought there but. Being forced to go somewhere else by someone, hate it. At long last, found a place I like. Appearing from behind Ferris, the guard sword women also sat down. You do not have to be worried, Obasan. These children are in the middle of traveling to their school. I will supervise them carefully so as not to cause anyone trouble. After hearing that, a man sitting next to the Obasan clicked his tongue. What, some rich people? Why even use public transport? The smell of your gold coin is unpleasant. M, me, weird smell. Ferris hurriedly smelled the sleeve of her clothes. Alicia then placed her hand on Ferris's shoulder. Please calm down, Ferris. This is not what he meant. What does he mean then? Ferris still does not know the answer. Later on, all the passenger in the carriage looked towards her direction with icy cold gaze. Ferris desperately tried to think of the bad things that she did, but is unable to come up with an answer. The only thing that she could do now, is to curl up her body as small as possible next to Alicia. The public carriage then departs and left the street. Under the moonless night sky, the carriage moves forward in the deserted waste field. The sound of snoozing coming from other travelers could be heard soon after departure, but Ferris could not sleep no matter how much she tried. First, she could not calm down with so many strangers beside her. Also, different from the Gaudenbert family's carriage, this is a public-used carriage so cold air continuously seep in. With a thick blanket over her body, Ferris still felt cold as her small body is unable to produce sufficient heat. Alicia looked at Ferris with worrying eyes. Ferris, do you still feel cold? I am fine. The winter in the mine is even colder, achoo. Although she could still bear with it, she however could not control her body. Really, you are not fine at all. Come over here. It would not be cold anymore if we stick to one another. Saying that, Alicia invited Ferris into her own blanket and stick their body together. It's warm, a wonderful sweet feeling. The two cover themselves with the blanket up to their nose, and Ferris begun to feel warm. Really, not cold, anymore, he he he. She felt at ease, and not long after, Ferris felt into a deep sleep. Hey, hey, that, what is that? Such a ridiculous number, why would they appear at such a place? Ferris opened her eyes after being abruptly woken up by people screaming. The sound of rapid swinging of the whip could be heard. The carriage then speeds up even faster. The sword women peek over the window to look at the situation while gripping the sword hanging over her waist. Ferris inquired Alicia with an anxiety plaster over her face. Eh, hey, eh no, what happened? Just a few demons appeared, any tilde. It would be fine, so Ferris do not have anything to worry. Despite reassuring Ferris, Alicia's voice still sounded stiff. D, demon. That simple word, is something that even Ferris have heard of. Even when working in the mine, her masters and the miners would often speak about the terrifying, demon. That is something different from human or beast, an existence of pure evil. Attacking animals, eating human beings and always committing cruel acts. Ordinary human would not have the ability to fight against them, and even trained soldiers could still be easily killed by them. They possess such a frightening ability. And there are many of such demons. Ferris took a peek over the window while feeling frightened. Hi. Over there. Skeletons wielding sword, a total of ten body chasing after the carriage. They are running as fast as the horses, no, they are rapidly closing on the carriage. We can't make it, they will catch us. After the coachman cried bitterly, a rapid commotion occurs within the carriage. This caused the horse to stop abruptly and the carriage came to a halt. 
all the passenger in the carriage got knocked down onto the floor, and Ferris desperately held onto the rolling Alicia. The two of you, please stay hidden in the carriage, I will do something about it. The sword women then jumped out of the carriage, the skeleton raises their sword around and charge head on to her. The clashing of swords causes a bright spark in the darkness. The sword women is swinging her sword at a speed that is fast even to the naked eye. One of the skeleton then pierces her shoulder and blood could be seen dripping down. The ten skeleton surrounds the sword women and continuously attack her. The sound of blood splattering causes Ferris to shiver in fear and cover her ears with both hands. However, the sound of battle still heartlessly seeps into flow into her eardrum. Damn it, I would not let you do as you please, also, I owe Robert a favor. I would not like you touch the girls. The sword woman shriek a battle cry, and swung her sword from overhead with all her strength. The skeleton got sliced into two. Screaming like a wild beast, the sword woman destroy the skeleton one after another. In a blink of an eye, all the skeleton got smashed into pieces and fell onto the ground and stopped moving. Amazing. Ferris became speechless after witnessing the strength of the sword woman. She thought that the swordwoman looked cool. Although she felt that she would be unable to become an adult as reliable as her, she still looked up to be like her. She felt relieved now. However, out of the blue, the ground trembled after a huge purple-colored magic formation appears. The ground is sliced open, and after all the dust cleared up, as a giant skeleton demon appears, its hollow eye socket is glowing with a faint light, and purple mist are emitting from its mouth and in its hand, it is holding onto a club as thick as the truck of a tree. Oh my oh my, seriously, this is not something to laugh at. At the same time the sword woman is biting her lips, the giant skeleton charged forward, the skeleton howled and swung its back horizontally, knocking the sword women into the air. After tumbling on the ground, the sword woman stopped moving. No, no way. Alicia quickly took out her magic rod from the luggage. She immediately tumbles out of the carriage, and pointed the beautifully craved rod at the giant skeleton. A mysterious chant could then be heard from Alicia. Flame of purification, destroy the evil being, spirit fire. A ball of fire flew out from her rod. The ball of fire hit the skeleton. However, no damage had been dealt, and the skeleton then approaches the carriage. The skeleton kept cranking of its teeth while swinging its club. All the passenger huddle in a corner of the carriage, some with shivering in fear. It's the end, it's already the end, we will all die. No, I don't want to become the demon's food, I don't want TTT. Kamisama, Kamisama. Some people accepted their fate, some fell into a state of panic, while the rest kept mumbling to themselves. The sword woman which everyone was depending on is now lying on the ground, bleeding dripping from her forehead. Ferris is also shivering uncontrollably, extremely afraid, will be beaten to death by the skeleton, hate it, definitely be painful, tears started flowing as she thought of the scene, Ferris. Alicia hugged Ferris tightly, as though trying to shield Ferris from the giant skeleton, Alicia used her own body and cover over Ferris, Ferris realized that Alicia was also shivering, that's right, Alicia is also just as afraid. No matter how excellent she is, she is still just a small girl. But, such a small is trying to protect her at all cost. Ferris desperately tried to control her fear. And at this moment, Ferris felt something hot igniting in her body. Ferris broke free from Alicia's arm and climbed out. F. Ferris. The troubled Alicia then stood up after Ferris. Forcefully stepping forward with a figure that looked like she would collapse. With shaking arms, her palm pointed towards the giant skeleton. While fighting her fear, she chanted the same aria which Alicia just used. F. Flame of purification, destroy the evil being, spirit fire. It felt as though all the voice in this world is silenced. Even the grass stopped swaying as the time temporary freezes. Immediately afterwards, a huge flame spewed out from Ferris's palm. It is then gathering into a huge ball of swirling fire dying the night sky bright. The flame then hit the giant skeleton head on, burning in crimson flames. Then came the last scream of the giant skeleton. The flame burned the giant skeleton into nothingness, not even the ash remains. Nothing except the heat from the flames remains after that instant. The enemy is gone, 
and there is nothing threatening her life. Ferris fell and sat on the ground. Alicia ran over in a panic. Ah, are you okay? My waist is wobbling. Ferris looked at Alicia and laughed heartedly. I am very sorry for all the various trouble. Ferris ran back into the carriage and lowered her head and apologized to all the passengers. Eh, eh. Ferris felt troubled next. We got saved all thanks to Oji Chan. I am sorry that I said some bad things about you. So, thank you very much. The man that she felt was a bad person is now thanking her passionately. I am still alive to see my grandchild after this. Really thank you, thank you. The Obasan full of wrinkles was thanking Ferris while holding both of her hands. You are an amazing magician. You are my benefactor. A youth with a good physical body is laughing cheerfully. It surprised me that the one I am supposed to protect, save my life instead. The swordwoman laughed bitterly while being treated by Alicia. She did not suffer any lethal injuries and only lost conscious for a short period of time. It seems that everyone is thanking Ferris. However, she was at a loss on how she should respond after being swarmed with so much gratitude. Oji Chan, you must be hungry after using such a powerful magic. There is some ham that my wife made, if you don't mind, please eat some. This biscuit, have some too. I have some delicious chiffon cakes, since you are still growing, you should eat more. This dress is tailored made for my grandchild, but, she could wait this time round, please take this dress too. The travelers kept on giving Ferris stuff. W, wait, stop stuffing food into Ferris's mouth, she will explode. An Alicia that is trying to stop them, Muguuuu. Because Ferris's mouth was stuffed and overloaded with delicious food, her eyes rolled white, and she fainted. Chapter 8 Magic School Yu Chan, thank you very much, also, take this bread as a souvenir. It's not much, but here's some pocket money, please buy yourself a meal. Yu 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 Yu, I will be lonely once Ferris Chan leave, can we meet again? As Ferris arrived in the city of Trey, where the magic school was located, the passenger that rode the public carriage regretfully part with her. She was hugging a mountain of souvenirs given by the passenger and was staggering as she could not see anything in front of her. The swordswoman would also be staying in Trey for a while, so she left after mentioning that she wanted to look for her lodging. Fure, for some reason, it felt like a storm day suit. Ferris sighed as she was stroked by the passengers so much that her whole head became messy. Everyone was looking at her with frightening gaze initially, but they became gentle the instant after she used magic. She felt that magic was probably an amazing thing. Hence, she wanted to become even better with magic, and would learn it diligently in school. Everyone became so friendly any tilde. Alicia smiled back and groomed Ferris's hair. Ferris felt that compared to being stroked by the passengers, she felt a higher sense of comfort being touched by Alicia. All right, you became cute. Let's go to school. Alicia led it Ferris towards the school. The magic school could be found after walking straight through the main street of Trey and into the business district. The school was surrounded by chocolate-colored fence with many white-colored buildings. The roof was made from red-colored brick and was extremely beautiful and walking to and fro on the wide school ground were many children wearing the school uniform of the magic school. Little boys and girls as young as five years old were running around. Young girls around the age of Alicia were talking happily while walking. A girl with an aura of Wani-san was sitting on a bench and reading a book with a serious expression. Children could be seen at every corner, giving off an energetic scenery. However, this was the first time that Ferris seen so many children, so it caused her to feel uneasy. Unconsciously, she tightly grabbed the coat of Alicia, who was walking beside her. Are you nervous? Alicia asked while feeling concerned. Ye, yes. Ferris nodded with small movement. After this, I would like to greet the headmaster, but are you all right? Do you feel tired? But I must introduce Ferris to him. I am all right, but headmaster, who is he? Well, the most important person in this school. Scary person, Desu? Not scary at all. Although he is extremely strong, he still gave off the impression of a kind Oja-chan. 
I understand. Introducing myself, I will do my best. Ferris clenched her fist. It is all right to be yourself, it is just a greeting after all. I understand. Good morning, master, I will greet him energetically. He is not that kind master, please remember this. Alicia corrected Ferris in a panic once she noticed her mistake. The information regarding this royal magic school were all highly classified, so things learned from the school must not be shared outside. Hence, information such as rumors Elle heard from the school must also be kept within. Thus, it was for the best that Robert chose the magic school to accept the irregular existence known as Ferris. Moreover, there were too many things that Ferris did not know. She must learn all the common sense to survive in this society. She must grow up to be an outstanding magician and not be corrupted by her powers. More than that, she must experience interacting and learning together with all kinds of people. Although this is what Alicia heard from her father, she shivers when she thought about taking care of Ferris at the magic school that was full of students. The headmaster's office was furnished with huge bookshelves and a thick desk. The walls were decorated with many strange grass and pelt ornaments, while the floor and ceiling had strange patterns. The person that welcomed Ferris and Alicia into the room was an elderly headmaster, wearing a long robe and a pointy hat. His beard was so long that it touches the ground, and he squirmed his eye while observing Ferris. Fumu, so this is the girl that Robert mentioned in his letter, I see, I could feel that she is special. However, Alicia tilted her head, is that the case? She looked just like any normal girl, although it is a fact that she is special. That, Alicia, is a difference in experience. This is my observation after seeing so many students. I can grasp the capability and future of each student just by observation. My future, you know as well. Yes, I have a general grasp of it. However, after meeting with this young girl, your future underwent a drastic change. After answering Alicia, the headmaster then spoke to Ferris. Speaking of which, Ferris, why did you keep staring at the hole between my beard since you entered? She felt the feeling that she was reprimanded, and swung her hand around in a frenzy. Ah, I, am sorry, my first time seeing such a long beard, so I think it is amazing. I see, do you also want a beard like this? Yes, I also want a long beard, I looked very cool. If you try your best, you could also grow such a long beard. Since that is the case, I will teach you a magic to make you grow a long beard. Thank you very much, I will do my best to make it long. Stop now. Alicia made an urgent stop to the conversation after seeing Ferris' eyes became sparkling with expectation. Is that a no desu? No way, a girl does not need any beard. Looking at Alicia expressing her opinion so strongly, the headmaster shook his head in disapproval. This is not good, Alicia. This is a prejudice opinion. If you snatch away the endless possibilities of a youth, you will be labeled as a 95 years old lady. I am 12 years old Desu, why does even headmaster call me 95 years old? Alicia protested but the headmaster just skillful dodged her question. Well, let's ignore that for now. Do you have anything you like to do, Ferris? A, hey, me Desu. Then, a wooden case came flying in from the door leading to the corridor. A. Hey. Ferris became surprised as the headmaster manipulated the door and the wooden case without even touching it. The wooden case then landed in front of Ferris, and then opened by itself. Looking at the content in the case, several books and a wooden wand came rolling out. These are presents for Ferris. Presents. Although I do not know the use for it, still, thank you very much. I am happy. Ferris started jumping in joy. Although she did not know why she was given presents, but the word presents sounded wonderful. These are all used for studying. Look, a complete set of textbook and a wand. Study, book. Ferris attempted to flip the book but was clumsy. There were white pages, pages that were not so white, and pages that were totally not white. There are small patterns on the paper. Pattern. Pattern. Both the headmaster and Alicia revealed a shocked expression. Ferris realized that she said something strange, but did not know what was so strange about it. And that would stick, what is it? 
That is a wand. A magician would be unable to use magic without a wand. So that is the case. I did not know. Ferris smiled faintly and hugged the wand tightly. Being able to obtain such an outstanding tool, she thought that today was a lucky day. Atilda, speaking of which, this should be the case. But, why does Ferris? Alicia placed her hand on her lips and started mumbling. The two of you should be exhausted. Please return to your dorm and rest for now, and prepare for the opening ceremony tomorrow. Under the gentle gaze of the headmaster, Ferris and Alicia left the room. This is the female dormitory of the magic school. Basically, everyone will leave here during school period. Although many children would return home to see their parents during long holiday, some would still remain in dormitory. Uwa. Alicia guided Ferris and walked through the corridor of the female dormitory. The interior design of the dormitory gave off a calming atmosphere. The walls were decorated with many painting and cute curtains were hanging on the windows. There are tables placed everywhere, and many girls were chatting happily around. One of the girl had a serious expression while passing a piece of paper to another girl. Ferris did not understand what she was doing or why she was holding onto the paper so tightly. There were many doors along the stretch of the corridor. Alicia then entered one of them and placed the luggage down and onto the carpet. The room was decorated to suit girls. Although it was not big by any means, there were still two beds, desk and chair. There were two of everything, even for the bookshelves and clothes cabinet. This is Ferris's room. For things such as cup or mirror, let's buy them at the business district later. T. That. Ferris started fidgety her fingers. What is it? Alicia San, which room are you staying? Ferris would feel uneasy if Alicia stayed too far away. This was the first time staying near so many girls, so she did not have to confirm to get along with everyone. In the first place, she was just a small child, so there were many things that she was unfamiliar with. Alicia started laughing all of a sudden. Of course, I am staying with Ferris, because, if I took my eyes of you, I would not know where you would fly to. I, I would not fly, I don't have any wings. Is that really the case? Your wing might be hidden here. Hiya, yeah, it is itchy, Alicia-san. Ferris started laughing and shrunk her neck after her back was tickled by Alicia. However, she felt relieved from the bottom of her heart knowing that Alicia was staying in the same room as her. As long as Alicia was here, there was nothing to be afraid of. She would even try her best to get used to the school. Midnight. The moonlight was shining onto her bed and Ferris opened her eyes wide. Could not sleep. Not sleepy at all. She did not move an inch since covering herself with her blanket, but there was no sign of her falling asleep. Her life in school from tomorrow onward, what she could learn from the school, is there anyone she could be friends with, with all kinds of thoughts, there was no helping it and she was full of expectation. She could not control herself and wanted to dance to release the emotion she was feeling now. Ferris then started jumping on her bed. Ferris, what happened? Alicia got up from the bed next to her. Ah, I am sorry, for waking you up. Yuan, I have yet to fall asleep. That's great Daisu. If you do not sleep now, it would be tough getting through tomorrow. Although I know this, but, I could not sleep. My heart is beating. Ferris continued jumping on the spot. She even felt like running around the dormitory, but it seemed that she would get into trouble. Looking at Ferris, Alicia started smiling. It's troubling any tilde. It's troubling. Un, then, do you want to sleep together? By sleeping together, you might calm down a bit. Is it okay? Of course. Alicia lifted the corner of her blanket and invited Ferris into her bed. Ferris entered the blanket and leaned her body against Alicia. Such a sweet smell. Soft and smooth touch. Sticking so close to Alicia, even Ferris could not explain the feeling of ease coming from the bottom of her heart. Truthfully, I could not sleep as I was also nervous, just like Ferris. Ferris' eyelid closed while returning a smile to the mischievous acting Alicia. The opening ceremony of the magic school was held in the auditorium on the following morning. The auditorium was so wide and tall that it seemed unreal. Ferris even felt her neck straining when she attempted to look at the ceiling. 
the auditorium was illuminated by sunlight entering from the front window. Furthermore, the person talking with his back facing the sunlight was the headmaster that she met yesterday. Within the students that were standing orderly, Ferris was the only one that was looking left and right during the headmaster speech. When she looked around her, all the other students were standing still and paying attention to the headmaster. Realizing that, Ferris did her best and tried to pay attention to the headmaster but still ended up looking around. It was unexpectedly difficult standing straight and doing nothing. Ferris must concentrate on a level that she had never experienced in her life. The opening ceremony of the magic school was held in the auditorium on the following morning. The auditorium was so wide and its ceiling was so tall that it made one believe it to be a lie. Ferris' neck felt painful after she tried looking at the ceiling. The auditorium was illuminated by the light entering from the window at the front, as sunlight sapped in naturally. And the person talking with his back facing the sunlight was the headmaster that she met yesterday. Among the students that were standing in an orderly line, only Ferris was looking left and right during the headmaster's speech. When she looked around her, all the other students were not moving around at all and were paying attention to the headmaster. Realizing that, Ferris did her best and tried to pay attention to the headmaster but still ended up looking around. It was unexpectedly difficult standing straight and doing nothing. Ferris must concentrate on a level that she had never experienced in her life. Well then, the new school term has just begun. It is a new beginning for building the foundation for your future. For the first class, you must gain an even deeper understanding regarding the knowledge of magic. For the middle class, do work harder to master your skills in magic. As for the final class, it is time for you to decide on your future path. These are mainly. The headmaster kept on talking. However, he was the only one that spoke while not even one student spoke. Moreover, even the adults remained silent. Ferris felt mysterious at this situation. Normally, if you are speaking to someone but if the other party did not reply, you would feel sad. Being ignored was such painful. Hence, Ferris felt that the headmaster must have been ignored by everyone. Such a terrible thing. She felt pity for the headmaster. Ferris decided, it is important to have a dream. Without it, humans would not be able to achieve their goal. For magicians, they would not be able to use magic to their full potential. Everyone, have you ever dream of your future? Not yet Desu. Responding to the headmaster's question, Ferris replied energetically. Many pairs of eyes gathered on Ferris. A commotion was seen among the students. Ferris then realized that she made a mistake. This is an occasion where you did not have to answer. This was common sense. Embarrassed. Really embarrassed. Ferris felt that her cheek was turning red like tomatoes. In the end, until the end of the ceremony, Ferris shrunk her body and lowered her head. Chapter 9 Unable to read Once the ceremony was over, the students returned to their respective classrooms to meet their homeroom teacher. There were many rows of desks in the classroom and all the students sat on their seats. Ferris then judged that this was a situation where one must not move around, so she obediently sat while sighing. It seemed that the teachers showed consideration by allocating Ferris, the seat next to Alicia's. Although Ferris was relieved being next to Alicia, she still could not calm herself down. Aino, Alicia-san, for some reason, everyone is staring at me. Alicia smiled upon hearing Ferris's question. This is something I expect. Ferris is the only student transferring into middle class during this semester. Do not mind it too much. UN, I do not mind, but. At any rate, the miners at the magic stone mine all looked at Ferris like she was a bug on the floor. She was not used to being in the center of attention. While she was sitting nervously, a fashionable girl skipped and jumped into the classroom, wearing a red hat and shoes, wearing a pair of earrings and holding onto a sparkling staff. That girl was now standing at the front of the classroom and tapping the floor with her staff. Hi, hi Tilda, let's begin with a good morning Tilda. It seems that everyone is present Tilda so no one died during the holidays Tilda. Good morning. The students returned her greeting. Ferris then asked Alicia with quietly, That person, who is she? She is our homeroom teacher, Lotta Sensei. Teacher, she looks like a child. Ah, ah, 
There are many powerful female magicians that uses magic to stop aging. They wanted to be young forever. I see, amazing. Lotta Sensei used her staff and pointed at the two that were whispering. Wait a moment Tilda. Sensei is a genuine 12 years old. Don't Tilda create weird rumors. She corrected them cheerfully and everyone started laughing. Ferris felt a sense of envy when she saw that everyone has a good relationship. No matter how good the relationship in the classroom was, it was still excluding Ferris. She knew a lot about it as the miners and her masters has good relationship. Ferris was always excluded every time. Well Tilda, you know Tilda, although it is sudden, but let's do a test. The students shriek upon hearing the announcement. Sensei, it is too sudden, I was not informed of this, I don't want to study. Cries of despair could be heard in the classroom, but Lotta Sensei just snorted. The reason for the test is for me to understand your current abilities. Those who complain shall become sacrifices for my magic experiment. With a wave of her staff, papers appeared from the air and landed on her desk. She then passed the paper to the students sitting on the front row. While all students showed a face of disgust, there was however a girl who acted arrogantly. All of you start to panic because you did not take study seriously enough, Desuwa. I am different. I do not have any problem Desuwa. Ho ho Tilda, Jeanette Chen is also energetic today Tilda. Lotta Sensei laughed happily. The girl named Jeanette looked as beautiful as Alicia-san. Long hair like wavy water. Slender and well-proportioned body. Long legs. Her lips were firm, while her eyes showed her strong sense of pride. Although her expression looked like she harbored some grudge, it instead gave her a beautiful charm that could rival anyone. Ferris felt that Jeanette is an amazing person. Jeanette then puffed her chest and pointed towards Alicia. Alicia Gaudenbert, let's have a match, Desua, just who can score the highest point. I will definitely defeat you. Just why must we have a match? This is just a test to gauge our abilities, so it doesn't matter who will get a better score, right? Alicia simply refuted her. Jeanette then started stomping on the floor. Why does your face look so calm? It makes me feel angry. Regardless, if I win this, it will prove that the Reinslick family is better than the Galdenbert family. You better be prepared. For some reason, Ferris felt that the two were not on good terms. It was unfortunate as Ferris wanted to be friends with Jeanette. All right now, please stop playing around. Test, test Tilda Tilda. Begin Tilda Tilda. I, I am not playing around. This is a serious duel. Jeanette's face turned red as she sank into silence and sat down. All the students then started to focus on the test paper that was handled out. Just what are we going to do now? Ferris' heart beats rapidly as she looked at the paper that appears on her desk, and she tilted her head. Ain't no tilde, these pattern, what are they? Lotta Sensei also felt troubled. NN, there are no questions regarding magic formation for this exam tilde tilde, which pattern are you talking about? The whole paper, is drawn full of small patterns. Alicia grasped and covered her mouth upon hearing what Ferris said. It couldn't be. Ferris, you can't read letters. Letters, what is that? Don't understand. It seemed that those patterns were called letters, but Ferris does not know the significance of it. She does not even know what she needs to do. Jeanette then cut into the conversation. A-R-A tilde A-R-A. A-R-A tilde A-R-A tilde A-R-A tilde. This is so surprising, Desua. How did you pass the entrance examination without knowing how to read? I demand an explanation. NN Tilda, the headmaster said that it was not necessary, so I thought that there would be no issue Tilda Tilda. Lotta Sensei followed up and explained. However, this only caused Jeanette to be even more agitated. I understand now. Speaking of which, Alicia San's father and the headmaster has been close friends. In other words, it is connection Desu. We could only enter the magic school after passing the difficult entrance examination, but Alicia used her connection and invited her friend into the school. Well, you could also say it this way. Alicia admitted bluntly. I felt shocked. This is clearly unfair. No, not only is it unfair, it is also abuse of power. All our hard work is wasted. Committing such a dishonest act, 
I feel so regretfully that I wanted to cry. After Jeanette expressed her opinion loudly, a rustle brewed among the students. Is this for real? This is too cunning. It's horrible. Having money is so good. Everyone stared at Ferris and Alicia with hostility. Looking at Alicia biting her lips, Jeanette had an expression of victory. On the other hand, Ferris felt her face becoming hot. This situation was no good. She did not care if others spoke ill of her, but she could not accept them targeting Alicia. Alicia is gentle, has a kind heart, and a girl that should be loved by everyone. Ferris then looked straight at Lotta Sensei. Sen, Sensei, please give me the exam. A. Which kind of exam? The entrance exam. If I could properly pass it, there should be no problem. Well, there will be no problem if you show you have the talent. Lotta Sensei nod and agreed. If that is the case, I will pass it. Jeanette sneered, hearing Ferris' declaration. Can you even pass when you can't even read letters? I can do it. So what if you fail? Will you take the responsibility and quit school? Please stop here. Hey, Ferris, stop making weird promises. Alicia tried to stop her in a panic, but Ferris does not intend to let it go. I will do my best. For the sake of the gentle nature of Alicia, I will do it. It is only an exam, so I will conquer it. Ferris made a vow in her heart. After class, sigh, I screwed up again. Jeanette reflected upon herself once she returned to her dormitory. The words that she said in the morning were due to a moment of impulse. She did not know what to do if Ferris really withdraw from the school. Jeanette did not want that. She did not even have feelings of animosity towards Ferris. Or rather, she felt that Ferris is cute and wanted to talk with her more. Alicia was the one she had feelings of animosity to. Wrong, the Gaudenbert family to be exact. The Reinslick family that she was born into had such antagonistic opinion. If it seemed that Ferris is going to drop out of school, I will do something to rectify it and then become friends with her. This is good Desua. UN, let's go with this solution. Jeanette clenched her fist and nodded proudly. Ferris and Alicia had no way of knowing such a thing. In the library of the magic school, they were going to start studying seriously. Alicia San, I will do my best. Please teach me what is, letters. That, it might be easy for you to start reading picture books. Alicia tilted her head. For now, want to sit on my lap? Yes. Both of them were full of determination. Chapter 10 Unable to read The library of the magical school was on the level that it was no longer could be called a library. There were dozens of bookshelves lined up all of which were packed with books and overflowing with knowledge. The books on the surface were just a tip of the iceberg, and a large number of books were also stored on the closure, but of course Ferris did not know such a thing. Rather, she did not even know the existence of a book itself, so she was wondering if it was something like Warehouse from a while ago. Alicia brought a thin paper bundle and show it to Ferris. This is a book, you do know what a book is, right? I don't know. It was a cheerful reply. Well, the book is thing that record the words we are talking so that we can read it later anytime. Is it pickled word? Pickle? Well, maybe something like that. So, if you have a book, you can give the knowledge to the people even in hundreds of years in the future, and on the other hand, you get the knowledge of people in the past. Who? It's amazing, isn't it? When Alicia told that, Ferris suddenly thought that the library was a wonderful place. This was a treasure box. It was a treasury of knowledge. She was excited about what kind of knowledge were hidden in this many collected books. Surely there were a lot of things that Ferris didn't know. I want to be able to read books soon. Teach me the letters. Well, let's start with this page. Alicia opened a book. Thirty small patterns were lined up there. This is a letter alphabet each of which is assigned a sound, and we make a sentence by combining this alphabet. This is A, this is B, this is C, D, E, F. Alicia pronounced clearly while her finger pointed to the letter. After reading all 30 pieces, Alicia looked into Ferris' eyes. What do you think? Let's try to remember about 10 alphabets for now. I already remembered it. 
Ha! Huh. I already have remembered everything. Such, I have only read it once, no way. Well, I will read it, please let me know if I made a mistake. Ferris pointed at the alphabet noted in the book one by one while pronounced it. Alicia's eyes were steadily widened more and more every time. When Ferris finished read all thirty pieces, Alicia breathlessly exhilarated. Awesome, awesome Ferris, it was the first time for you to saw the alphabet, wasn't it? Why can you remember? No, I can remember somehow. Ferris didn't know how can she remember. However she felt that she already familiar with it since long time ago. After remember the character, next is knowledge. Ferris was aware that herself was lacking of knowledge. Um, Alicia-san, are there any recommended books to pass the test? First I will remember the words, then, if I can remember the simplest things in order, I will be saved. Well, let's see. Alicia went around the library and gathered a word dictionary, a beginner's book of magic, a advanced reference book, etc. all at once. For Ferris who restlessly followed from behind, she carefully selected and put together good books. Ferris was now like a sponge that absorbed knowledge as much as possible. While thinking like that, Alicia secretly added an advanced reference book. Alicia herself in the middle class were not studying that book yet, but perhaps Ferris will understand. Starting with this word dictionary, if you study these twenty volumes from left to right, I think you can catch up with everyone. Alicia showed the books on the desk. Thank you, I will do my best. Ferris proclaimed with her exciting heart. As she said, Ferris tried hard. She tried hard enough to die. She always carried dictionaries and textbooks, and read it all the time. Continue to pour information into her head whenever she had break, when walked, even when she ate. As soon as the school was over she immediately flew back to the dormitory, stayed in the room and read the books. That test study was not painful for Ferris. Rather, it was an exciting experience that she has never had before, because she was woken up by a huge amount of knowledge that she didn't know. Understanding. Discovery. Surprise. Impression. The brain cells are stimulated, the blood of the whole body boiled, and the heart beats so fast. The foundation of magic, its usage, training methods, concepts, and advanced technique passed through the eyes and spread through the body. Ferris, I got you a dinner from the cafeteria, shall we break and eat? Alicia called Ferris who read a textbook, but Ferris seems to be unable to hear because she is too obsessed. She clenched the textbook tightly with both hands and blink her eyes sometimes. I never see someone who likes study this much. Alicia with a small laugh brought a late night snack sandwich to the half-opened Ferris mouth. Ferris, who was immersed in study to the point of forgotten any meals, seems to be starved, reflexively chewed the sandwich. N-O-M 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 Alicia thought that such kind of care may also be enjoyable, looked at Ferris' appearance which looked like a starving kitten. Eh, you want to take the test already, is it fine? Lotta sensei asked Ferris. The grace period given for studying was a month but only a week has been passed. Even so, Ferris said that she would like to take a test even now. Naturally, the teacher is surprised, because when she talks about the time of test from Ferris, she thought that extension of the period was cut out. But Ferris says, It's all right, somehow, I'm afraid that I will forget everything when I wait too long. I want to recover Alicia's honor sooner than anything else. Oh, well, I'm fine with that. So, please follow me. Lotta Sensei smiled. The content of the test is overview of knowledge from first class to middle class. Attributes, technique, and strengthening of magic, histories related to magic, organization name and so on. In a closed classroom after school, Ferris alone stared at an answer sheet while being monitored by Lotta Sensei. And from the outside of the classroom, a lot of Ferris classmates stuck to the windows and watching the state of the test. Although Ferris somehow felt uneasy, she can't let herself lost concentration. This is for the sake of Alicia's honor. On the final day of the test, Ferris handed over the last answer, Lotta Sensei stroked Ferris' head. Thanks for the hard work, you really worked hard, the result will be announced tomorrow morning, so you can sleep soundly today. Yes. Ferris nods big and went out of the classroom. 
she was afraid that she can't sleep tonight due to worries, but she decided to give her body some rest for the time being. And Janet, who has watched the test with her classmates, is getting shy while it came to Ferris. Ah, that, Ferris, I have something I want to talk to you, but. E, what? Ferris, who did not anticipate to be spoken to by Jeanette, gave a blank expression. Jeanette tried to see Ferris while flickering his fingers. Well, it is a lot of, before this, but, me, that, to Ferris. Jeanette wanted to apologize, Jeanette wanted to say it, but no words came out of her throat. It was embarrassing to apologize before a lot of classmates, and it was also difficult to say the words honestly. Nothing, nothing. I am looking forward to the results of tomorrow. At best, prepare for packing. Oh no, I said a terrible thing again. I'm idiot. I'm fool. While leaving the spot with that speech, Jeanette was repeatedly hitting her own head. Students in the hallway were looking at Jeanette strangely, who was doing such a thing. Chapter 11 Result Announcement Morning Classroom After looked around and confirmed all the students already there, Lotta Sensei put a bunch of paper on the desk. Well, then I will return the result of Ferris Chan's transfer test. It came, and Ferris squeezed herself in the chair. If she cannot pass this test, she had to quit school, and had to work at some mine again. If only Ferris, who will be affected by this problem, she somehow could bear it. But she was troubled that Alicia's reputation remain lowered. She wanted at least Alicia's honor will be recovered. Lotta Sensei asked. Usually I won't announce each score, but if I do not announce it, this time everyone won't be convinced. Ferris Chan, is it okay? Yes, it's okay. Ferris nodded big. Then, attention everyone, this is Ferris' score. Lotta Sensei spread out seven papers in a fan shape and showed the score to the students. Alicia holds his mouth with both hands. The other classmate became noisy. Jeanette hit her desk and stood up. T-H-A that's impossible, impossible, a child who could not read a letter a week ago has such a score is dash. Everything, a hundred points, between full mark, is it a hundred points? Ferris asked while trembled, she studied magic books a lot, and knowledge of magic was there, but there was no mention of the scoring system of the test at all. So, she didn't know exactly how much one hundred points evaluation is. She was afraid because she didn't know. While Ferris likes that, Lotta Sensei told something to her. Among 100 points, it's 100 points. 100 points is full mark. Because it is all subjects, it's all perfect. Paifiku, too. Ferris' mind became blank. She did not understand what or how it was. She could not read the letters, immature and incompetent. She never expected to be able to got perfect score. While she thought this was a dream, she pinched her cheek. Ha! Huh, it hurts. It hurts so much. Tears come out. Take your hand off now. Alicia stopped Ferris, who desperately pinched her own cheek. A hundred points. Genius. Awesome. Cool. Classmates said so. Yeah, I was also surprised. I never thought she will get full mark. You've done it. As expected of transfer student who recognized by principle. Lotta Sensei nods with folded arm. Ferris looked straight in Janet's eyes. Here, with this you won't say bad things about Alicia San right? This is not unfair, right? Well, uh, that, that, I. Janet's words were stopped, turning her head down and said something, but Ferris couldn't hear it well. With her face turned red, she pointed to Ferris. I, 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 it is not to be decided yet. You only got written exam. You have not done any practical exam yet. Practical. Ferris became uneasy whether she still had to do something else. It's just lucky that she passed the written exam, but she didn't think that the next will also be successful. First, Ferris was just a mining slave. Yes, it is a practical exam. If you cannot use basic magic, you are not eligible to enter this magic school. The students here, everyone has been learning magic since childhood. Ferris, have you trained enough to match us? I haven't. I've been digging holes all the time. Ferris chewed his lips. Until recently, Ferris herself didn't realize that she could use magic. Not so much, but there is no way that she could match everyone in class. 
With such thought, her eyes started to get wet. Digging hole. Just by digging holes and you enrolled here. You make me laugh. You. Alicia put her hand on the shoulder of shrinking Ferris. It's fine. Ferris can properly use magic, right? Your power, it's fine to show it. But, my magic is still immature Anne. Lotta Sensei said something to hesitated Ferris. Even immature is fine, just show it. If there is enough quality, that would be good. So you could just use simple magic. Oh, okay, then. Ferris raised her hand nervously. If it just Aria, she had already memoized and understand it in test study. Stop, let's do it outside. Alicia stopped Ferris' hands in a panic. What's wrong, Alicia? Ask Lotta Sensei with blank look, because it's dangerous. I'm sorry, but please use Battle Training Center for Ferris' practical exam. Hmm, well, it's okay. Let's go ahead and move on to the training center. With Lotta Sensei instruction, students leaving classroom and move to training center. Ferris and Alicia also follow everyone. Behind them, Jeanette was holding her head. It was not meant to be like this. It should be a good thing that Ferris got the passing score. But, it's hard to say I'm sorry, and just sold another fight. For some reason, it was difficult to face Ferris directly. It was even more difficult than facing Alicia. Like being caught by strange thing. There was urge to reject everything that want to be said. Why, why did it become like this? In an empty classroom, Jeanette was crying alone. Chapter 12 Practical Exam The training ground was a large vacant land with a roof. The roof is translucent, and the sky can be seen through. The roof extends and becomes a wall that connects all the way to the ground. As she entered the training ground, Ferris tried to reach out, but slipped through and couldn't touch it. Ferris thinks this thing is called a magical barrier which was written in the magic textbook. Perhaps this is set as a safety measure, so that magic within the training ground doesn't leak out. Try not to enter inside the barrier, except Ferris. It's dangerous. Lotta Sensei instructs the students. Danger, ha, huh. I don't think there is such thing, since it's about the magic of a child who just entered middle class. Jeanette raises objection. Well, I was told that the principal is paying attention to her, so just in case. Lotta Sensei gave a bitter smile. Then, Ferris Chan, try using magic, anything is fine. Oh, yes. Ferris stood in the middle of the training ground, and her classmates looked at her from around the barrier. Jeanette was folding her arms and staring at Ferris. Because she thought that it was scary, she averted her eyes and met with Alicia, who was gently watching. Alicia nods as if relieved. Thanks to that, Ferris gained more powers, brought her hands up and aimed to the sky. Jeanette made an objection. Wait you there, what are you planning to do without staff? I'm not coming here to watch some pantomime. Well, it's magic. You need a staff to use magic. You should know that much, right? It's written in the book, that, that you can use magic without using a staff. Ha, huh, such thing, you are not witch of black rain, there is no way that you could do that. Do it seriously. Water of life that appease one's thirst drip, rain glass. Ferris casts an aria that was written in the textbook. Basic magic that first class students learn first. It is magic with the lowest difficulty among the water attribute, it can only put out fire or put water in the cup. Ferris chose this magic because she thought that she would be able to use it properly to a certain extent. As soon as she cast Aria, blue light emitted towards the sky from Ferris' surrounding. Blue light pierces the roof of the training ground. In an instant, small cracks spread through the roof and magic barrier wall. The barrier shatters. The blue light penetrates the sky and a circular shockwave exploded. The sky is wrapped in darkness, and the lightning begins to shine here and there. The air fluctuates and the plants make noise. The temperature steadily goes down, and thin ice forms on Ferris' cheek. Ah, this girl is bad. Lotta Sensei murmured in amazement. With a terrible momentum, heavy rain began to hit. Lightning stroke through the earth. Falling hail. Raging storm. With the noise as if the world were overturned, heavy water was falling from heaven, stirring the training grounds. The torrents overflow, and the students are screaming and running away. 
Ferris is also swallowed by water, desperately shouting at the water surface. J. A., Jeanette San, this, I could use the magic properly, right? Do not say bad things about Alicia Chan. It's not the time to say such thing. Jeanette's face sinks in the water. Alicia stops Ferris, who is going to drown. Lotta Sensei desperately chanted an aria, generate wind and drain the training ground. Eventually, when the storm ceased, the students were soaked and packed everywhere. Ferris feels that her blood is drawn. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't think it would be failed like this and bring trouble to everyone, I'm very, very sorry. Her classmate laughed a lot on Ferris who banging her head. What was that? What was that? That's too amazing. You must be crazy. That was disaster grade. A terrible girl has joined. Mojisuj. Students with excitement. E. A. Are you not angry? Ferris was confused. Lotta Sensei smiles. It's fine. They won't be angry just by something like that. Even though there are quirks, they are good children. I'm glad. Ferris breathed out in relief. Then, how about the test? Of course you pass, it's a big pass. I think there are reasons that you should attend magic school. Your skill is still no good, and it's important to know how to control your power. Yes, I want to learn a lot. Ferris thinks to not causing rampage like now. Jeanette was still drenched, but she was still full of energy and had her arms folded, with her sharp eyes at Ferris. Ferris is going to rush to Jeanette and talk to her. Oh, that, I'm sorry you got wet. Why are you apologizing? Well, why, why? Ferris feels that it's natural because she has done bad things. While watching Ferris who looked down, Jeanette was in trouble with her inner heart. She faces the other way. It was Jeanette who should apologize, because she tried to drive out a powerful magician with such ability from the magic school. But she does not know how to apologize. When she saw such power and apologized for that, she felt like she has lost. It is miserable, very regrettable. But, it is also important to recognize defeat properly. One girl could not be driven out of school by herself, Jeanette was quite relieved by that fact. So, she stopped to holding her embarrassment. Oh, that is, there is something I want to say to Ferris. When Jeanette saw Ferris, Ferris has gone back to schoolhouse along with Alicia. Jeanette also missed the opportunity to apologize to Ferris. I'm no good. Jeanette sighed as she wondered when she could become friends with Ferris. Chapter 13 Fun School The next morning, Ferris, who went to class from the dormitory was surrounded by her classmates. Hey, hey Ferris Chan, Ferris is, you are, from where, what are, until now, that. Since everyone was talking at the same time, she couldn't follow all of them. It couldn't be called a conversation anymore, it was just noise. The only thing that Ferris barely understood was that she was being asked something. She doesn't understand why she's being asked or why her classmate who paid no attention to her before suddenly came to her. E. A. I. I'm sorry. For now, Ferris apologized. Why apologize? Alicia laughed seeing Ferris like that. Somehow I felt that I must apologize. It's not like that, it's not that they're angry at Ferris, they're just interested in Ferris. Everyone wants to talk with Ferris. With Alicia's word, her classmate gave a big nod. Even after confirming that there was no malice, Ferris still shrunk her body. Be you but I can't say anything interesting. As long as Ferris talks, anything is fine. Is that so? Then, please, I will do my best to answer. Ferris hardened her fist. Fighting pose. However, the attack power wasn't high, rather it looked like a small animal when threatening something. So the classmates asked without restraint. Is Ferris Chen Galdenbert's son's sister? T-H-A that's wrong. Then, friend. Ferris became nervous with such an innocent question. Before, Alicia said that she was her friend, but is it fine to say it by herself? She worries that it would be insolent. There is a chance that she will trouble Alicia, and it might be embarrassing for a slave like her to declare herself as a friend, and a lot of things. But, a sweet smile from Alicia give her the courage to speak. We 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 are friends debt you. She faltered, 
Even though she did her best, when her face became unbearably hot, Ferris shrank and trembled from of shyness. Seeing Ferris like that, all female students were like, so cutey, while writhing. Not wanting to lose with the girls, the boys also ask, where was your school before you came here? You must have received personal training from a wonderful teacher, right? Um, this is my first time going to school. I worked as a slave in a mine before. Slave. All classmates widened their eyes. It seems that this is not something usual, Ferris realized. Ah, I'm sorry, because of that I can't read, and troubled everyone, I'm really sorry. No, no, that's not it. If it's like that, of course you can't read. Moreover, with only one week you got the perfect score. You are genius. You must have worked hard, right? Even if I do my best, I couldn't do that. There was no boy who tried to blame Ferris. They are kind people, Ferris thought. As if to oppose the boys, the girls who were near Ferris also started talking. Hey, hey, let's play in town together later, right? I want to have girls talk with girls only as much as I can. I know a delicious sweet shop. It's good right, right? Ye yes. Ferris gave a big nod. To play with a lot of girls, in her ten years of life, she has never experienced it before. Just by thinking of it, her heartbeat sped up. Alicia looked at Jeanette and asks, Jeanette San, you seem to want to ask Ferris some questions from a while. What's wrong? Eh, me. I I I it's not like I have any question. Jeanette places her hands on her waist and shakes her head. I wonder if she has any questions, Ferris thought in a panic. Um, if you don't ask scary questions, I will answer them. I won't ask a scary question. And what is a scary question anyway? Something like, have I ever eat a human? Have you? No, never. I'm relieved. Jeanette gave a sigh of relief. As soon as she raised her face and looked at Ferris, she asks in a difficult tone, Ferris, you, do you have any favorite food? There there is none. Do you hate all kind of foods? Does such a living being really exist? It's not like that, everything is fine as long as it's edible. When my master's mood worsened, I didn't get any bread, and I ate moss or mushrooms that grew inside the mine. Everyone in class had tears flowing. The ones who don't have tears in their eyes are biting their lips and shed tears of the heart. Jeanette was also like that, cried and crumbled. Jeanette San, do you need a handkerchief? I don't need it. Jeanette reject handkerchief given by Alicia. After rubbing her eyes, she stared at Ferris again. Is there something you want especially eat? This is my question. Ferris feelings says it's an order. She tried to squeeze her head as hard as possible. Is there anything to be considered? Eto, I want to eat a bento with a big heart mark drawn on top of it. Is there anyone in class who eats it? Since it was so cute I was envious. T-H-A. That, should I be the one who make it? What an embarrassing play. T-H-A. Ferris who was tilting her head, no matter how it was seen, that face is just an innocent face. I, I understand. So, prepare yourself as good as possible, and don't regret it later. Jeanette was running in the corridor noisily. What, what should I be prepared for? Ferris trembled in fear. A few days later, Ferris discovered a bento with heart marks stuffed inside her desk drawer. Ferris didn't know who gave it and Jeanette firmly claimed that, there is no way I made that, so she thankfully ate it. That cooking was the most delicious she has ever had. Chapter 14 Composite Magic in magic school, lessons not only focus on theory and practical magic, but also basic education like history and the national language. Half of the day would be used for magic-related lessons, the students were training magic for themselves, to be capable of using magic as long and as strong as possible, to know how far one's power can be raised. These were the purpose of enrolling in the magic school. But, how to say it, in class Ferris couldn't use magic. She became afraid because she couldn't control her power during the practical exam. She was afraid that she would again lose control and trouble everyone. When Lotta Sensei saw Ferris in that condition in the middle of a practical lesson, she gave Ferris a book, Magical Composition Theory. Ferris, who can now read difficult characters, thanks to her studies, 
tilted her head. Yep, actually, this is something that is usually studied by someone who wants to become a magical scholar. In Ferris' case, I think the ability to control magic is more important than using strong magic. Yes, I want to be able to control it. Yep yep, in this book, magic control, essence, structure, and analysis methods were written in detail. It may be useful for Ferris Chan. Thank you very much. Ferris is very happy that she received a book. After that, she was absorbed in reading magical composition theory every break time or after school. According to what was written there, magic seems to be a combination of magical sources. The magical source that exists in nature reacts to specific phrases called aria and changes its flow. For ordinary people, they can't manipulate a magical source even if they can chant an aria, but because magicians had something called aptitude, they can use the power of an aria. An aria, depends on the intonation, pitch, and strength, every different value will give different result. In theory, it seems possible to combine aria and create more complex magic. Yosh, let's try it. Ferris, who was in the courtyard, closed her book and stood up from the bench. Since there weren't many people there, it won't be a bother, right? Ferris stuck out her palm. Like how it was written in the theory book, Ferris chanted the aria quietly in medium tone. Be frozen, rainstone. Above her palm, a small white swirl of air was formed, solidified and became a mass of ice. A small block of ice fell into Ferris' palm. I did it. Ferris chewed the ice. It was cold and delicious. Today the sun was strong from morning, Ferris felt refreshed with ice inside her mouth. Ferris turned the book's page over. This time, she thought about combining the aria of psychokinesis magic and water magic. It was written as, theoretically possible, then it's possible to do it right. Ferris is a type who swallows anything that is written in books. Ferris spread her hands and chanted a combined aria. O oh, water which gathers in the sea and sky, dance according to my will, freeze, and be formed. A strong wind blew, in the courtyard, snow began to dance. Big swirls of snow formed with Ferris in the center, the snow gathered and expanded as it was hitting each other. It piled up on the ground, became lumps, created curves and corners. In an instant, a miniature of the school building created from ice was formed. In a corner of the courtyard, there was cool, pleasant air floating around from the miniature ice sculpture. With this, everyone's afternoon lesson will become easy. W.A. Tilda, it feels cool Tilda. Ferris attached her cheek to an ice miniature to cool herself. This, did Ferris Chen create this? Lotta sensei who came from school building had rounded eyes in surprise. Ferris jumped up. I, I am sorry, I will clean it right away. HN, you don't need to clean it. This is, Ferris Chen the one who created it. How did you create it? Eee, -e -e, by combining aria of water magic and psychokinesis magic. Isn't that composite magic? You mean you created your own composite magic? Lotta sensei bent her body forward while asking Ferris. Ferris was pushed by that momentum. Ye yes, is that bad? It's not bad, but, just. Lotta sensei murmured, sensei. Ah, don't worry about it, but don't do anything rash, so do your best on studying from now on. I'm sure you will find something amazing. Yes. Ferris nodded with high spirit. Composite magic. Ha, huh, it's surprising. Yeah, I also doubted my eyes. Magic school headmaster room. The eyes of headmaster blinked several times after hearing Lotta's report about Ferris. Certainly, composite magic was, theoretically possible, but, there is no one who capable to practically do it. Lotta also agree with headmaster's words. It seems that the Witch of Black Rain couldn't use composite magic, right? Even though she was a powerful magician. She was just, strong, not on the level of destroying the common sense of magic. Ferris is, what the hell is that kid? She is not just a strong magician, isn't that wrong? Just a ten years old girl. But obviously not a usual girl. At any rate, we should keep watching Ferris from now on. We won't appear at front as much as possible, but keep watching from behind. Yes, leave any problem to me. Lotta strongly slapped her fist to her chest. Chapter 15 
the Palace of Truth. After that, Ferris continued to analyze magic. It couldn't be helped that she was having fun. Just with her words, fire and ice were born, it was as ifs a huge change was occurring in the world. To find out how high she can go, and how much magic she could achieve, she read a lot of books in the library. She wanted to increase her ability as far as possible. Not satisfied with the magic books lined in the library's surface area, she asked the librarian to let her enter the underground storehouse. The storehouse was full of spider webs and covered in dust. Even though her cute uniform was stained by dirt and became pitch black, her eyes were glittering and shining. A lot of old-fashioned magic books that could no longer be used in magic school were stored there. There were old discolored magic books, different from the textbooks used in class, those books were filled with mysterious auras. Amongst the magic books, there was a worn-out one that had a red stain here and there. When Ferris opened that book's page, she titled her head, Magic, to reach the truth. What strange magic. That was not fire magic, neither water magic, also not a mind magic. Magical effects that will occur in real world were also not written, but there was something there. If you use this aria, my lady shall return to the truth, was written. The way it used my lady was weird. Was there no assumption that this book would be read by man? Furthermore, except for that one page, which had that sentence, every other page of that book was blank. A strange magic book. But somehow Ferris felt strongly attracted to that magic book. She drew her finger following the sentence in that book and read Aria, which is written there. I return now. In her sight, there was an explosion of light. When she realized, Ferris stood in a strange place. A majestic building similar to the palace that Lotta Sensei showed during her history lesson with mind magic. Huge pillars surrounded it and extended to the sky. The surface looked like the surface of a lake, but Ferris, who stood there, was not sinking. There were no walls, every direction was surrounded by the sky. The place where Ferris stood, there was a straight road, on the left and right, there a thick pillar stood. The destination of that road were emerald green stairs, on top of it, there was graceful throne made from glittering jewel. He, here, here, is where. Ferris walks through the road while trembling. She should be in library's storehouse just now, she didn't understand what happened. After she walked through the pillared road, she placed her foot on the step of the stairs leading to the throne. At that moment, a huge amount of images rushed her brain. Blood, scream, death, fight, blaze, corpse, corpse, corpse. Terrible images and sounds, information appeared with an absurd speed, attacked her small mind. Hiya! Ferris retracted her foot back from the step. What, what was that just now? In her confusion, she heard a voice from her back. There is no need to afraid, my queen. Eh? When she turned around, there she saw something stand up from the four big pillars. One was a monster like a black shadow. Another one was a muscular giant. Another one was a beautiful woman with three eyes. And the last one was, like a lump of fire, Leviathan. Leviathan politely bowed. Welcome back, my queen. We had been waiting for your highness to return for a long time. Eh, eh, what, what do you mean? Ferris was confused. It is as I have said, and we are your highness servants. Is that understandable? I, I don't know. Then, please take seat on that throne. Your highness will understand what the truth is. Over there. On the place which the Leviathan pointed at, Ferris saw the throne there. It was beautiful, but somehow felt scary. She only took a single step on the stair and saw a very scary image. She didn't know what would happen when she sits on that throne. Guessing that Ferris was hesitant, the Leviathan laughed. There is no need now be afraid. If your highness sit in that throne, everything will be in your highness grasp. Knowledge, truth, and power. After that, surely, your highness will destroy foolish human and rule the chaotic world as the queen. Destroying, humanity. Ferris left the stairs. Yes, that's right. If your highness true power was reclaimed, that would be an easy thing. The Leviathan unintentionally chuckled and continued. In the first place, the way human use magic with Arya is just copying your highness words to deceive magical source and manipulate it. If it is your highness, then your highness only need to give order and magical source will obey. 
destroying humanity is just like a child's play. The Leviathan noisily moved his flaming body. The other monster were looking at Ferris with eyes full of expectation. Ferris was caught by the power that seemed ready to pounce once she refused. However, she also thought that she should not listen to what it said obediently. I refuse. Ferris shouted, Eh, just now, what did your highness say? I, I don't understand the reason but, I don't want to destroy humanity. Oh, then, just subjugate them is fine. If your highness takes seat on the throne, all kind of power will be in your highness grasp. I also don't want to subjugate them, what I want is, not such thing. Clenching her fist, she raised her voice to the limit. That voice strangely passed and reverberated through the palace. I, I'm sorry, even though you have been waiting for me. But, this place is not where I should return, please return me to my former world. The Leviathan could only sigh with Ferris request. Of course, my queen's order are absolute, but is it really fine? If your highness returns to former world, your highness memory about this place will be lost. High dimension information cannot exist in the body of a ten years old girl. It's fine, I won't remember it. Even though your highness is a queen. It's fine, since I'm not a queen, I'm just a slave. Ferris cheerfully laughed. Ferris, you're fine right? With Alicia's heartbreaking voice, Ferris opened her eyes with a pop. Before her eyes, there was Alicia's face full of tears. When she confirmed what she saw, she was hugged tightly by Alicia. They were on bed, inside the school infirmary. The scene beyond the windows was already pitch black. E. Alicia-san, what happened to me? Since it was already late, and you didn't come back, I searched for you in the library, and found you collapsed in the storehouse. You wouldn't wake up even when I shook you, and the health teacher didn't know what made you pass out. I, I'm sorry, I made you worry. Ferris hesitated, replying to Alicia's tearful voice. UN, it's fine, since Ferris already woke up. Welcome back, Ferris. Right, I'm back. Gently embraced by Alicia, Ferris also embraced her in return. Since the memory after she read the magic book in the library storehouse was completely gone, she didn't know what she had done. But, somehow, feelings about how she has done the right thing filled her small body. And then in the Palace of Truth. The summoned beast including Leviathan were gathered around and held their head on their hands. However, it was troubling. I would have never thought that the Queen would refuse. It can't be helped, we must obey her will. It's not meant to end like this, right? Until the time comes, we must give our support from the shadows. There seems to be some fools who have tried to reach her. The summoned beasts were swayed their bodies and disappeared from atop the pillars like phantoms. Chapter 16 The Girl Named Alicia Alicia Chan The score from the ability test before, it was as great as ever. Surely you've tried your best. Thank you very much. Praised by Lotta Sensei inside the teacher's room, Alicia bowed. It was break time now, and there were teachers here and in there in the room. Alicia was called by Lotta Sensei because there was something that they needed to talk about and was brought to teacher's room. Lotta Sensei was frowned. But, there hasn't been much progress on your practical skills recently. I'm sorry, even though I keep training, my magic power doesn't increase. Alicia hung her head. Alicia Chen wants to join the kingdom's magic division after graduating, right? Yes. Lotta Sensei seemed to choose her words and continued speaking. Honestly, I think that it will be difficult if you're still like this. In the first place, the ones who enter the magic division are usually battle-type magicians and have outstanding magical power. Alicia Chen's magic control is outstanding. But originally your magic power was only average. That's why, if you consider the other course, it should be something you can do but... Thank you, I'll consider the other course. E. Um, is it fine to not be in the magic division? I thought Alicia Chen admired her father, who is in magic division. Alicia gave a small laugh. Of course I admire him, but dreams and reality are different. I must figure out what I can do and think firmly about the future. That's, yeah, that's right but. Lotta Sensei had a troubled face. 
Um, I shouldn't have said that but, since Alicia Chan is still 12 years old, I think it's fine to become more childish. I'm childish enough. After she gave a small bow, Alicia left the teacher's room. When she went out to the corridor and turned her head, she saw Lotta Sensei shrug her small shoulder. Alicia Gaudenbert, in her young age, she properly saw the world. The structure of the world, the expectations of adults, the other side of things, and the severity of reality. Those words seemed as though they were written in the air and could easily be seen. That insight, maybe because her intelligence was high since birth, or maybe because she gained it little by little through observing the habits of everything. Whichever it was, Alicia understood this world, and she understood herself. She understood that she was average. Even though her hard work showed excellent results, she didn't have natural talent. She understood that since she met Ferris, who had godlike powers, but Alicia was not discouraged. The world is something like that. There are some limitations that humans cannot cross, and must accept. Since she understood that, she didn't feel down. And she understood the reason why she lacked passion was because she understood too much about reality. The dream of becoming a magician like her father didn't come from the bottom of her heart. Such dreams are reasonable. Such was the kind of sensible thinking that was at work. She didn't know what she really wanted to do. She was just trying to grasp what she can do and what she must do. Alicia's daily life was neither black nor gray, but it was never shining. It was pastel colored life. Alicia San, let's have lunch together. Ferris. Yes, until she met this lovely girl who jumped like a kitten. Somehow, whenever she saw that girl smile, she felt like a faint light leaked out from inside her chest. What were you talking about with Lotta Sensei? In the courtyard, which filled with dazzling sunlight, Ferris asked Alicia while eating a sandwich on a bench. There was boiled egg stuck on the corner of Ferris' mouth. Alicia wiped it with her tongue handkerchief. Just a little, she just talked about my course. Since my magic power is not that high, it seems my desire to entering magic division will be difficult. Is that so? Ferris became sad and stopped eating her sandwich. Because Ferris' face looked like it was being covered by a cloud of despair, Alicia added one more thing. But it's fine. For magician, there are still a lot of courses that can be taken. It can't be helped. That's no good. Eh? Ah, sorry for suddenly shouting, but, that's no good. Too easily, giving up on your dream is no good. Because, because Alicia San seems very sad. It's not like I was sad. Alicia laughed. She was accustomed to giving up on her dreams. When she was very young, there was a time when she dreamed of becoming a princess, but she immediately gave up on that dream. Ferris, while playing with her finger, timidly said something. You, um, if you're fine with it, won't you try using a magic trick which I recently I found? Trick. Yes. When I use that, somehow it becomes easier to control magic and adjusting its power than usual. It's amazing. He. Recently, Ferris was training with her best, Alicia knew that thing too. Maybe there will be some hint for her powerless self. Furthermore, it was impossible to not listen, since Ferris gave glittering eyes like that. Let's do it then. Right. Ferris nodded with great joy. After finishing her last sandwich, Ferris quickly jumped from the bench. Alicia took out a practice staff from her bag and lined up beside Ferris. And then, how I should do it. First act like some great one. Like this. Following Ferris, who puffed out her non-existence chest, Alicia also puffed out her chest. More. Like someone great. Like the queen. Like the queen. She put her hands on her waist and looked down the ground. And then, chant aria like ordering someone. It seems there is no problem even if the aria is slightly mistaken. More than that, it's better to firmly consider the meaning of an aria and feel it. Feel it, HN, I understand, I'll try it. Alicia prepared her staff and looked at a stone on the roadside. Just like Ferris said, she chanted the aria as if giving an order to someone. A basic attack magic is required by every battle type magician. With Alicia magical power, this magic could only create a fist sized fireball. Oh fire, burning might, obey my will, strike my foe. 
Flame bullet. The fire broke out from the staff. Overflowing fire rushed towards the stone and burned it. The burning stone melted and lost its shape. Alicia panicked and lowered her staff. The magic was interrupted, and the fire were gone. Ho, oh, how about it? Are there any changes in your magic power? Ferris asked with worry. It's more than small. I have never used magic this big before, for me to be able to do such thing. Alicia murmured in amazement. Her hand trembled while holding the staff. That's great. It's convenient since it should work on other magic. Ferris made a big smile on her face. This innocent girl must have not realized it. That magic just now, in magic division it belonged to top class elites. That means, in just a few minutes, she revived Alicia's dream. No, not only will she be capable of entering the magic division, she can become an imperial guard with that, or maybe become the leader of the magic division. Alicia suddenly felt like the world was widely opened. She touched the drop that slid down her cheek with her finger. Then she realized how painful it was to give up her own dream. How frustrating it was to hold down her own frustration. Ah ha ha ha. I, I really was a child. Ferris titled her head when she saw Alicia laugh and murmur something. That girl was always more childlike than Alicia. In a moment, Alicia's future was changed. That night. After coming back to the student's dormitory and finishing preparation for sleep, they were entered their own beds. The weather started to deteriorating since evening, there was a storm outside now. As the heavy rain hit the windows, and the roof howled, the atmosphere became eerie. In a day like this, sleeping quickly was the best. When Alicia have such thought and put her head on the pillow, a flash of lightning was brightening the room, followed by thunderous roar. A loud voice attacked Alicia's ears. That was close. Alicia was shocked and looked at Ferris' bed. She thought that the blanket was shaped like Dango. But that was not it. That Dango was Ferris curling her body, stiffening and covered by the blanket. Ferris. Alicia came to Ferris' bed and peeked into the blanket. Hey, Alicia-san. Ferris was trembling, and her eyes were full of tears. Maybe, you afraid of thunder? I, I think there is no one who who doesn't fear thunder. She had difficulty to speaking. She grasped Alicia's pajama sleeve tightly. A child like you. Alicia was laughed since it was funny for her. You you you, why are you laughing? Ferris weakly protested. Compared to that thunder just now, Ferris magic is obviously far more powerful and frightening, right? But, but. Fine, then, come to my bed. Tonight, we'll sleep together. Yes. Ferris gave a big nod, and ran with pitter-patter, and slipped into Alicia's bed. Alicia returned to her bed and embraced Ferris with her hands while lying down. When she watched over Ferris each time there was thunder, somehow Alicia understood what she wanted to do. Surely, this child is strong. But, she needs someone to protect her. Having such thought, Alicia felt something shining gush out from her chest with brightness like never before. Chapter 17 Secret of the Two On her way back from Magic School Library, Ferris thought about trying a little shortcut. She did have a gradual understanding of the Magic School's layout, so she thought, wouldn't it be fine if she used a different route than usual? Leaving the main road, she entered a narrow alley between buildings. The view has been limited by the tall buildings, and there were nameless flowers blooming here and there along the roadside. Wow, what beautiful flowers! When Ferris sat down, she looked at the small star-shaped flowers. But she felt sorry for the flowers if she picked them up and brought some home, so she just looked at it as she walked through the alley. At that time, someone jumped out from the corner of the alley and crashed with Ferris. Kia! Hiya! Both of them were looking at each other with surprise. Ferris' heart was throbbing because she hadn't expected to bump into anyone. Yo you, why are you here? The other party was Jeanette hiding a bottle-like container behind her. Um, I was just trying to take a shortcut. That, what is it? When Ferris tried to look at what Jeanette hid, Jeanette stepped back and angrily looked at Ferris. It has nothing to do with you. What kind of authority do you have to interrogate me? And are you going to torture me? I I won't torture you. Then there is no need to ask, right? Can you leave this place quickly? 
that, but, I want to go through here. Do as you like. Jeanette who was facing Ferris turned her back lightly and went away quickly. What happened? Tilting her head, Ferris continued to walk through the alley. Then, a faint sound could be heard from a wooden box on the roadside. Ferris stopped and tried to look at its content. Meow. The content was a small animal. Ferris had seen it on an encyclopedia in the library. A fluffy animal with rounded eyes and slender legs, it was a kitten. Ooh-wah. At a single glance, Ferris' chest tightened from the heartwarming feeling and hold her hands. So cute. Very very cute. She spontaneously picked up the kitten from the wooden box and rubbed it to her cheek. Fluffy. Rub rub. Fluffy. Rub rub. Since Ferris brought the kitten close to her cheek to rub it, the kitten started licking her cheek. Ahahaha. So rough, it feels weird. While Ferris embraced the kitten in her chest, she looked at the wooden box. There was no parent cat. Perhaps, it was an orphan. Being alone is lonely. Ferris knew that better than anyone. Furthermore, a very small animal like this, it would be very hard to live on its own right. I must bring it to home. Put the kitten in her pocket, Ferris started to run through the alley. Pets are not allowed. When Ferris brought back the kitten to the dormitory, the dorm manager said that with both hands on her back. The dorm manager was a middle-aged woman with a large build. Since she was very helpful and felt like a good mother, the students called her Mama or Mom. Why? Ferris hugged Kitten while looked up at dorm manager. Even if you ask why, it was decided. Animals are troublesome, they break the furniture and make rooms dirty. Who will clean up that? Who tilda? Now, return that Kitten to the original place. If it is in a wooden box, then there is probably someone who is secretly taking care of that kitten. I won't scold you over such a minor thing. The dorm manager put her large hand on Ferris' head while telling her to return the kitten. Then the girls rushed from around the lobby. Why are you Tilda so cute? Let me touch it before you return it. Me too. Nay, if it's just milk, then it's fine to give some, right, mom? Ah, uh, I also want to give ham Tilda. So fluffy Tilda. I I will be crushed Tilda. Ferris left that place since felt like she will be crushed by the girls who gathered in a blink of an eye. After separating from the kitten, who was surrounded by the girls, she calmed her breath. On her side, there was Alicia lined up to her while smiling. She was the only one who didn't join the other girls. Um, Alicia San doesn't want to pat the cat. It's not that I don't want to pat it, it's because I already have Ferris. Me. Alicia hugged Ferris who was still in dazed amazement from behind and slowly petted her head. After the girls were satisfied playing with the cat with all their heart, Ferris brought back the kitten to its former place. With an expanded pocket which gave soft feeling, Ferris headed to the alley. It was too bad since the kitten can't be kept in dormitory, but if I brought some food again, the kitten won't be lonely right? And let's make some warm bed from clothes that I've no longer used. Ferris felt excited when she had such a thought. At that time, she saw Jeanette walked in fluster, clenched her fist, and desperately looked around. You 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 you, where are you, where? Putting her two hands on the ground, Jeanette plunged her head into the bushes, shaking it. Her usual elegance could no longer be seen. Jeanette San, what's the matter? Kaya. Heard Ferris' voice from behind, Jeanette pulled out her herd from the thicket out of surprise. There were a lot of leaves attached to her beautiful long hair. It it's nothing. It's nothing because it's nothing. I said it's nothing tilde tilde. Jeanette got up like nothing happened, and while sweating hard, she left that place. Jeanette San. Seeing her classmate who wasn't like her usual self, Ferris could only tilt her head in confusion. The next day, when Ferris headed to Ali after got an unused old blanket and some milk from the dormitory manager, she heard a voice from inside Ali. There, there, you must be lonely right Tilda. Look Tilda, I've come to meet you. There, there, there Tilda Tilda. Where Tilda so cute. You are the cutest Tilda. Kaya Tilda. That girl hugged a kitten from a wooden box and rubbed it against her cheek. Gave a passionate kiss to Cat's forehead. Her cheek was reddened and her eyes mellowed. She was in ecstasy. Because of that, she didn't realize Ferris who got closer. So, Jeanette-san also likes a cat. 
Huh? Hi. Jeanette's unladylike scream reverberated around the alley. Attacked by a loud voice, Ferris spontaneously entered a defensive state. On the contrary, Jeanette's face was ghastly pale, she trembled while hugging the kitten. W-A, 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 Ferris, why are you here? I brought some food for the kitten. Do just now, did you see it? Just now, what was it about? I, I, anyway, about that. Jeanette felt frustrated and hesitated to say something. Ferris nodded her head with her and clasped her both hands. So, Jeanette san also make face like that too. From her throat, Jeanette's voiceless sound leaked. Her face then turned red from embarrassment. Is that a good thing? What you just saw, absolutely, do not talk about that to anyone. Why? If there are rumors about the daughter of Reinslick family who was crazily going, Kia, Kia, with a cat, that would affect the honor of the whole family. Mayo. At any rate, this is a secret, that I come here, that I only think about the kitten while in class, that I can't calm down when I don't see the kitten's face within the day, everything's a secret. You understand right? There was Jeanette who exposed all of her secret. Yes, let's protect the kitten together. To together, what what are you talking about? Jeanette face reddened furthermore. But. If you talk about my secret to anyone, I won't forgive you. You better remember that. Ferris could only watch Jeanette who left with sharp remark with gape. The night after that, in a large bath in the dormitory, Jeanette was using the bathtub alone. Her face was hot, thinking about what happened today. Unintentionally she was grinning. Who who who? Secrets, the secret of two people, a secret between Ferris and me. While bubbling inside hot water with her breath, Jeanette murmured happily. Chapter 18 Disappearance Everyone, be careful. Morning homeroom, Lotta Sensei stood up on the podium, said that with an unusually serious face. Recently, the cases of missing magicians or someone equal has increased. Since entering this semester, there have been 11 students missing from this school. Is search being done? Jeanette asked, of course, royal guards and professional magicians are desperately searching for them, but they are unable to find any clues, at any rate, do not walk alone at the night, and do not approach any suspicious person, you understand. Everyone in class give a huge nod, and everyone sight gathered on Ferris, be careful Ferris Chan, absolutely don't get abducted, if that happened, I'll pick you up, really be careful Ferris Chan. Even if someone gives you candy, don't follow them. He, why is everyone telling only me? Ferris' eyes became black and white. Maybe because you are careless and seems easier to abduct. Saying that, Alicia hugged Ferris as if she wanted to abduct her. Ferris was already being treated as a mascot by everyone in class. Evening. Jeanette walked quickly when she come back to the dormitory. She was too absorbed in magic training and late to realize it was already evening. But, since the sun hasn't set yet, the dormitory is just right there, then it's fine, right? Thinking like that, Jeanette took a shortcut. Because it was a narrow gap between tall buildings, the visibility is bad, but it reduces the time it takes to get there by half. This route is usually used by students who look like they will be late. Jeanette walked while pinching her nose, and laughing. First, the child who was kidnapped was too careless and let their guard down. If you properly guard yourself every time, you can fight back with magic. I would never be kidnapped. Right at the moment after she's declaring that, she was wrapped in a big bag that fell from the sky. Her field of vision gone after the bag tightened. The next morning, when Ferris went to the cafeteria while rubbing her sleepy eyes, the dormitory students were strangely noisy. What happened, I wonder? Since Alicia was worried, she tried to look at her surrounding. Because Lotta Sensei said such thing yesterday, she had bad feeling. Ferris speaks to a dormitory student close to her. UN, did something happen? The dormitory student come closer to Ferris and whispered. Last night, a student didn't return to the dormitory. On the roll call before light off, she wasn't present, the search couldn't find her either. Eh, who, who is she? That, it seems to be the daughter of the Reinslick family, 
the girls named Jeanette. Jeanette San is. The two voices of Alicia and Ferris raised all together. Ferris felt like her heart was frozen. Although she was warned about missing incidents, she would have never thought that someone close to her would be involved. With the truth of the incident drawing near, an unpleasant heartbeat began to act violently. Ferris tightly grasped Alicia's sleeve with frantic. What, 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 what should we do? Alicia San, what should we do? Even though you said that, we have no choice except to leave it to professional magician. Alicia also turned pale, but, but. If things had gone bad, Ferris could also become a victim and won't come back. Let's believe in the adults who are working hard. You you you, that's right, but. Ferris hung her head. Ferris understands the truth of Alicia's words. However, knowing that Jeanette who normally has many connections is in a pinch, Ferris was not adult enough to stay still. Ferris didn't hate Jeanette, even though she was likely being avoided by Jeanette. Rather, she wants to be her friend. That's why she didn't want to have a farewell like this. After finishing her breakfast, Ferris secretly slipped out from the cafeteria without telling Alicia. Running until courtyard and take rest in place where no one can see her. Inside a magic book which Ferris studied from library, there is magic to looking for missing thing written. If I used that then maybe, with a ray of hope, she recited the aria. O oh light of wisdom, sacred light of Vera, lead me, to the place of the missing thing. Resign. From Ferris' palm of hand, something like a fur ball which was glowing red emerged. If this was perfectly done, this glowing ball should lead her to the place of missing things. However, that fur ball quickly fell, scattered and vanished. After all, is it impossible to use magic to search missing thing to be used to search human? Ferris drops her shoulder. At that time, she heard a voice out of nowhere. My queen, for you, you don't need to use fixed aria. Please just give an order to magic source. Huey, who who are you? Where are you? I am your servant. I talk to you from a different world which is far far away from your location. You have rejected me, but at least please allow me to give support like this. Re-rejection, from me. Ferris remembered nothing. However, she thought that if she had done anything wrong, she should apologize. Eh no, I, I'm sorry. No, no, there is no need to apologize to a servant. Anyway, my queen only needs to give a command. Magic source will will do as you wish. Uh, then, magic source San, please find Jeanette San. Right after she shouted, the red glowing fur ball was re-emerged in the air and flew somewhere with terrible power. W-A-W-A, W-A wait please. Ferris hurried to ran after the fur ball. Chapter 19 Queen HNN, here is Jeanette opened her eyes while frowning because of a headache. Her leg is also hurt. Did she break a bone? Or there was muscle sprained? It was hard for her to stand up. Apparently, she was inside an abandoned castle, with the floor already turned over. Around her were a lot of young people cowering on the floor. Surrounding everyone, there was a high metal fence stretched around. The fence not only looked strong, but also has a strong magical barrier. Cuckoo kaka kaka. Welcome to the breeding house. How are you feeling? Outside the fence, there was someone smiling, wearing a long robe and ragged hood covering their face, the gender also uncertain. However, the staff in theory hand could only be controlled by a high-level magician. You, you are the culprit behind serial kidnapping incident, right? To do something like this, you won't get away. When the search group come, you will be caught immediately. The punishment is death. Kukaka, is that so, is that so? I hope they come quickly. The hooded magician, still calm. What is this calmness? Jeanette had a bad feeling, she looks at the abandoned castle's surrounding. This is, carefully, looking closely, she could see it. It's hard to understand since it was concealed but, there were magic circles drawn, on the floor, the walls, ceiling, everywhere. Those were magic circle used for traps. There were full of nasty things like darkness magic, poison magic, absorption magic. Surely, when the search party come, they will immediately fall into those traps. They could be killed, or captured. What is your purpose? To imprison us in a place like this, what are you trying to do? 
gathering material to open the gate, will you understand if I said like that? Gate. Of course you won't understand, I said that because you won't understand, well, just drop to hell with every question you have, it's time to collect your lives now. The magician gave a crude laugh while smiling, the youths inside the fence shrinking with fear, then, you first, since you seem to have good spirit, and have large magical power, let's make you die. Hi. Pointing the magician's staff at her, Jeanette leaked a scream, it was miserable of her. Even though it was miserable, the trembling of her hand couldn't stop, nor she could clench her fist. The magic circle formed at the point of the magician's staff, and a dark-colored miasma started spreading. The form of the darkness changed into a snake, and rushed toward Jeanette. No, I don't want to die. At the time when Jeanette shut her eyes, I, I won't let you do such thing. The voice that resounded in the abandoned castle is a voice that she used to hear, lovely but brave. Jeanette fearfully opened her eyes. There was a girl stood outside the entrance of the castle. Ha 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 ha. Her breath was wild, her fist was clenched tightly. Her figure seemed too fragile but, her eyes were bravely staring at the magician. Effie, Ferris. Jeanette leaks out stupid voice. For her to came, it was too unexpected. Why? How? What for? Ferris by herself. She can't grasp it. She can't understand it. The magician was laughed. Oh, wow, this one is a cute customer. Are you here to save your friend? I'll play with you. If you don't want everyone to be killed, then come here. As, as you wish. Don't, Ferris, you can't come. Jeanette's scream fell into the void. The unstoppable Ferris jumps onto the abandoned castle, which is full of trap. The smirking magician started laughing. The traps in all direction began blinking with crimson color, and then dark-colored miasma rapidly rushed towards Ferris. The floor that was hit by miasma melted, evaporated, and gave off an unbearable odor. No, Ferris. Jeanette felt power leave her whole body. She can't stand. Her head became pure white, and vision blurred. And finally, Jeanette herself began to understand how much affection she had towards Ferris. Since Ferris transferred to her school, what Jeanette always thought about was Ferris, even though she can't honestly say that. She was hoping to have a proper conversation with her, laughing together, pat her head, and hug her. However, such hopes were never fulfilled. Once the chance, life, is gone, there won't be a second time. Jeanette put her hand on the floor, her body was trembled. The magician mocked Jeanette with claps. Well then, let's see how ragged the corpse will be. Kukakaka, I'm looking forward to this. When the clouds of miasma were thinned, there was. A corpse, wasn't there. There was Ferris, a living Ferris, stood without single wound. E, er, uh, what happened? I don't really understand, but. Such an idiotic impression leaked from her. After receiving such dreadful attack, she was unscratched. She should have received that attack, but she didn't even realize it. Jeanette's jaw dropped in shock. The magician was also in the same condition. However, the magician prepared his staff in panic when he saw Ferris coming closer. A.R. Ferris shouted a loud voice alone, rushed with tatatata. It's unclear what the shout was for. It was a heartwarming appearance that likely could be seen in physical education class. However, in there, Ferris's bizarreness stood up even more. The magician rapidly chanted an aria. Roaring inferno, scorching hell, burn thy enemy's body to nothing destroy and eradicate. Gehenna blast. From the staff, a giant crimson lotus flower burst out, becoming brightly burned big rocks that poured down toward Ferris. Roaring flame, heat convulsing air. This person is not an ordinary magician after all. Disaster class magician, it is said that they can easily destroy a town alone. However, in the middle of such flame, Ferris is, not screaming because of heat, her expression didn't change either. She ran through the hellfire. The magician panicked, chanted next aria and fired multiple magic. Hailstorm, rain of poison, spectre attack. Any magic had no effect, Ferris single-mindedly ran towards the magician. Numerous terrible spell were shot one after another, it looks like the abandoned castle is the one that will break, shatter, and collapse at any moment, but Ferris had no wounds. Yo you, what are you, what are you? 
The magician screamed and trembled. Bubbles were scattered from the mouth, his knee twitching and trembling. Ferris opened her palm towards such magician, and said, a mysterious aria that Jeanette had never heard, no, that was just command. Magic source San, please blow off that bad person. From the air, a shining giant arm appeared, and a mountain-like fist struck the magician. The magician's body danced in the air and the broken teeth scattered about. The sound of broken bone could be heard, the scream become far away, as the magician was blown off. The smashed abandoned castle wall was also blown far away. Ferris didn't slow down on her run, she kept like that until she arrived at the fence, drawing her fist towards the magic barrier. Only with a single light hit, she broke the magic barrier. Magic source San, destroy the fence. When Ferris gives order, a dark colored scythe grew from her hand and destroyed the metal fence with high speed. The captured youth escaped from the abandoned castle with shouts of joy. There were debris fallen from the ceiling, so it was just a matter of time before this abandoned castle collapses. Now then, Jeanette San let's go to E. Urged by Ferris, Jeanette tried to stand up, but when she felt sharp pain from her leg, and she slumped. What's wrong? I can't, my leg won't move, it seems I hurt it when I was abducted. Looking down, her leg was swollen, and her tight were tainted with blood. Hold on to me, please. Ferris lent her shoulder to Jeanette and dragged her along with everything she had. However, it was already difficult for her powerless body to support Jeanette's weight. Hiya! Ferris screamed because a big debris fell near her. If Ferris hit such a thing directly, her body can't bear it. At this rate, Ferris will die too. Jeanette absolutely didn't want such a thing to happen. She didn't understand why, but Ferris came and saved her. She didn't want such kind and cute Ferris to be hurt because of her. Jeanette said with her trembling voice. It's, already, it's fine, just leave me alone, please escape by yourself. That's not good, there is no meaning if I don't save Jeanette's Sam. Ferris insisted stubbornly, she tried to drag Jeanette with all she had. Why is that, someone like me didn't deserve to be saved by you? Deserve. That's right. Since we met for the first time, I only did cruel things, only said cruel things, I only made you suffer. Why, why do you go this far? Because, I like Jeanette San very much. Ferris spread her sun-like smile, like, me. Jeanette didn't understand what Ferris said. She wondered that Ferris was talking with the same language. Yes, I think I always wanted to be your friend, to have friendly conversation, and to go shopping together with Jeanette San. Effie, Ferris. Jeanette could feel her cheek become hot. She was happy, extremely happy. In this situation, even though she was about to die, her heart was beating fast for a different reason. Ah, I'm sorry for saying selfish things, of course I understand that Jeanette San hates me, but. Ferris made a sad face, a lonely expression, just like an abandoned puppy. It's not like that. I like you very much. Hugh. Ah, what 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 am I doing? Jeanette couldn't bear embarrassment because she said it. Even though she just went with the flow, that was too bold of her. If she was in her usual state, she absolutely will never say those words. When she becomes afraid whether she will be drawn toward Ferris. Ha ah, ah, I'm glad. Ferris murmured with a relieved face. Her small lips, and her flushed cheek, were definitely lovely. Jeanette spontaneously started to speak, what was in her heart. If, if it's like that then, we absolutely can't die here. We must escape from here at any cost, and go shopping together. Yes. After receiving Ferris' answer, she mustered all of her power to stand up. We also have to eat our lunch together. Yes. Ignoring intense pain in her legs, she dragged her own body. Of course, we also have to take bath together, because I know a great open-air bath. Yes. For the sake to enjoy every day with Ferris, for the sake of the future, Jeanette desperately escaped from the castle. Behind them, the abandoned castle crumbled down with very loud sound. Huey, I'm so scared. Ferris, who was had been very active, sat down on the ground with a plop. Jeanette was laughing in amazement and forget her pain. Why are you like that? 
You are the hero you know. But, but. Ferris was sobbing to tears. Her appearance was destructively lovely, and Jeanette jumped to such Ferris. They're there, they're there, you are very cute. Ferris is very cute, very 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 cute. Wait, Jeanette-san. Your cheek also so smooth, you smell so sweet like milk, rub rub, rub rub, rub rub, rub rub. That's hurts, if you rub it too much, it will catch fire. Trying to escape is futile. I won't let you run away. Jeanette bursting out and rubbing her cheek together with Ferris. There was Alicia running to that place with Longstaff from afar. Ferris, are you fine? Huh, what happened? Also, what happens to you, Jeanette-san? Hey, Alicia-san, please help me. Likely to be killed by cheek rubbing hell while her arms being bound by Jeanette, Ferris' miserable scream was reverberating. Chapter 20 a little unusual. Everyone, this time we will be having an expedition training. We hope that you firmly prepare yourselves, since we will be testing what you have learned about magic up until now. The students became noisy when Lotta Sensei gave announcement at morning homeroom. Finally, the time has come. Kia Tilda, what kind of clothes should I wear? Leave the total coordination to me. I, in this expedition, I will confess my love. Everyone was agitated. Expedition. What is that? Are we going to a war? Ferris, who just transferred, didn't know about the situation, so she asked Alicia with a timid voice. It's not a war. We will bring some luggage to the forest and catch determined prey. Alicia answered with a smile. Are you saying, it's a picnic? Ferris' eyes widened in excitement. Yeah, maybe something similar. Why, I always wanted to go picnic since I read it on the books. So, the voice of Lotta Sensei could be heard from the podium. Hey, there, don't say such irresponsible and carefree like that. You need to bring down monsters, and before you can actually do that you need to camping for several days. I'm good at sleeping outdoor desu. Ferris Chan, Ferris. To Ferris' innocent words, everyone in class was shedding a tear. Only Lotta Sensei made a bitter smile. At any rate, this expedition training have already held before, and it's good for you when you join army or become adventurer later. Because it's dangerous training, solo action is prohibited. Until the training day come, talk everything you need with your teammate. After distributed expedition training guidebook, Lotta Sensei ended that morning homeroom. Break time. Ferris rushed to Jeanette, who was putting away her book from the table. Jeanette-san, good morning. Ferris, what 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 is it? To suddenly call this high noble me is are you are you are you rude you know? Jeanette's voice was trembled, her heart pounding since it was the first time for Ferris to greet her. And because she accidentally spoke badly, she immediately regrets it. W.A. wait, Jeanette-san, why are you suddenly hitting your head? Because I am an idiot, take this, take this. This mouth too needs to be ripped up. No, your mouth will be torn off. Your blood will come out. There was Jeanette who tried to tear off her own lips and Ferris who is desperately trying to stop that. Jeanette stood up because she's afraid to say more bad things if they stay like this. To today, I will let you do this much. I have something to do after this. Please wait. Ferris jumps to Jeanette, who tried to leave in a hurry and clung to her waist. Kia. Ferris is, Ferris is, she is so daring. Jeanette's heart was frozen, cannot move anymore. What 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 what's with you? Please don't go, because we finally become friend, there are a lot of things I want to talk with you. A wa 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 Um, ah, uh, after all, you hate me right? Ferris looked up with cheery eyes and trembled like a puppy. There's no way Jeanette could resist such Ferris. Of course, I like you. Jeanette who spontaneously answered in loud voice finally realized that everyone's gaze were gathered on her. She said like, that Reins Lixan is confessing, this is scoop. So Reins Lixan have such character huh? The classmates murmur made Jeanette's face so red, like almost emitting fire. I'm so glad, you really like me, right? Eee, yeah, I like you. It was like shame play already.
Then, will you eat your lunch together with me? A, A. To Ferris' request, Jeanette couldn't give an answer except nodding with bright red face. Chapter 21. Galdenbert and Reinslick. The dining room in the magic school was modeled like a cafeteria. The students ordered their meals at the counter and brought the tray by themselves to their tables. The menu were pretty gorgeous with food items such as pancakes and crepes. Jeanette who brought her order from the counter was very excited because she can enjoy lunch with Ferris. However, when she arrived at the table, she almost dropped her food tray. What what why is Alicia Galdenbert here? Because I'm also student here. We always eat together. Alicia and Ferris answered with blank face. What? What about lunch with just two of us? After that we would drive a carriage, and keep going until forever. I never heard you say such thing. I said it, in my heart. In your heart. Ferris could only stay bewildered when she heard Jeanette's desperate answer and flustered when she compared Jeanette's face to Alicia's. How much until this Gaudenbert person is satisfied with standing in Rhineslicker's way? Jeanette grasped her tray tightly to the point that it could be break at any moment, and smiled. Gaudenbert San, I have a request for you, could you leave this place? Ah, but I haven't even started eating my food yet. Then, I will leave. I am Ferris. Wait, where will you take Ferris? Hurry, let her go. At this rate, it will become awful. What was that? I won't let Ferris get abducted. Ferris' right and left arms were pulled by the two beautiful girls. It might look like a good thing, to be pulled by two beautiful girls, but the force was too strong. I'm gonna break. The two of them immediately let Ferris' hands go after she screamed. Jeanette holding her mouth with pale face. I I am sorry, that's, that's not what I mean. I, I am going to wash my heart and start over all. Jeanette San, you can't bring the tray out from dining room. Jeanette tried to escape with her fluttering skirt, but Ferris jumped out and clung onto Jeanette's arm, stopping her in her tracks. Effie Ferris, you, you are too bold. Ferris earnestly asked Jeanette who was flustered. A no, a no. Fighting is no good. Why can't Jeanette and Alicia be good friend? Because Reinslick and Gaudenbert family have been competing for key positions since long time ago. Be you, but, that's the circumstance of the house right. There's no need for Jeanette and Alicia to be on bad terms. It's mine too. She always shoves things down my throat you know. It had always been this way since the time we've entered the school we've always competed over the top position. Eh? Hey. Is that so? However, no matter what kind of test it is, I always get second. I always get second no matter how desperate I studied. It's Gaudenbert fault that I am eternally in second place. Jeanette punches the wall. Then, then, Jeanette and Alicia are good friend after all. Ha, ha, what are you talking about? Didn't you hear? Because, you two are always watching each other to that degree. I'm sure you two are good rivals, a friendly rivalry. Ferris put her hand together and smiled with a grinning face. That was the smile of an angel that should be able to purify Jeanette, but I, impossible. It's possible. I, I don't want two people I love fighting each other. Lo, love, 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 we, well, if Ferris hopes so, I will be careful to not have to fight. Jeanette was having steam blowing out from her hot cheek. How about three of us make a team at expedition training this time? If it's like that, we can absolutely get along. Ferris said that while looking at Alicia. Well, as for me, I have no objection. Alicia gives a quick glance to Jeanette, but Jeanette shook her head sideways. To cooperate with Gaudenbert is impossible. Also, staying together with Jeanette San seems very fun. Ferris shyly added, I will do my best to go together. Jeanette reply immediately. Chapter 22 Expedition start. The sun was shining brightly in the blue sky. Basked with a clean sunshine, a lot of students were gathered in the field outside the magic school. They were holding a large amount of luggage and gathered in groups. Ferris, Alicia, and also Jeanette were in one group. Jeanette San, are you fine? Why did you bring such a big luggage? Ferris timidly looked up at Jeanette's luggage. 
No matter how one sees it, it was too big. It will make Jeanette look like a snail. Janet nodded with a trembling knee. I, I am fine. I just bring what I need to have fun with Ferris. Something like stuffed dolls and card games. I brought a lot of them, without that we can not enjoy the sleepover time I've dreamt of. It's not sleepover time, it's an expedition. Alicia turned her eyes around. Eh, eh no, then, I will carry some of it. I feel bad to have Jeanette carry the burden alone. Be you, but, I can't make Ferris suffer. Easy Daisy, even if I look like this, I'm strong, I have always been digging holes, you know. There was Ferris who puffed her chest. Just as Ferris carried luggage she accepted from Jeanette, she was almost crushed by the terrible amount of weight from her back. Mugu. Effie, Ferris, are you really fine? I'm fine. But, what was Mugu just now? Tha, that's just my chirping. Well, all right. Janet was convinced. The two of them were trembling while carrying the luggage. They kept trembling whilst the teachers gave an explanation about the expedition training. I wish I could have put it on the ground, they realized such a thing when it was already time to depart. They headed to the designated forest in a large carriage. About ten people were riding in it. Leaving the magic school dormitory where they usually live, the students raised a cheer. The one who had an especially loud voice was Ferris, who was riding the carriage. Rather than that, Ferris' loud cheer was almost equal to that of ten people's worth of cheering. What? Wait Ferris, don't hang out of the window too much, you will fall. But, but, look, look, we are going so fast. I told you it is dangerous. Janet was worried, but Ferris did not mind it. Ferris won't listen to anything you say in that state. Let's just hold her to make sure she doesn't fall. Ye, yeah, let's do that. I will hold her tightly. Janet tried to hold Ferris by hugging her from her back. Even though she said she was just holding, she didn't gently hug Ferris, but gave her a literal bear hug. J. Janet San, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Ferris' scream leaked. After half day of riding the carriage, the students of Magic School arrived at their destination. A dense forest awaited them after they get off from their carriages. All right, everyone, line up. As I explained before, this time's expedition will be using a point system. The rarer and more monster you defeat, the more points you will get. You won't get home unless you get more than 1000 points, so do your best. Lotta Sensei gave the information to the students. If our condition turns bad, what should we do? Alicia asked Lotta Sensei. There's a rescue party at the entrance of the forest, you can get treatment there. But you should try to treat yourself as much as possible, if you can't do so then your points will be deducted. When you work in the future, your health management is your own responsibility. Of course, Jeanette nodded. Okay then, starting from the team which finished their preparation, you can enter now Tilda. Fight! Lotta Sensei encouraged the students by waving her staff, but they only looked at the forest in awe. The fog that could be seen started to rise up inside the forest. An unknown animal's cry could be heard reverberating through the forest. Not only that, there's also some strong magical presence and poisonous smell floating around. In only a single step, they will be entering an uninhabitable land. The story is different from when they were protected inside the school. Aware of such a thing, Jeanette could only gulp down her own saliva. Ferris, please don't be separated from me. It would be terrible if you get lost. Why? It seems like a lot of Animal Sands is in there. Ferris running toward forest while dancing in joy. W.A., wait Ferris, it's dangerous to run on your own. But, but, there is a big bunny sand over there, it's very cute. That's not rabbit, that's killer bear. Alicia and Jeanette chase after Ferris, who was running in high spirit. Chapter 23 In the Woods With sunlight filtered through the trees coloring her skin, Ferris' heart was throbbing so fast. At any rate, it was her first time going on a picnic with her friends. It was unbelievable that she who was just a mining slave who was forced to work in solitude would get the opportunity. The old her would never have dreamt of it. Because she was too excited, the fact that this wasn't a picnic, but thoughts about the expedition training was already disappeared in head. But there is something that Ferris was worried about. 
It's the relationship between Alicia and Jeanette. Both of them were beautiful, kind and lovely girls. But why can't they get along? Ferris thought, if only they could get along, every day's fun will be doubled. Clenching her fist, Ferris skipped around eagerly. I must do something. Watch out, that is dangerous. At the moment when Ferris was likely will fall off the cliff, Alicia and Jeanette grab her hands. Wah 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 wah. I, I'm sorry. Thank you Alicia San, Jeanette San. Ferris' heart was beating fast, let alone making two of them get along, on the contrary, she was saved by them. She was useless after all, such thoughts were floating inside her head. Hey, Galdenbert San, just now, even with me alone, I can save her. There is no need for your excessive meddling, is there? I don't think there is a problem with two people saving her. Of course there is, because of that, Ferris, thank you, is shared between two of us. Wait, wait, don't fight please. Ferris stopped them in a hurry. Jeanette made a sharp, HN, while folding her hands. Ferris could only make a small sigh when she realized it would not be so easy. When she saw Ferris in such state, a gentle smile floated on Alicia's face. She understood what Ferris thought, but Ferris who was looking troubled like that is somehow very lovely. Am I bullying her? He, what's wrong Alicia San? HN, it's nothing. Alicia shook her head while smiling. Walking through the forest, they came across a place where monsters were jumping around. Alicia stopped her steps and tightly grasped her staff and prepare for battle. That is, Lily Bell. Certainly, it was listed in the guidance book as a level 1 rarity monster. We could get one point if we defeat them. A. Gaudenbert San, you remember the points for each monster? Well, yes. If not, we can't efficiently earn points, right? B. U. But, there should be more than 300 type of monsters listed for this area. Of course I remember it. Jeanette San also remember, right? A. A, of course, something like that is just a child's play. It's not like I thought looking at the guide would be easier. Ferris laughed when she saw Jeanette hid a guidebook in her back. Alicia San is someone who likes to work very hard. She woke up early in the morning and memeized the list as hard as she can every day. He, like that huh? Jeanette fixed her gaze on Alicia. She thought Alicia just had good head or was superior like her father. That's why Jeanette couldn't be helped but be annoyed when Alicia took the first place. But unexpectedly there was such effort being done in the background. Geez, Ferris, you shouldn't be talking about that. It won't be cool if the other person know about it. Alicia said with blushed cheek. Seeing Alicia like that, somehow Jeanette thought it was cute. But when she remembered that she was her rival, she shook her head. You are my enemy after all. My arch enemy. What is it all of a sudden? Alicia could only be bewildered when Jeanette pointed her finger at her. Even though they were together since entering magic school, she couldn't understand what Jeanette was thinking about. Anyway, first, let's defeat that monster. We are not used to defeating living being yet, so we must get some points, even if only a small amount. Yee, yeah, but, it's hard to defeat them, Jeanette was hesitant. Which isn't surprising since Lily Bells are small fluffy animals that look like pets. However, its ferocity was quite well known. It is said they attack in groups and suck their prey's blood dry. Yosh, let's defeat them, Ice Arrow. Ferris quickly raised her hands and launched Ice Arrows, slaughtering the Lily Bells. Jeanette was taken aback. W.A., wait Ferris, why can you attack without hesitation? Ferris' angelic smile expanded. If it is about hunting experience, I have a lot of it, because when I felt like dying of starvation, I always hunted down animals that wandered in the mine. What kind of wild child are you? Come on, let's dismantle it and get defeating proof. It's going to be quick. So, so, so wild, but such Ferris is also cute Daisy Wa. Jeanette was already blinded. Hey. Hi Ann. Because Alicia poked Jeanette's lower back, she raised an unladylike scream. What, what is it? That's sexual harassment, you know. That's not it. We can do dismantling later, look at your surrounding. When Jeanette looked around, 
There were a lot of lily bells at each branch of the trees and also on the rocks, showing their fang, the lily bells roared with glittering eyes. Why? Time to earn as much point as we like. Lily bells are carnivores that attack in large groups. In order to do that, there are also cases when they use their own comrade as decoy. It's already too late to give such information. The flock of lily bells started to rush toward Ferris, Alicia, and Jeanette, who were screaming. While Alicia and Jeanette tightly holding onto their staffs, Ferris raised her hand. Fight, start. Chapter 24 Slumber Party, Sleeping Outdoors There were tens of lily bell flocks rushing towards Ferris and the others while showing their fang. They no longer looked like small cute animals like before. They could only be seen as predator with murderous intent driven by carnivorous instinct. Facing such threat, the girl's hesitation to fight was blown away from their heart. Jeanette pointed her staff toward flock of lily bell and chanted Arya as fast as she can. O oh, soaring wind, silencing transparent blade, become my power and cut my enemies, slash edge. From the tip of her staff some wind blades appeared flying straight towards the flock of Lily Bell. Two of them were cut by the Kamaitachi, and fell down as a corpse. However, there were still tens of Lily Bell swarming toward them. In there, Alicia chanted, Oh, fire, the burning power, follow my feelings, destroy my enemies, bullet flame. From her staff, a huge flame was burst out, burning the lily bells in front of them. Jeanette opened her eyes wide when she saw that. What? Compared last time, didn't her power increase? Even though only a practical skill I always surpass Gaudenbert's and but. Learning of the unexpected growth of her rival, Jeanette glared at Alicia. I'm going to beat you, certainly. Why me? What you should beat are the lily bells. First is you. What do you mean? I don't understand. While the two of them were exchanging words like that, Ferris was raising hands like doing bonsai and then chanting Aria. Please make the lily bells freeze, asterisk catching asterisk coaching. It was an Aria that neither Alicia nor Jeanette have seen in any magic literature. Even calling such words Aria didn't seem right. Even so, the power is tremendous. Every single lily bells which was jumping toward them were wrapped inside ice in the middle of the air froze and dropped to the ground. Phew, that was so intense. Ferris held her small chest while taking breath. When they saw that, Alicia and Jeanette felt that their antagonism to each other was a bit absurd. Compared to Ferris out of norm magic, the best magic that Alicia or Jeanette can use was like nothing. Alicia was smiling when she looked at Jeanette. It's good that no one got hurt. Let's gather the defeating proof. E, yeah. Jeanette nodded awkward and then headed to the frozen lily bells. After gathering all defeated lily bells and counting them, they only got 32 of them, in other words, 32 points. Although it was the lowest rarity demon, it was too little. Each one will only get 10 points if distributed to 3 people. Far from the target of 1000 points. This, how many days will we need to achieve the target? Jeanette sighed. Maybe we need about one week if we are going at this pace. Alicia smiled bitterly. On the other hand, Ferris' smile widened up. I'm very happy that I can have a picnic with everyone for a week. Ferris, you're right. Even though I no longer think of this as picnic, but I am also happy to be with you. And we can't shower during that time, well, it can't be helped. Ah, Jeanette's at a loss for words. She was very happy to spend a long time together with Ferris, but because they were together, that time itself will be troublesome. Even though she was born as a noble, Jeanette was just human. Surely it will be somewhat awful for her to not take a bath for several days. At least, I'd like to return in three days. I wonder if there is a way to efficiently earn points. In that case, isn't it fine to defeat the rarest monster? Monster that give 1000 points for each of them. That, what monster is that? Gazula, at least 50 knights from the order are needed to defeat this monster. It was written if the students see it then they must immediately escape. It seems impossible. Jeanette shivering. That's scary. I'll honor anyone who can defeat such thing. It's impossible for us. Ferris clasped her hands in fear. You will honor them. Ye, yes. In other words, if I defeat that Gazula. 
Of course, I will honor you. If, if you say so, then it can't be helped. Let's go get that gazula. Eee, -e -e -e. is, isn't that dangerous monster? For me, they just a piece of cake. Don't worry, just follow me. Jeanette clapped her fist to her own chest. It was so hard that she likely broke her ribs and made her leak to scream. To arrive at their destination, the hill where Gazula live, Ferris and the other needed to walk for two days. They were following the animal trail in the forest, and when night came, and they were getting tired, they camped in the cave nearby. Joining forces, three of them made a barricade at the entrance and set up a magic square to detect enemies. When they become soldier or adventurer, this kind of technique is something necessary. This time's expedition, too, is also held to train their survival technique. Leaning to the wall of the cave, the three of them put on a blanket up to their shoulder. They were seated with Ferris in the middle, then Jeanette and Alicia beside her. Sleeping in the cavern like this, Ferris remembered the day when she worked in the magic stone mine. She was all alone that time, but this time she with her two friends. It was different from her bed at magic stone mine. Even though under her butts were only rugged pebbles, she was very happy. Thank you, Alicia-san, Jeanette-san. Hey, what is it, so sudden? Jeanette asked in puzzlement. I'm not doing anything that worth thanking for, you know. Alicia inclined her head. I'm happy that we are together. Thank you for being with me. I'm just a useless slave, but, 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 thank you very much. Alicia was smiling when C. Ferris bowed. Ferris is not useless. You taught me how to use magic better, and always heal me. Your existence is very valuable for me. Me too. You saved me when I was kidnapped. I can't imagine what would have happened to me if you didn't come. Jeanette also didn't want to lose. Come to think of it, Jeanette-san and I, our lives were saved by Ferris, right? We have something in common, huh? Alicia seems to be having fun putting her hand together. That, that's not the same. To, to have something in common, not even in my mind do I ever want to have something like that. Jeanette pouted while folding her hands. However, Alicia and Jeanette were gazing each other with a warm look. That made fluffy feelings in Ferris' heart. Such feeling, let alone imagining, she didn't even know its existence when she was in the magic stone mine. It was dazzling, feeling like a precious treasure. Hachi. Ah, Ferris, are you cold? If... If, if you don't mind, we could cuddle each other and warm you up. Jeanette opened her blanket and invite Ferris nervously. Oh, oh, of course it's fine if you don't want to. Be you, be you, but if you catch a cold, we can't do our plan tomorrow, so as teammate, I. Ferris immediately slipped into Jeanette's blanket while she still nervously talked. Clinging to a comfortable body, Ferris buried her face into Jeanette's plentiful chest. It was warm and gave her a sense of relief. Nice smell, somehow, it feels like mother. Effie, Ferris, I'm not a mother, you know, be you, but if that was Ferris' wish, then you can think of me as your mother as much as you wish. Jeanette answered in fluster. Her violent heartbeat sound was transferred to Ferris. Hey, to not include me in there, are you bullying me? Alicia joined into the same blanket while inflating her cheek. Galdenbert san it's cramped it's weird for rivals to get too close like this it's weird somehow with the bewildered jeanette the three of them lied down under one blanket wrapped by sweet smell and gentle body heat from both of her side ferris gradually felt sleepy alicia san jeanette san good night yeah good night good night the three of them fell asleep almost simultaneously Unknown to them, there were some summoned beasts appear and watch over their lovely sleeping face under the moonlight. Chapter 25 The Monster Gazula Deep in the forest, there was a craggy area that jutted out, pushing through the trees. Ferris' group of three slowly climbed up the craggy hill. There were slopes where you could fall dozens of meters if you stepped off, and cliffs so high that you had to look up. The three of us were sweating in the humid space, with hazy mist drifting around them. Even though it looked like a hill, it was now almost resembling a mountain, and the girl's physical strength would not allow them to go very far. Alicia looked at Ferris filled with concern. Are you okay? You look like you're in a lot of pain. I, I'm alright, 
It's not that hard. With that reply, she shook her head, but Ferris was breathing heavily. I, I can give you a piggyback ride. Now, come on over. Jeanette hurriedly squatted down in front of Ferris and offered to give her a piggyback ride. Jeanette San has changed a lot since the old days. I didn't expect her to be such a person who wants to take care of someone else. Alicia murmured, as she looks at Jeanette. Jeanette blushed in reaction. Is, isn't it fine this way? When I see Ferris like this, I just can't leave her alone. What's wrong with something like this for her? Alicia chuckles in response. I don't mean to make you feel bad about it. Eh, I also would have done so myself. Yo, you, don't just say that we are thinking the same way. Jeanette turned her head away after replying. Ferris smiled as she was enveloped in the hospitality of these two people. It was a little embarrassing to be treated like a child, but it made her very happy to be loved by the two people she likes. The three of them climbed to the top of the hill and looked around warily. The Gazula haven't showed up yet. Hem, according to the book that I've read, it should be living around this area. Are you sleepy? Let's finish having a meal first. Ferris took out some portable food from her pack bag as if she was on a picnic. It was then that a tremor ripped through the surrounding area, and the top of the hill, and the ground, exploded. Earth and sand scattered, and a large tube-like creature erupted from underground. It was exactly then that. It, it's, a giant earthworm. Ferris let out a heartfelt scream. It was a giant worm that was several meters long. It wriggled its slimy purple body and dripped filthy mucus from her mouth. And what is noteworthy the most is the smell it released. There was a sickening smell of decay, as if leftovers and dead bodies had been mixed together to breed the worst kind of stench in the air. Th, this is, was there a monster that is more powerful than any others living in this place? Jeanette said in a stiffened voice. Alicia clenched her fist in response. No, that is Gazula. If you beat that, you'll get 1000 points. Let's go for it. I, I will do my best. Ferris shuddered as she replied. Ferris, what's the matter? You're in a terribly releasing cold sweat. I, wow, I don't like earthworms. When I was digging for magic rocks in the mine, I once fell into a cave full of worms. I was soaked in their presence for three days and three nights struggling until I could finally escape, and I was soaking wet from their disgusting mucus. Her eyes were no longer focused. It was easy for Jeanette and Alicia to see how frightened she must have been. Jeanette clenched her fists, thinking that this was the time to show Ferris her good side. Don't worry, Ferris, we've got your back. Ah. Ewa. In front of Jeanette and Alicia's eyes, Ferris was suddenly swallowed whole by the giant worm. Effie, Ferris. Jeanette and Alicia's screams echoed through the air. Gazula swung its torso with a maneuverability that was unimaginable for its huge body, and blew them away. The two rolled on the ground, hugging their wands, and immediately sprang back to their feet. From within Gazula's belly, Ferris's voice could not be heard in any way. Jeanette and Alicia turned pale quickly. Ferris is. Ferris has been eaten by Gazula, my Ferris ISSS. Wait, 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 calm down, we'll be fine if we get her out of there, right away. I mean, Ferris should be more than capable enough to defeat Gazula and escape on her own. Alicia judged that aiming at Gazula would be useless, and was thinking and that attacking it from inside would be a better choice. Can we really escape if you get inside that? If she is not fainted, she should be able to get us out. But if we can't do something inside, we'll be digested. What are you going to do? I don't know what to do. What do we do? What do I do? Jeanette and Alicia are starting to panic. She held her chest and take a deep breath. Then Alicia's expression tightened. Right now, we have to work together in order to save Ferris. Yes, you're right. I'm unwilling to cooperate with a rival, but I can't help it if it's for Ferris. They clasped hands as a sign of mutual understanding. Hmm, what is this feeling? Jeanette felt a tickle in her chest and quickly withdrew her hand. A hot stream of blood burns deep inside her body, and courage started to spring up. It reminds her that she must also fight to be as good as her rivals and not be ashamed of herself. Okay, let's go. Hey, yeah, 
I'll be going. They grabbed their wands and started running towards Gazula. Oh wind that flies in the sky, oh silent, transparent blade, be my strength and cut through the wriggling enemy slicing edge. A Kamitachi is released from Jeanette's staff after she chanted, Droplets of flame, burning power, follow my will and avenge me from my enemy, bullet flame. Flames erupt from Alicia's staff after she chanted, Kamitachi and the flames hit Kazula, but the enemy doesn't even nudge from the hit. It let out a high-pitched roar, gaining more momentum and sending its torso into a rage. It was then that the ground cracked, as earth and sand was being spewed out, and a roaring wind blew. Kya. The two of them were blown away without any way to resist, and were sent flying through the air uncontrollably. Jeanette's heart froze when she saw the precipice where her body had been blown away. She tried to land as properly as she could, but she couldn't even get herself into the right position. Her body fell off the cliff, and she was about to fall off. And then Jeanette's arm was grabbed, and a jolt was sent throughout her body. After looking back at the hand, she saw Alicia holding onto the edge of the cliff with her right hand and was desperately clutching Jeanette's arm with her left. Go, Galdenbert San. I'll pull you up for a bit, so hold on tight, and don't move around too much. Alicia's right hand, that gripping the cliff, slowly slips away. There was no way for her to be able to pull up the weight of two people. Blood seeped from her fingernails, which were clinging against the rock, and her slender fingers were definitely slowly slipping down from the weight. Jeanette then shouts, That, that's enough, just let go of me already. I won't let that happen, you're going to die. Alicia's hand slid down even further. This is my fault. I don't need you, my rival, to help me, don't worry about me, and save Ferris. I don't want to. Why are you doing this? Jeanette grits her teeth out of frustration, they would both die in vain in this. Even if she died, she didn't want her rival to die as well. She wants her rival to survive as an honorable person who defeated her. Otherwise, she would have felt like a for losing. Thinking about this, Jeanette realized how important Alicia Gaudenbert was to her. Without Ferris, there would be no sweetness, no sparkle in the world. However, without Alicia, Jeanette's heart would not be burning, and her life would not be as bright as it is. As if in response to Jeanette's feelings, her rival whispered to her, with sweat beads on her forehead, and her arms trembling. Of course, I want to help Ferris, because I love Ferris. But, Jeanette San, but, Jeanette San, I don't want you to disappear, either, since you have been competing with me for so long. I want you to continue to be my, favorite opponent. Alicia, San. Jeanette felt a tightening sensation in the back of her throat. She wondered why, her vision became cloudy. Jeanette was at a loss, tossed about by her incomprehensible emotions. But, right now, this is not the time to be confused. It's not a time to be weak. In order to save Ferris, she must save herself. Please, Alicia, please, Alicia, let me hold onto the edge of the cliff. Okay, I got it. Jeanette and Alicia lend each other a hand as they struggled climbing back up the cliff. Jeanette had never felt more reassured than she did right now, even though there was a horrible void under her feet. They climbed up the cliff at the same time, and put their hands on the ground side by side. They were both breathing hard and looked at each other at the same time. Let's go, Jeanette. Yeah, Alicia. They leapt to their feet, staffs at the ready, and sprinted towards the gazula. They lay their wands on top of each other, combining their magical powers and aligning their words and spirits. Their skirts fluttered as their magic overflowed. Wind, fire, the power of two. Be our sword and destroy our enemy. Flame storm. A magical cannonball shot from their wands, striking the gazula and exploding. A spectacular tornado of fire was then created, sending Gazula's massive body into a furious spin. Gazula rolls its eyes and spits Ferris' body out of its mouth. Ferris, who had fallen to the ground in a heap, regained consciousness and her eyes fluttered. Phew eh? What, what have I been doing all this time? Her gaze pointed towards the Gazula, that was rushing towards her. Ferris, who was startled, jumps up in surprise and shock. She then held up her hands and shouted at the top of her voice. I hate worms, please don't come near me. 
A huge mass of magic power was released from Ferris and flew through the air, heating the air incandescently. It spun, tore through the ground, piercing Gazula's massive body. A blast that seemed to shake the earth. Jeanette and Alicia reflexively embrace and support each other from the aftershock. Gazula's body bursts in half and was slams into the ground. The demon immediately stopped moving and turning into a silent wreck. Phew. Ferris wiped her forehead, looking somewhat refreshed. Her entire body was sticky and slimy with the Gazula's bodily fluids, but she didn't seem to notice. Jeanette asked timidly after snapping back to reality. Effie, Ferris, are you alright? Hi, earthworms are actually not that scary. I feel like I've overcome something. Shock therapy. Alicia's eyes widened. Ferris looks at Jeanette and Alicia, with the two still holding each other, she tilts her head and asked, Ah, oh, when did Alicia and Jeanette San become such good friends? It was only when she was told them that Jeanette realized that she was still hugging Alicia. Her blood rushed throughout her body, and she immediately jumped away from Alicia. This, this, this is nothing. It's not like that. I'm, I'm definitely not. I'm not getting along with you. She shouted in a fluster. Seeing Jeanette reacting like that, she couldn't help but smile and giggle from her reaction. Chapter 26 Team Ferris and the others killed three Gazula, collected enough points for three people, and walked for two days back to the entrance of the forest. By the time we returned to the starting point, exhausted, many of the students had already gathered. They were showing their demon parts to their teachers and receiving confirmation of their points. As soon as she saw the three of us, Lotta Sensei came running up to us. Good work, Ferris Chan, Alicia Chan, Jeanette Chan, you're looking pretty worn out. Are you hurt? I'm fine, I'm just a little tired from all the walking. Jeanette is standing, hanging onto her battle staff. Her knees are shaking, but she doesn't want to sit down. Jeanette, why don't you sit down and take a break? You've already crossed the finish line. Alicia recommends. No, thank you. I feel like I'm losing if I'm the only one sitting down while my rival, Alicia, is standing. Mao, you're so stubborn. Alicia looked at Jeanette with a dumbfounded smile on her face. Seeing them together, Ferris feels that it's kind of nice. Although they are still rivals, she could feel that the distance between them is definitely getting shorter. Before she knew it, they were calling each other names, and Jeanette was not as hostile as she before. Ferris clasped her hands and smiled. Hey he he, I'm glad you two have become such good friends. No, we're not getting along, we two are rivals. Jeanette folded her arms with a bright red face and turned away. Lotta Sensei looked at the three of them and nodded in agreement. Fuma Fumu, I don't know what happened, but I get it. So, can you show us the proof of the monsters you have defeated? Yes, here. Ferris took three bones from the Gazula's head out of the leather bag and gave them to Lotta Sensei. Oh, oh, it's heavy, I mean, isn't this? Gazula's bones, not to mention, there's three. What did you guys do? Lotta Sensei was wide eye shocked. Of course, we're the ones who defeated them. Jeanette is very proud of herself. Well, it was mostly Ferris who defeated it, though. Corrected Alicia as she giggled. That's not true. The three of us work together to defeat them. Says Ferris with a pumped up pose. The eyes of the students and teachers were all gathered at once. Kazula, isn't that a monster that even the knights have to fight with all their might to defeat? Lies, those little guys did that. How in the world, that's too good to be true, seriously. A murmur of upset people could be heard. Others were gazes of envy. Foo fun, the Gazula was nothing but small fry to us. Jeanette is very proud of herself, of course. I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. Ferris was swallowed whole, you know. Says Alicia. It was quite a challenge, wasn't it? It took me three hours to kill three of them. Ferris nodded, and Lotta Sensei's eyes widened even more. In only three hours, normally, it takes an order of nights a day to kill just one of these monster. Didn't it say in the manual that students should avoid them at all cost? Ah, uh, um, I'm sorry, I will be avoiding them from now on. Ferris hurriedly bowed her head in apology. No, 
I just hoped that you defeated them safely. Well, I didn't know it was that bad. Lotta Sensei pinched her chin and muttered, Now, go to the temporary tent, get a towel, get cleaned up, and get some food. The next carriage will be leaving soon, so you can get on it and go back to school. Yes. Ferris and the other three replied cheerfully. In the outer yard of the magic school, students lined up after returning from their expedition. Many of the students were tired and wearing dirty clothes, but all of them had a look of pride on their faces. In front of a large crowd of students, the principal is making a speech about the completion of the expedition. Everyone, you did well and worked very hard through this expedition. I'm sure that you all have gained valuable experience and confidence that will lead to your futures after graduating. The students nodded, and the principal smiled. Teams will be needed in various classes in the future. The teams that fit well in this expedition should continue to do so in the future. I'm sure it will be an irreplaceable relationship, even after you have become an adventurer or a soldier. The principal then spread his arms wide. Well then, that concludes your expedition training. Tomorrow, we're going to reward everyone a well-deserved vacation. Now get yourselves some rest. With a flick of his wand, the principal's figure twisted and distorted, and then he disappeared from the yard. The students went back to their dormitories in a flurry of activity. Some of them remained in the garden, chatting. Well then, shall we go back? I can't wait to take a bath and refresh myself. Yeah, everyone is already feeling sluggish. After saying so, Jeanette and Alicia walks away. Ah, uh, um, I have a favor to ask you to. But before they go, Ferris speaks up. The two responded and stopped to look at Ferris. HM, what is it? ID it's Ferris request. I'll do it if I can, please don't hesitate to ask. Jeanette patted her chest reliably as she declared, Well, you see, um, from now on, can the three of us form a team? A, Ferris, me, and Alicia, you mean? Ferris nodded her head, Because we're a perfect match, I think it would be really fun to be a team forever. But, it's not like I'm going to keep getting along with my rivals. Jeanette hesitated. But, um, is it no good? But because of Ferris, whose eyes were moistening, made her flinch. Alicia laughed. I don't mind. We seem like a pretty well-balanced team. Yay. Alicia-san, I love you. As Ferris jumps onto Alicia's response, Jeanette also answers in panic. I, I don't have a choice. If Ferris asks, I have no choice but to accept. I love you too, Jeanette. That, to say, you love me, that is. Jeanette's cheeks became stained with tears. Eh hee hee. From now on, the three of us are a team. Ferris, who was overjoyed, clung to Alicia and Jeanette's arms. Whoa, Effie, Ferris, you are too bold. No matter how much of a team we are, you must be more orderly. Jeanette was so upset that she said something strange. Alicia, on the other hand, put her hands to her lips and giggled. Then it might be a good idea to spend the next vacation with the team. I'd like to see what Jeanette is like in her private life. I'm just as noble at school as I am in my private life. You're more than welcome to spend the vacations with me, Ferris. Jeanette looks smug for some reason. Ferris, where do you want to go? We could go back to the villa, but I'd rather stretch my wings anyway and go somewhere. Where I want to go. Where I want to go, where I want to go. Ferris was troubled. She's been living in the magic stone mines for a long time, so there are many places she'd like to visit. But the choices were so many for her that it's hard to choose just one. More than anything, she would feel bad that she'd be forcing them to do something they don't want to do if she says, here. And because Alicia and Jeanette are both two years older than her, they tend to treat Ferris like a child and indulge her. You, I don't know, but. Ferris looked up at Alicia with sullen eyes. Alicia show her a smile. How about the ocean? There are sandy beaches and relatives' cottages nearby, where you can relax and enjoy yourself. I think it's a great way to have a vacation. Ferris, have you ever been to the beach? The ocean is a place full of water, isn't it? It's blue and sparkling, and there are crabs, right? I've never seen it. I want to go there. Fufu, that's good. What about Jeanette? 
blue ocean, white clouds, white sandy beach, Ferris, who can't swim, teaching her how to swim, two people drifting through the waves, hand in hand, ah, it's the ocean. Jeanette was already having a trip to her imaginary world. Alicia nodded, confirming this. I guess we should be okay with that. Now that it's decided, we need to buy a new swimsuit. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Ferris and the others went back to the dormitory, all three of them were excited in anticipation. Chapter 27 First Time at Sea The sky was blue and clear, an ocean that looks like it has been stained with crystal, brilliantly sparkling beaches, seabirds flitting about and the sound of waves crashing. Wara, 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 that, that is, the ocean. Ferris jumped out of the carriage and let out a loud war, not bothering to take out her luggage. She knew the word, ocean. She had learned the concept of the ocean in her textbooks. But no amount of words, no amount of maps could ever capture the noise, the breeze, the vastness, the remoteness of the place. Indeed, this is the ocean. Alicia stands next to her and smiles. Ferris, the curiously asked, Um, how far does this ocean go? To the shores of Sathe. Where does this water come from? From rain and stuff raining. It should have been saving up. Why is it so sparkly? It's the reflection of the sun's rays. Why are you jumping up and down? Because there's fish in there. Fua, see, the sea is amazing. Ferris's eyes glittered as they widened fully from excitement. Jeanette giggled, seeing her reaction. Ferris is really new to the ocean, isn't she? Ferris nodded broadly. Yes, I've been living in the magic stone mine for a long time, so this is the first time I've seen so much water in front of me. I'm very impressed. Due to the nearby volcano, this coast is warm enough to be able to enjoy swimming all year round. It's also famous as a resort area. Volcanoes, is that the thing that emits smoke offshore? Doesn't it make a big bang? Ferris looked at the crater in the distance, feeling uneasy. Don't worry. It's said that a long time ago, a famous mage drew magic power from the surrounding veins and sealed the crater with a spell. There's always been smoke, but there's never been a full-blown eruption. I, I see, Jeanette's son knows a lot, doesn't she? Ferris looked up at Jeanette with respect. Jeanette stuck her nose up in the air proudly in response. That, that's right. Yes, I know everything. I'll tell Ferris all about the lore of this region, as a special treat. You can be a storyteller, but for now, let's go change first. The sun is going to set. Yes, I'm looking forward to swimming. Alicia shushes her, Ferris walks away excitedly. You, I was also about to start at the good part of it. Jeanette, who was planning to show off her vast knowledge, followed Ferris dejectedly. On the way, they suddenly noticed a person passing by. A person wearing a sorcerer's robe and a hood. The surrounding people were all dressed up in resort-like outfits, but only one of them was different, giving off a strange air. Jeanette ran to stand next to Ferris and Alicia and whispered. There were some strange people who didn't seem to know what they should be doing in the ocean. Weird people. What's are they like? Look, over there. When Jeanette turned to point at them, the sorcerer-like person wearing a robe had already disappeared before they knew it. Eh, hey, that's strange. They were there just a minute ago. Jeanette, are you okay? It's hot today, so take it easy, okay? Don't worry, I am not going crazy, you know. He was really there, though I wonder where he went. Jeanette could only tilt her head in confusion. The three girls changed into their swimsuits and arrived at the beach. It was as if an angel had descended to the world below, and the people on the beach couldn't help but take notice. Ferris looks up at Alicia and Jeanette as the hot sand sears the soles of her feet. Alicia's swimsuit is a neat and clean one-piece type. It's full of elegant frills and has the look of a seaside princess. Jeanette, on the other hand, is wearing a bold, two-piece type of swimsuit. Jeanette is wearing the swimsuit had her superb proportions unsparingly exposed, her pure white skin glistening in the sunlight. Watching them, Ferris felt her heart throb a little for some reason. She clasped his hands together and let out an exclamation of admiration. 
Alicia-san and Jeanette-san both look very mature. I admire them so much. Add, admire. Ferris is in love with me. That means Ferris is going to live in my house for the rest of her life, right? What is wrong with your brain? Calm down, okay? Jeanette is ecstatic, while Alicia looks at her dumbfounded by her reaction. Ferris let out a small sigh and looked down at her young body. Compared to you two, I'm no good. How can I become so mature? Ferris doesn't have to be a grown-up. You're the best as you are. I'd rather have you be that way forever. Is, is that Sue? At Jeanette's strangely enthusiastic insistence, Ferris tilted her head in response. Alicia covers her mouth with her hand and shows a little smile. I think Ferris is the cutest the way she is now, whether you want her to stay that way forever or not. I want to cuddle her so much, I want to bring her home. Ah wah wah wah. Ferris feels embarrassed when people say things like that. Feeling her cheeks becoming hot, she squirms and shrinks from embarrassment. Jeanette also murmured, while her ears are reddening. I, I, myself, also think that you are the cutest thing in the world, Effie, Effie, Effie. Are you about to sneeze? Ferris asked, puzzled at Jeanette's reaction. No, that's not it. Please don't hold back. I'll be waiting for you with my ears closed. Ferris presses the palms of his hands to her ears and waits nervously. I don't sneeze that loudly. The Rhineslicks are very graceful when it comes to sneezing. Oh, that's amazing. I want to hear it. I want to hear it right now. I can't do it, even if you asked for it so suddenly. Next time I feel like sneezing, I'll make sure Ferris hears it. Jeanette is confused inwardly, wondering what she has promised to do. But looking at Ferris' eyes shining with anticipation, she knew that she had to live up to her expectations. She decided to practice sneezing from this evening onwards. Come on, Ferris, Jeanette, don't get too mushy over there or the ocean will run away. Does the ocean run away? We've got to get him. No, that's not how things work. Alicia took Ferris' hand and started running, with Jeanette following them behind. Ferris kicked up the sand, feeling the comfort of her bare feet, her small body breathing in the sunshine. In front of them, three men stood as if to block their path. Their abs are divided in multiple layers, their skin is tanned to a reddish bronze, and their clothes have an oddly buoyant air. It was a type of person Ferris had rarely seen before, and she squirmed in fear. As she clung to Alicia's arm in fear, then one of the men approached Alicia. Hey, hey, young lady, you're so beautiful. Why don't you come hang out with us? The other man walks up to Jeanette. Wow, your style is awesome, a real angel of the sea. Mermaid, come and make a summer memory with us. Ferris is confused by the situation. Alicia then sighed. I'm sorry, but we don't want any of that. We're here to hang out as friends. Jeanette frowned as well. In the first place, I don't want to get involved with such vulgar types as you. Please don't interrupt my precious time with Ferris. Oh, that's harsh, but I like it that way, too. She's like a young lady, isn't she? What else can we do but make love to her? The men were closing in on them. Ferris was even more frightened. Hey, ah. Uh, are they bad guys? Do I have to fight him? Alicia stops her from raising her hands. She was on the verge of unleashing a massive spell. No, Ferris, this is just a hookup. These people are only offering us a temporary relationship. Fee, that's amazing. Alicia and Jeanette San, is this what they called? Picking up girls? I don't know, but isn't this remarkable? I don't know what it is, but it's probably incredible. Everyone is so popular popular. Ferris sent a look of respect to Alicia and Jeanette. Jeanette ruffled her hair and puffed out her chest. We, well, this is something that happens to me every day. It's rare that a day goes by when I'm not being picked up by someone on the street. Wow, that's really great. I've never been picked up by anyone before. When Ferris is a little disappointed, one of the men approaches him. Hey, hey, I wanna play with you. Can't I? I'll feed you lots of good food. Can we go over there? Okay, okay. E. Are you okay with a little girl like me? When Ferris was worried, the man smiled lazily. I think I rather like little girls. Ah hee hee. 
TL, flamethrower armed, time to burn some trash. I understand, I'll go. Ferris, Ferris. Alicia and Jeanette both hold her back by her shoulders. Jeanette instantly grabs Ferris' hand and leaves the scene at high speed, while Alicia proceeds to protect the others. Awawa, Jeanette-san, why are we running away? Because you must not follow that thing. But he also said he'd feed me good food. Don't get yourself caught up in something that offers good food. And then to Alicia, he said he likes small children, and I think he is a good person who likes children. Absolutely not. A, it's not. Mew, I'll do everything I can to protect you, stupid Ferris. Ferris didn't understand why Jeanette was so desperate. It was nice to be pulled by her hand, as if she would never get lost. The sound of water, the rustle of people. At the end of the wall, the blue sea awaits. Ferris ran with Jeanette and Alicia towards the edge of the sea, while feeling a pleasant sensation of warmth all over her body. Chapter 28 Closing in War is so nice and cool. As Ferris ran into the waves, she squealed with delight at the feel of the seawater on her bare feet. Different from a bath or a pool of water, it was cool but not too cold, a refreshing sensation. Her feet, half buried in the sand, made a strange curve across the shimmering water. Ferris would have been happy enough to just stand there like this for a long time, but she knew that wasn't what she should do. It would be a shame if she didn't enjoy the ocean as much as possible since she had been brought there for the first time. Ferris looked around at the beaches and shallows and tilted her head. Um, what are those people doing lying down in the water? Lying down in the sea, what are you talking about? Jeanette tilted her head, too as she watched what Ferris was referring to. Ferris's gaze is fixed on a woman swimming in a crawl. Alicia placed a finger to her lips and pondered. I see, it's the first time she's ever seen anyone swimming. A, hey, swimming is that what it's called? It's so cool. It looks like they are flying in the ocean. I'll try it too. Wait, Ferris, you didn't even know the concept of swimming, and now all of a sudden you wanted to do it. Jeanette panicked and tried to stop her, but she was too late. Wow. Ferris dived into the sea without hesitation. Since she didn't know anything about swimming, she didn't know that swimming is basically done face down, so she faces down on the surface of the ocean on her side. And as a result, she almost drowned. Fortunately, it was shallow water and Alicia pulled her up immediately, resulting in no serious injury, but Ferris coughed violently. Keho, Keho, uff, it's so salty. I thought the ocean was water, but it's not. It's consomme soup. The ocean is consomme soup. I don't think it's consomme soup. Are you okay? Alicia rubbed Ferris's back in a caring manner. I'm fine. I was just so surprised. Ferris was still surprisingly full of energy. Her nose and eyes hurt a lot, but she couldn't let an accident like this dampen her spirits. After all, today was her first day at the beach. She had been looking forward to this long-awaited ocean trip for a long time, and had rehearsed it many times in her dreams. Jeanette cut in with a nervous voice. Ah, um, Ferris, if you want, I can teach you how to swim. It, it's okay if you don't want to, though. Is that true? Please teach me, Jeanette Sensei. Sen, Sensei. I, I am the Sensei. Yes, I'll do whatever you say, so please teach me a lot, Jeanette Sensei. Ferris clasped her hands in front of her flat chest and looked up at Jeanette with an innocent smile. Her white skin, glistening droplets of water, wet hair, and modest body wrapped in a girlish swimsuit is truly resembling an angel of the sea. Oh, all right, I'm changing my future plans, I'm gonna be a teacher. What's wrong with you all of a sudden? Jeanette muttered dumbly, and Alicia whispered worriedly. Jeanette trembled from the thought. Now that Ferris had come to rely on her unconditionally, she couldn't let see her embarrassed side. If she doesn't teach Ferris how to swim and train her to be a world-class swimmer, the name of the Rhineslick family will suffer. Okay, here we go, Ferris. First, you have to hold my hand. Hi. Ferris grasped Jeanette's outstretched hands. Effie, Ferris' little hands, your hands are as small as a baby's, and my hand, it's holding her hand. 
Jeanette's consciousness is filled with the feeling of Ferris' hand in hers, it's a level of euphoria that makes her want to run away to the end of the world with her, but she can't abandon the responsibility she's been given. Jeanette tried her best to keep her mind off of Ferris' hand as much as possible. For, for now, lie down in the water. You don't have to worry about drowning because I'm holding your hand. The important thing is to trust the water and surrender your body to it. It may be scary at first, but the water has the power to keep you afloat. Hi. Ferris lay face down on the surface of the water without any hesitation. Her body floated on the surface of the water without any undue pressure. A, hey, amazing, I'm floating, it's like I'm floating in the SKY, this feels good. Ferris is impressed by her first experience. Aren't you afraid, you just almost drowned, right? I'm fine, as long as Jeanette San holds my hand, I won't be afraid of anything. I believe in you, Jeanette San. You you you. The sparkle in Ferris' eyes, so dazzling and innocent, made Jeanette feel dizzy. She would love to take Ferris to a quiet place and give her a lap pillow, but that's not going to happen. Not yet. Not now. Oh, okay, then. Next, try fluttering your feet. Fluttering my feet. Ferris blinked, with her eyes flickering. Jeanette nodded in response. Yeah, while floating in the water, move your legs alternately. It will give you momentum and help you move forward. Like, like this. Ferris moved her little legs. The surface of the sea bubbled up as the water splashed up in a big wave. Jeanette tugged on Ferris's hand as she backed away. Why? I did it. I am swimming now. I can swim. Jeanette feels her chest tighten up when Ferris looks so happy with the way she's moving, and it's mainly because Jeanette is pulling her along. Jeanette's mental strength is already at zero due to the tremendous destructive power of the cute attacks. Foo fun, not quite there yet. The next step is to practice moving your hands. Just stand there and watch my example. I'll show you my spectacular crawl. With great enthusiasm, she arranged her hands above her head and dived into the water. She was so busy trying to impress Ferris that she forgot about Jeanette. She was thinking that she was the one who had to do it. Jeanette San. Jeanette saw. As she listened to Ferris's screams, Jeanette felt the sun from underwater was beautiful. Mao, I've never seen anyone go drowning with such confidence. You, please don't say that. Jeanette was on the sandy beach, laying down on Alicia's lap, dumbfounded. Although she doesn't know why she should be on the lap of a rival, she would rather give Ferris a lap pillow but she can't say anything too strongly because Alicia just pulled her up and took care of her herself. And, as much as she hated to admit it because it was so frustrating, she didn't mind having her head in Alicia's lap. The old you wouldn't have done something so stupid, but you must really like Ferris. Of course, I love her so much, got any complaints on that? I'm not complaining, I love Ferris, too. Alicia smiled. Looking at that smile, as if she were an accomplice, Jeanette felt a tingle in her chest and hastily averted her gaze. At the edge of the waves, Ferris is running around kicking up water in a big hurry, falling down too fast, getting right back up and running again, jumping in lightly and thrashing around. Eventually, Ferris came running up to Jeanette and the others, her cheeks flushed and excitement in her eyes. I was wondering what she was doing, and she showed me how to play. Why don't the three of us play together? What are we playing? First, let's play in the sand. You can build castles and towers out of sand. There are plenty of materials, and it's amazing how much you can redo. I want to build a house so big that everyone can live in it. I understand. I'll build one for you. Jeanette clenches her fists and burns with passion. I don't think that's possible. Alicia, being the realist that she is, doesn't like the idea, but she follows Ferris and Jeanette to the beach. The three of them dug up sand from the ground and used the nearby seawater to harden it, creating the foundation for the building. Ferris digs in the dirt like a dog digging a hole, just as fast as she can. Ferris, that's really fast. It looks like it's going to lead us to some underground cavity somewhere. Eh hey, hee hee, I've been a slave in a magic stone mine for a long time. I'm very good at digging holes. As to be expected, Ferris is a professional hole digger. 
Jeanette can't help but want to hug Ferris, who smiles shyly. She makes up her mind that she must give Ferris the best sandcastle as a gift, since he has never even played with sand before. As the three of us continue to work, a little girl came running up to us. Oh, that girl over there, are you making a pit? Ferris replied as she continued to dig, plunging her upper body into the hole in the sand. It's not a pit, we're building a big house, when it's finished, we'll have dinner together inside. He, that's great, I'll do my best to. The little girl pulled her parents from nearby and began to play in the sand with her family. I want to build a tower as big as those girls. Oh, my, that would be a bit hard. Ham, leave it to me, I'm still an architectural engineer. Dad, you're so cool. Foo foo foo. Her father was strangely enthusiastic and built a magnificent spire. Perhaps attracted by the momentum of the two teams, other people in the beach began to gather from all over the place and began to fight with the sand. What's this, a special sand playground, eh? Was there ever an event like that? Oh well, let's get on with it. You're not a man of the sea if you don't ride this big wave. Hua, 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 hua. I never thought I'd be playing in the sand in my 90s. Let's see what I can do with this old man's skills. In no time at all, the area was filled with bathers playing in the sand. Jeanette flinched. What? What's going on here? Are they trying to compete with our project? If so, we can't afford to lose. I don't think you need to get so worked up about it. I'll keep digging for sand, so please feel free to use it. Ferris pulled herself up from the hole in the ground, her face covered in sand. When you are in the midst of a lively crowd, and playing in the sand with such a large group of people, you get excited. It was a far cry from the days of digging in the mines by himself. Back then, she hadn't thought that her labor would be hard but now Ferris felt a hundred times better than he had then. That's when it happened. The ground shook eerily with a sound that resonated in the pit of my stomach. Immediately afterwards, a volcanic crater off the coast erupted in a cloud of smoke. Bright red rocks soar in the sky and rain down on the ocean and the beach. A huge amount of lava overflowed from the crater, muddying the sea and rushing to the beach at a tremendous speed. People were screaming and running for their lives. Children falling down. Parents picking up their children to prevent them from being crushed, elderly people in a state of panic, unable to stand up immediately. In an instant, the paradise transforms into a hellish place. There are still many people left in the sea, and they have not been able to evacuate. Everyone is desperately trying to escape, but the lava is just around the corner. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Ferris, we have to get out of here. Alicia and Jeanette held out their hands to Ferris who stood there dumbfounded. However, Ferris did not take their hands. Ferris knew in her gut why. Even if she escaped, she would not be able to save herself. That the volcano, reeking of despair and death, was about to swallow up everything. All the swimmers, all the children, all the old people, and Ferris' precious friends. Happy times are crushed and fade away. Hope is transformed into despair. Something like that. I don't want it. Ferris held her hands above her head. Jeanette screamed as a burning rock crashed down right next to her. Heat waves singed the three of them, and the smell of sulfur stung their noses. A rain of flames and waves of soothing lava attacked the beach. Demon San, please stop that Vulcanu. Ferris shouted. The world stops to hold its breath. In the monochrome world, magic power swirled around Ferris, creating a huge surge. The people were frozen in place as they ran for cover, and the only ones moving were the three girls. The whirlpool of raging magic made the hair of the three girls flap violently, and their bodies felt as if they were being ripped from the earth. With a spectacular flash, a vortex of magical power was released, and time returned to the world. The vortex of magical power attacked the oncoming lava and pushed it back. Like the return of a wave, the lava returned to the sea and was forced to flow back into the crater. Multiple magic circles formed around the volcano, dyeing the mountain in white light. When the magic circle and the vortex of magic power disappeared, the volcano changed its color and turned into a jet black, silent mass. E. A. The eruption. Is it over? That's weird. There was lava raining down on us nearby. What just happened? A buzz of confusion spread across the beach. 
No one even noticed that Ferris had quelled the volcano. Somehow, I managed. Ferris felt the strength drain from his entire body and almost fell over in a stagger. Are you all right? Alicia immediately held Ferris' body in her arms. Yes, I. Alicia-san and Jeanette-san, are you injured? We are fine, but, Ferris saved your life again, didn't you, thank you. Jeanette hugged Ferris tightly. She couldn't help but love Ferris, who had been exhausted from using such powerful magic on such a small body. It was good. Ferris smiled in relief. I think we should go to our room and rest for a while. I'm worried about Ferris' health if she pushes herself too hard. Yes, indeed. It's still noon, but let's go to the villa. Even so, Alicia added with concern. The volcano was supposed to have been sealed off using the magic of the veins around here, so why did it suddenly start raging? Chapter 29 Chapter 29 Relaxation The villa was owned by a family of local lords, distant relatives of the Gaudenberts, who were currently on a trip to the capital. Ferris, Alicia and Jeanette were allowed to use the villa as they wished. In the guest room of the villa, Ferris was lying on one of the three beds, breathing softly. The sand had been wiped from her feet when she entered the villa, but her skin was still sticky from the dried seawater. She felt like she needed to take a bath, but she was too tired to do so. Then, Alicia appeared with a towel in her hand. I've brought you a towel and some water. Here, I'll wipe you down and put your pajamas on. I can do it myself. I don't need you to do that for me. Ferris tried to get up, but he couldn't do it fast enough and slumped down. Don't push yourself. Phewey. Alicia poked her forehead and Ferris let out a weak cry. Ferris is a hero who saved everyone's life, so it's okay to rely on me like this. You have to learn to rely on someone for a bit. I'm not a hero, I'm not, but. She made a feeble protest, but Alicia didn't listen. Soaking a towel in a tub of water, she wrung it out lightly and wiped Ferris' body with the wet towel. The seawater and sand particles cleared her rough skin, and the cool air from the wet towel gave her a refreshing feeling. Her burning body eases up. Alicia wipes Ferris' arms and legs, then runs her hands down her back and gently picks her up, wiping her shoulders and down her back. Are you okay, Ferris, are you cold? Yes, that feels good. Her goddess-like eyes stare at Ferris tenderly, and her wet blonde hair hangs down to her body. As she did this, Ferris felt a sense of peace and warmth deep inside her chest. Without thinking, a voice spilled out from her lips. Mama, San. Hem, what's wrong? Alicia looked at her curiously. No, it was nothing. Ferris hurriedly looked away from Alicia. She didn't know who her mother was, but for some reason she felt like calling her that. But she felt embarrassed to call a girl in her class her mother. It makes her feel like she's a baby. Feeling her cheeks heating up, Ferris wanted to roll around on the bed. Ferris, I've made chicken soup for you. Jeanette burst into the room, opening the door with a bang. Grabbing a small pot with her mittens, she walks over to the bed. Chicken soup. We were just on a hot sandy beach a minute ago. Alicia rolls her eyes. Chicken soup is the best thing for sick people. I'm going to take care of you perfectly. You're really going for it. Of course I am, if Ferris is weak, I'm the one who must take care of her. Jeanette removes the lid and steam rises from the pot, Jeanette scoops the soup with a wooden spoon and brings it to Ferris' mouth. Yes, Ferris, please eat. On. On. The soup flows into Ferris' mouth, which opens like a baby bird. Or. Ah. Was it hot? It's okay. I'll get you some water right away. Jeanette panicked. It was indeed hot, and Ferris was surprised, but, but the chicken soup melted gently in her mouth, and the rich flavor soothed her body. Besides, Ferris was so happy to be nursed like this that she could feel her vision clouding over. When she was in the magic stone mine, no one would help her when she was sick. If she fell asleep, she would just be yelled at by the master to hurry up and work. Jeanette and Alicia really cared about Ferris. It seemed like such a waste for a slave like herself. No, no, I'm fine. It's very, it's delicious. Ferris chuckled. Ferris, car, cute. You're so cute. 
ha. Huh. Jeanette hugged Ferris as hard as she could, her face was pressed against her ample breasts, and Ferris felt like she was going to suffocate. Jeanette, Jeanette, I, I can't. What's wrong, Ferris, you sound like you're about to be crushed. She was really about to be crushed. With Alicia's intervention, the tragedy was prevented. When Ferris woke up after a nap, the sun was already setting. Jeanette and Alicia were sitting in a nearby chair, quietly reading a book. Both of them were vying for the top spot in their class, and they looked like intelligent girls. Oh, you're awake, Ferris. Good morning, Ferris. Good morning. Jeanette and Alicia smiled at her, and Ferris smiled faintly. Something about that tickled her. The thought that they had been by her side the whole time she had been asleep made my heart throb. Perhaps it was because her body had recovered from the wear and tear of resting for a while, but her head was now working properly. Remembering the events of the daytime, Ferris said self-consciously, Um, I'm a little curious about something. Oh, what is it? Alicia raised her eyebrows, that volcano, it was sealed by drawing magic from the Earth's veins, wasn't it? Yes, I was wondering about that too. If the volcano erupted, it means that the seal has been broken. Jeanette brought her balled up palm to her chin, a hint of anxiety in her tone. So that means the sealing magic is disabled, which means it might erupt again. If we don't find out why we can't use the magic of the Earth's veins anymore, it might be dangerous. If the eruption starts again, Ferris thought, it would be good if they could respond as successfully as they did during the day, but if not, there would be a great deal of damage, that had to be avoided at all costs. I, I don't want anyone else to die, I feel like I need to properly investigate the reason for the eruption. But, I think the country's wizardry court should investigate these things. If Ferris gets hurt getting so close to the volcano, that would be terrible. Alicia admonishes, but, I can't just leave them there, I've seen with my own eyes how close they came to dying. Ferris. Alicia's expression clouded, Jeanette folds her arms and says in a high-pitched voice, that's fine, with the three of us, a volcano won't be a problem. Does the three of us include me? Alicia asks, and Jeanette quickly blushes, well, yeah, I guess so. Hum. Hey, hey, don't get too close. What is it? Jeanette's face grew even redder as she stared at her at close range. Alicia let out a mischievous smile and turned to Ferris. Okay, I get it. But let's not do anything too dangerous, okay? We. I want the three of us to play together forever. Yes. Ferris nodded loudly. Chapter 30. Earth Vein Devouring. The next morning, when the sun had not yet fully risen, Ferris, Alicia, and Jeanette left the villa. They boarded a boat prepared by a servant at the villa and headed for the volcano. They had already had a simple breakfast, but since they didn't know how long it would be before they returned, they also had waffles and tea on the boat as their lunch. Let's go. Ferris gripped the oars on both sides and rowed as hard as she could. She was trying so hard that her face turned red but the boat was not going very fast because she was not strong enough to start with. Alicia asked worriedly, Ferris, don't you think it would be better if I rode? No problem, I'm the one who suggested we go to the volcano, so I'm the one who has to do it. Ferris insisted, but perhaps the limits of her slender arms were slowing her down even more. She soon collapsed and had to lie down on the boat, groaning. Oh, it can't be helped, I'll take over for you. Jeanette happily took over the oars, and the boat began to glide smoothly along the surface of the sea. Ferris half raised herself, heaving a breath as the scenery flowed smoothly by. Wow, Jeanette, that's amazing. Um, am I? Of course, I'm amazing. Jeanette puffed out her chest. You're so strong, you're so muscular. No, I'm not. For the sake of her honor, she had to say it. Well, pretty much. Alicia muttered admiringly as she touched Jeanette's arms. Don't trouble yourself to check. Jeanette exclaims, her cheeks burning, such humiliation was unbecoming of a daughter of the Rhineslick house. However, it was hard to get really angry when Ferris and her friends did that. In the meantime, the boat approached the volcano off the coast. 
thanks to the magic Ferris had used yesterday, the eruption had stopped, but there was still a hint of smoke coming out of the crater, and a dull rumbling sound was coming from underground, the air was unsettling, first, let's go around the volcano and see what's going on, depending on the situation, we might have to climb the volcano to find out what's going on, but I don't want to go near the crater if I can help it. I suppose, it would be a disaster if it exploded at close range. Jeanette maneuvered the oars and drove the boat along the perimeter of the volcano. Just as they reached the opposite side of the beach, that it became apparent. What the, what is that thing? Ferris let out a scream. Alicia and Jeanette were both stunned and looked towards the volcano. There was a huge mosquito-like creature stuck to the middle of the volcano. It was much larger than a carriage or a house, and it was slowly wriggling its purple wings. The stinger from its mouth pierced the volcano and was constantly sucking up something. Alicia whispered, I've read about that creature in the Magical Creatures Dictionary, Serginus Perontinus, aka, Vein Eater, dot. Vein Eaters. Jeanette tilted her head, yes. It's a parasite that lives in the Earth's veins and sucks up magic power. It's an artificial creature made in an alchemy workshop, so it shouldn't exist in the natural world, but... In other words, it means that someone created it and went to the trouble of parasitizing the volcano, and when there wasn't enough magic power to flow into the volcano's seal magic, it erupted. That's no way. Ferris turned pale. I have no idea why any sorcerer would do such a thing. So many people were about to fall victim to the eruption during the day. Well, the investigation is complete for now. Let's report it to the country's sorcerer corps and have them take it down. Well, I don't think we'll be able to get there in time then. If another eruption happens, it'll be a big problem. Earth Vein Eaters are S-rank targets to defeat. We don't know what will happen if we mess with them. Alicia reminded herself, she knew Ferris was strong, but she didn't think she should dare let this little girl take the risk. Such things are the responsibility of adults. But, I can't leave it alone. Someone might be in danger, and I can't just leave like this. Ferris. Alicia was troubled by Ferris's complaint, for she could not help but understand her feelings. This is no time to argue, you two. It's coming. Perhaps sensing the presence of the enemy, the Vainita snarled its wings and flew towards the boat. Raging flame, enemy of all things, burn this one down dragnet flame. Alicia held up her wand and chanted the words. A magic circle spread at the tip of her wand, and flames erupted in a storm. However, the Vainitas evaded the attack with their amazing mobility and attacked the boat. Ferris and the others narrowly avoid the attack, but the vein eater crashes into the boat. Ferris tumbles from the tilted boat into the sea. The water rushed into her lungs, and Ferris struggled desperately. She managed to pull herself out of the water, but he soon sank again. The boat was moving quickly away from him. Invaded by the cold, dark water, Ferris plunged to the bottom of the ocean. In pain, despair, and regret, she felt sorry for herself for not listening to Alicia's words and trying something so reckless. I'm sorry, Alicia, Jeanette. Ferris muttered in her mind and weakly tried to close her eyelids, but then her hand was grabbed forcefully, and her body was pulled closer. Before he knew it, Ferris was being carried out to sea. P-U-H-R. Ferris breathed in the fresh air with all her might. The sun was shining brightly, and it was Jeanette who was swimming with Ferris in her arms, holding her tightly. Jeanette, you're not supposed to be able to swim. Alicia was surprised. Oh, eh, that's right. She was even more surprised. Ferris, I now know how to swim. I can swim. Ye, yes, that's great. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry for causing you trouble. Jeanette does her best to support Ferris, who is devastated. Instead of being annoyed, Jeanette wanted to thank her for having the chance to help Ferris like this. Now, no matter how hard she hugged Ferris, there was no problem and no shame. The feeling of having a small body protected in her arms was one of bliss. Don't worry about it. Now, Ferris, we're going to take down that big monster mosquito. Yes, Dot. Yes, now is not the time to be reflecting, Ferris reminded herself. The vein eater knew that if it could destroy the boat, it could kill the three of them, 
and it was about to charge the boat again. Ferris, still held by Jeanette, stretched her arms above her head. She then commanded loudly, Magic Sun, please exterminate the Vein Eater. A large number of tornadoes blew up from the sea and attacked the Vein Eater. A whirlpool of seawater slammed down and tossed the demon's body around. The Vein Eater tried desperately to escape the tornado, but there was nothing it could do. Immediately, it was pulled into the sea and sank to the bottom. The tornado disappears and the calm sea returns. The Vein Eater shows no sign of floating away. Phew. It's safe now, isn't it, Bora Bora? Jeanette San. Ferris desperately hugged Jeanette's body as it began to sink, as if it had run out of strength. Jeanette was happy to be in such a situation. She realized that she had only been able to swim temporarily because she had tried so hard to save Ferris, and that she hadn't been cured. As the two of them were about to disappear into the sea, Alicia hurriedly approached with the boat. She stomped her feet on the deck and pulled them both up to the boat. Ha, ha, it's so disappointing. Jeanette propped her hands on the deck, breathing hard. The droplets of water dripping from her hair and chin were shiny, and Ferris found Jeanette to be beautiful once again. You did a great job, Jeanette, it's not normal to jump into the sea without thinking in order to save Ferris. Is that a compliment? Of course, I'm complimenting you. Alicia smiled. Now that the vein eater was out of the way, Ferris still had some work to do. Shivering from the cold, she raised her wet arms and shouted, Magic element, please seal up the volcano so that no one can ever get near it again, and so that it will never erupt. A huge halo appeared above the volcano. A certain cathedral. The robed man who had been watching the magic circle on the floor in the darkness suddenly tilted his head. H.M. What is the matter? The sorcerer next to him asked. Funny, the magic power that was being sucked in by the vein eater is no longer flowing into the magic circle. Isn't there some part of the magic circle missing? No, there is no problem with the magic circle. Perhaps the vein eaters have been erased. That demon, I'm sure it had powerful defensive magic built in, so that it would never be destroyed, even by the magic core of the government. I heard that a very high-ranking mage is interfering with our mission. I'd like to meet them once. The robed man muttered as if possessed, staring at the magic circle shining in the darkness. Chapter 31 A Picture Book in the Attic The next day it rained heavily. The pounding downpour muddied the sea. Naturally, no one was out on the beach. Ah, what a shame. It's such a beautiful ocean. Ferris lamented as she looked out the window of her villa. Just when she thought he could finally enjoy swimming in peace after defeating the vein eater that had been doing something bad to the volcano, this weather came along. It would be a shame to spend her precious vacation doing nothing. Do you really want to swim so badly? Alicia asks. I want to swim, because I had so much, so much fun swimming with Alicia and Jeanette. I want Jeanette to teach me how to swim again. Jeanette was inspired by Ferris' words. If you insist so much, then, we have no choice. We'll just have to do it, rain or shine. There's a storm out there. I don't care if it's a storm or a tornado, I'm going to beat the storm just to see Ferris smile. She was so motivated. To be honest, Jeanette's ability to swim when she was fighting off the vein eater was a bit of a fluke, so she wasn't sure if she could teach Ferris how to swim properly. For now, Jeanette just wants to enjoy the bliss of pulling Ferris' cute hands and making her flail her feet. Alicia chuckled. I think it would be suicide to go into the ocean in this weather. Let's just stay in the villa today and keep quiet. But what should we do? Ferris tilted her head. If she was at a magic school, she could go to the library and satisfy her intellectual curiosity. But at someone's villa, she didn't know where everything was and she felt like she might offend them if she searched for books without permission. I heard that there are all kinds of toys and books in the attic here. My mother used to come to this villa a lot when she was a child, and she said that she keeps all the books and other things that she used to play with in the attic. Your mother's toys, Alicia-san? Yes, she said I can use them if I want to, so let's see if I can find them. Yes, I'm excited, it's like a treasure hunt. Ferris happily followed Alicia as she walked out of the room. Jeanette chased after them, 
trying to keep up with them. Oh, by the way, Alicia's mother. She muttered in a small voice. Whoa, 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 there's a lot of dust in here. It's pitch black. Wait, I'll turn on the lantern now. The light from Alicia's lantern illuminated the area, and the scene in the attic came to life. Things, things, things. Furniture, books, staffs, swords, armor, clothes. Furniture, books, staffs, swords, armor, clothes, all sorts of things were stacked up, forming piles here and there, filling the attic. Dust glittered in the streaks of lantern light and danced around them. A musty smell, and one that seemed to have been brewed over time, tickled the girls' noses. It looks like they haven't cleaned up for a long time. I'm kinda tempted to go back to my room. It's not beautiful, right? Maybe we should go downstairs and look for some books. Alicia and Jeanette, both genuine ladies of the house, were frightened. Ferris, however. Wow, wow, wow. It's a treasure trove. Alicia and Jeanette, let's try to find something. She was so excited. Having worked in the muddy depths of the magic stone mines, the attic didn't feel so dirty, and she was more interested in the unknown presence that lurked in this space. Alicia and Jeanette looked at each other. If Ferris says so. It can't be helped, can it? They both chuckle. Alicia and Jeanette have become much closer than in the past, but Jeanette feels uncomfortable about their relationship. What is it? What's wrong with me to be smiling at my rival? She was just writhing in shame. Alicia proceeded to the back of the attic, illuminating her surroundings with a lantern. Well then, let's do our best. I was told that mother's toys are in the white wardrobe, but... Oh, isn't that it? It's a pure white wardrobe. Ferris pointed cheerfully. A child's wardrobe with a cute design. The boards were painted white all over, making it stand out in the cluttered attic. The cat's paws and metal carvings were smooth and sleek, and had yet to lose their beauty. Jeanette looks at the wardrobe with admiration. It's so beautiful. I want it in my room. If you want it, Jeanette, I can give it to you. It's probably the only piece of furniture I'm allowed to have at my disposal. No, that's not right. It was Alicia's mother's. Jeanette clammed up. Alicia shrugged and laughed. Don't worry about it. I wonder what toys mother used to play with. Ferris takes them from Alicia and lays them out on the floor. The contents of the drawer are a variety of things, a stuffed animal, a doll, a board game, a book, some kind of musical instrument, a wand, some kind of obscure tool. Oh, this picture book is so cute. Ferris caught sight of a picture book. It had a splendid binding, excellent cover art, and a weighty feel that was hard to believe for a picture book. It may have been read many times, and there were some scratches here and there, but it still had an aura that attracted her attention. From either side of Ferris, Alicia and Jeanette peered at the picture book. It's called The Happy Bear, isn't it? It's kind of a childish title. Oh, it looks interesting, but maybe I am just being childish. No, no, that's... Ferris is fine. To be honest, Ferris was a child, and her childishness was adorable, but Jeanette felt like she might get hurt if she said it outright, so she chose her words carefully. Seeing Jeanette's flustered look, Alicia chuckled. Yes, that wouldn't be a problem, Ferris. I think I'd like to see what's inside for a bit. Yes, I'm so excited. Ferris opened the book. Immediately, a bright light flooded the pages of the book. The light shone fiercely through the attic, pouring down on the girls and overwhelming their retinas. The wind that blew out of the picture book raged, blowing away the piles of luggage in the area. Hey, what's with the light? Oh, I think it's dangerous. Everyone, run. What the? The three screams echoed out. With a roaring, swirling wind, Ferris and the others were sucked into the storybook. In the attic where the girls had disappeared, only the lantern was lying, and the area was silent as if it were a lie. Chapter 32.1 the world of picture books. Ah, hiya, NGGH. Jeanette, Ferris, and Alicia let out a yelp as they crashed to the ground. It felt as if they had fallen from a very high place, so Ferris was bracing herself for a very painful fall, but it did not hurt that much. The ground was softer and fluffier than a bed mat. It looked like an ordinary field, 
but it was not. Ferris looked around carefully and saw that the flowers looked like graffiti and there were cute faces painted on them. Where am I? We were in the attic just now. Jeanette's heart almost stopped instantly when she saw Ferris get up and turn around, and in a good way, too. See you see you see you. Jeanette stared at Ferris, her hands trembling. Her gaze fell on Ferris, who had rabbit ears on his head, a rabbit tail on his little butt, and was dressed like a fluffy bunny. It's so cute. Hiya. Jeanette was holding her as hard as she could, and Ferris screamed, rubbing her cheeks against her ears and swinging her around in his arms. Alicia warns her, you're going to have to do better than that. Alicia warns her, Jeanette, if you swing around too much, you will tear Ferris to pieces. Oh, yes, you're right, I'm sorry. Jeanette came to her senses and lowered Ferris to the ground. Oh, it's okay. Ferris wobbled and clung to Alicia's arm. Jeanette looked over at Alicia and let out a small gasp. Are you dressed like that, Play-Doh? I doubt that's what you're supposed to be doing at twelve. Wow, Alicia-san, you are so beautiful. Yes, not only Ferris, but even Alicia looked different from before, with shining rainbow-colored wings on her back and a graceful green robe on her body. A fairy, woodland fairy, with Alicia's dainty face, she brought a dreamy beauty to the scene. Jeanette like that is turning into a lovely cat, too. Alicia pointed out, and Jeanette looked down at her body. She was wearing a black one-piece dress with a wide opening at the bust and a barely trimmed hem. She was wearing adult-like net tights, black loafers, and black gloves. Her tail was taut from her hips, and cat ears sprouted from her head. It is a bold and revealing design, but it suits Jeanette, who has an outstanding style. Why am I always dressed like this? Why am I the only one dressed like this? Jeanette shrank back hugging herself with cheery eyes. Her face was bright red with shame. No matter how strong a young lady she is, she is still twelve years old. It is a little early for her to climb the ladder of adulthood. But Ferris clasps her hands around her chest and says enthusiastically, Jeanette San, you look wonderful. You look like an adult woman. I admire you so much. Oh, I don't know if that's true. I think you're right. It's the outfit for me, just for me. Jeanette was simple. She instantly shook off her shame and stretched out her back with dignity. Alicia stared at Jeanette. Why are you staring at me? You seem to want to say something. It's just my imagination. No, it's not my imagination. By the way, Jeanette, can you take off those ears? I couldn't get the feathers off. What? I'm sure you can take them off. They're an accessory. Jeanette pulled her cat's ears carelessly. Immediately. She crouched down as a tremendous pain shot through her head. What the? Why? I'll try it too, E.I. E.A. Ferris pulls on the rabbit ears growing on his head, but they still won't come off. It hurts so much that she cries. Alicia hurries to stop Ferris, who still continues to pull. This, it's not an accessory, and it's sentient. It's really growing out of our bodies. Oh, no, that's not funny. A daughter of the Rhineslick family, you know, turned into a cat. Your father will scold you. I don't think it's a matter of being scolded or anything. As the three were puzzled, from the distance, a large group of creatures rushed toward them, billowing up a cloud of dust. 